Just I have to... shared my desktop also. Okay, so if you share your desktop now, I would be able to see your desktop. So just select yes, uh, Zoom Cloud. Okay, now let me see where is the install. Okay, now click on the installer on on this one. You do you see this a uh, status uh, bar? Where, uh... Uh, down below because uh, the installation is happening just down below near the tent. Yes. So just click on this so that it becomes bigger. Yeah, just click on this here. Now I can see it. Good. Now you click on the next. Yes. Okay. So uh, did you install uh, earlier or not? I have tried uh, two, two, three times. Okay, you have tried two, three times. Okay. So let's do this thing. You first click, uh, click on the remove. I, I believe that you have installed the Java and the uh, .NET. Yes, both. Okay, okay, fine. So yes, just click on the remove and uh, just remove it. So th this will ha happen quickly. Now, uh, what is the message that you are getting? Actually, uh, the message that is appearing some error in installing the database. Installing the database. So I'll just help you out. So that's not a problem. So I have to click yes. Ah, yes, so you have to just uh, remove the whole thing. So what I'm seeing is a yeah, removing files, removing shortcuts, removing backup files, status. Yes, I'm getting the screen refresh and finish. Click on the finish. I can see the finish button now. Okay. Fine, it's done. So, okay. So uh, what you do is that you uh, click on the setup once again so that I can do it from the start. Yes. No, no, not on this one, not on this one. So this is not going to work because the file is not inside the subfolder. It would try to look there. You click on the P6 Pro. P6 Pro, uh, this one. First one, yes, 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 yes. Because actually- 1.94 MB. Yes, uh, yes, yeah, I... yeah, 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 just, uh, yeah, the click on this one, okay. Now click on next. Click on typical. Actually, I have selected uh, this uh, advanced. No, no, no. You need uh, typical. Click on in uh, install. There is no progress. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it will wait for a while, then it will start. Because you know it is expanding the files. Okay, I have downloaded all these files on my uh, Office PC also. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, 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 in case you have the administrator right only then you would be able to install so i i believe that you have pre-installed uh, the the .net and the java okay if the .net and the uh, java is in place so this will install very smoothly okay so i have to click yes um yes for what uh, what is it saying just hang on for it. let me get your screen refreshed Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make change? Ah, change yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go ahead. I'm not getting your screen. Is, uh, okay, so now, now I'm. It's visible? Uh, yeah, now it is visible. Copying new files, status, copying new files. So this is what I'm seeing right now. I believe that this is coming in real time. Creating shortcuts, registering products. So the rest of you can also see that you can install it like this. So basically, you know, the files are kept in a structure. Now, here you have to uh, click on this drop down. Just click on the drop down. You have to select P6 SQL Lite. So select the last one. Yes, okay, okay. SQL Lite. Now I'll explain this for all. Just ha hang on for a moment. Just click on the drop down. Just click on this drop down. 
see uh, everybody is listening i believe see uh, uh, the prima vera originally it used to connect to the oracle database only you know people had really very much tough time in using and setting up the oracle database so when it was bought over by uh, the oracle corporation actually it it's a it's a software so basically it was a software which was created by a different company it was called prima vera the company's name itself was prima vera it used to use the oracle database so when oracle bought this software then they started to expand the marketing then they got the feedback that it connects only to the oracle database only and not everybody has or can install the oracle database so then what they do what they did that they gave the option to connect to the sql server and the p6 pro stand alone so p6 pro stand alone is the latest and even the latest is the p6 pro cloud connect so cloud connect is that you if you have any database on the cloud so you can connect there also okay so what you can do that you can use this interface and your data stays in the cloud but the current installation is a trial version trial version is not limited by features but it is limited by the fact that it is just single user only right so only one person can use it at a time if another person tries to log in using the same login then it will tell that already you are logged in okay so this is for your learning purpose and you can do everything that you would uh, like to do and it will give you all the facilities of a full fledged version okay so okay just uh, click on this and go ahead so sql lite is a uh, file based database which will be created in your computer folder so uh, you uh, select the second button second radio button add a new stand alone database okay so we'll create a a database from scratch so you enter new password as admin let's keep it simple because we are learning we don't have any kind of money inside that admin it's not your net banking so admin admin is fine so base currency let's keep usd for the while and click on next and do you see this folder just just hang on for a second see if you want to back up the database so this is the folder you would look for and copy this uh, ppmdb sql lite.db to your pen drive or to your external usb um, based drives why this is so then then you must remember that where is go where is the file because this is the database file which will contain all your data you can do some different ways of backup also but this is the best because it backups uh, all your settings and everything so just do one thing uh, just do one thing uh, just uh, select up to the documents and create a shortcut on your desktop uh, select from c no 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 not from here just place your cursor at the s at the end of the s no not here at the end of the s the, just only the path yes and go to c and go to c c drive go towards the left uh, select the whole thing towards the left from c to s press the shift shift button and select this thing okay okay sir hello selection is complete yeah just uh, you have copied so just go to your desktop and right click and do a create shortcut why because if you want to know where is your database you just have to click there on the on the shortcut just go to your desktop yeah uh, so just click for desktop so i believe this is windows 10 so just uh, yeah and and you click on the new 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 just click on new uh, shortcut now now paste it now paste the path here because this path will will be a quick to access just with one single click okay so so that you can in the future if you want to back up your database because you know a lot of data will be uh, i mean put there a lot of data will happen 
okay so you should be able to find so um, uh, tatiana and uh, ashwarya if you are listening in and abdullah also abdul if you are there so make sure that you know that we, that where your database file is and keep a convenient short you just click on next yeah just go ahead finish and, no no you name this you name it as uh, primavera database okay you know you should give it a relevant name because because someday that will save you time and trouble primavera database that's it finish okay now come back to the installation screen just click uh, on on the next one on the next one on the on the one which is on the right the, which is with the o symbol yeah i think yes now click on next yes finish click on finish so uh, tatere do you know that where your folder is okay so i believe that it has created and what you can do just go to your windows and try to find where is the shortcut and right click on the shortcut and you say pin to taskbar p6 uh, not not this one not this one not this one this is the visualizer the so visualizer already has a link uh, try to go into the apps just click click all apps just click all apps uh, option here yes 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 and uh, then uh, p6 we p6 uh, professional 17 uh, expand just click on the expand recently added so that should be p6 professional yes do you see this p6 professional 17x64 yes uh, now right just right click here pin pin to uh, click on more no 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 uh, click on more pin to taskbar great okay now click on uh, click on the the taskbar so as you can see the oracle symbol there on on the taskbar yes sir yeah just click on this okay great admin that's your password okay okay yeah so this is the only one database that you have and that will get selected by default so it is loading the sample data right now so you know uh, it's great uh, that uh, we could use it as an example <clears throat> fine it is doing great okay click on okay yeah it is going in the right direction great great good great so you see uh, this this is a lot of data okay so uh, what you do is that you click on the click on the view do you see this uh, just uh, go to the bottom just go to down to scroll down so i think you you can do with increasing the just click on collapse all do you see this button collapse all now click on the plus symbol that you see next to this pyramid now this is the enterprise you know enterprise means a an organization so uh, guys you are there uh, tatiana and uh, all or who else is there so uh, can you just say hi uh, yeah uh, ashwarya you are there yeah i'm here okay uh, tatiana you are there yes uh, abdul hasn't joined in yet okay fine so i believe that you you can see see the screen right now you are getting the i mean uh, the updates on the screen uh, update uh, i mean yeah okay fine yes uh, now you know this is what is the sample data why the sample data is included so that you can be sure 
that uh, what you can do with it okay now i will explain to you that what is the meaning of this see if there is an organization a very huge organization so let's say enterprise so enterprise is is a term which is used for big organizations those who have multiple lines of business now enterprise could be any enterprise enterprise could be ibm ibm has got multiple lines of businesses and there is say say the virgin group or indian company so you can say reliance reliance tata okay wipro so you know these are very big companies and they have various lines of business now engineering and construction then energy manufacturing so you know what they do that they they create a very structured folders now these are called portfolios okay so just you want to just do on uh, do do this click on uh, enc engineering and construction the expand it now what you are seeing is individual projects these are the project code ec05515 and that is the name of the project okay just do yeah. one thing uh, select any project just place your cursor on uh, any of the projects ec 00515 uh, just any whatever whatever just place your so, cursor and 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 right click on the right click menu on the top can you see open project yes you can either click or you can do a control o okay so remember guys if you want to open a project so you select the project you can do control o or you can just select the option just select the option for now o open project click on that one okay so you know this is the project so this is what we are doing so we are all project managers so we work at this uh, work at this level so this is the project screen and in the middle uh, you know this is a bar which divides the screen between your uh, your table and the gantt chart so i believe that you understand gantt chart so what you can do just uh, just grab this bar in the middle and move it towards the left so this is flexible so this is called the divider bar now the purpose of the divider bar is to share the screen between the table and the gantt bar so if you want to see more of the gantt bar so you can just take it towards the left or if you don't want to see the gantt bar at all so you can take it towards the right or what you can do okay i'll just show you the option uh, uh, just you might should do you see the option view on the top yes and uh, there is a just below the view there is a grid just click uh, click on that now what table. it is yes now it is showing you the table view right okay. so tatiana uh, uh, i mean sorry uh, tat uh, tatiana you can see uh, ashwari you can see yes yeah okay fine so uh try this just i am just holding for a while so we will use this screen for a while because you know on my screen there is everything is set up we are going to do everything set up because your screen and uh, and himanshu screen are identical because you just installed so there is a lot of setup things to do and which i believe that his screen will do fine so just himanshu just take a small note control o to sel uh, select and o open a project control o yeah control o is the shortcut okay so uh, today we will learn to how to navigate inside the interface okay so uh, just just close this uh, close this button i mean close this window see uh select this project uh, ec1230 1230 yeah and press control o
Oh uh, no, 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 no. It, uh, you, uh, you are actually not in the project. Actually, you are inside the project only. Uh, just, uh, just close this. Go to the tab projects. Th this is showing you activities inside a particular project. Just click on the, the tab on the left. No, no, no. This tab. No, this tab. Tab, tab. That is the projects tab next to the activities on your left side. Uh, activities. Uh, uh, the uh, the projects tab that you okay. see. So okay. you you actually started from here. Okay, so now this this is the main screen. You know, you will be able to see all the projects. Okay, just click on the energy. Click on the manufacturing. And I believe, uh, uh, believe Himanshu, uh, I believe that your monitor has a greater resolution. I believe you are on 1280. Can, um, can you increase increase the re resolution so that we have more view on the screen or this is fine, I believe. Okay, fine. So, Just scroll down, scroll down. Click on the corporate. Okay, great. Now scroll down a little bit. Now, do you see that under the corporate there is in flight and in pipeline? Yes. Now click on the pipeline. And click on the in, in flight and scroll the screen up. Uh, scroll up the screen and take the corporate to the top. Okay. Do you see a structure here under the corporate? Under the corporate, there are two. Just like in Windows, you create uh, subfolders if you have a lot of classifications in case. So the corporate is called the portfolio and in flight is called the program. So portfolio is the top level. And it, it doesn't mean that you cannot have more subclassifications. So, you know, this is very flexible. Primavera gives you a lot of flexibility in this, in this regard. So you can create a lot of classifications to organize your projects, to understand them better. Because when you start an organization, you might be working on just a couple of projects, maybe four or five. So they are fine and kept in one folder. Just like if you have, say, you're fond of pho photography, if you are amateur, so what you would do, so you would put all the photographs in one folder. But suppose if you become a professional, so what happens that you're handling multiple clients? Okay, so then what would you do? You, you, cannot, you cannot keep all the photographs in one folder. So can you? It would mix up the photos from different clients. So then you would create a folder, or you might create corporate, and then under that you would create a folder, corporate one, corporate two, then you would create a folder, uh, individuals, Okay, then you might create a folder, um, modeling shoots. So then under that, you would create a folder for each of the models. Okay, so this is how we organize our projects. Okay, so we will, we can see from the sample data, which is given here, so that this is something which can be done in the future. If you're handling large number of projects, or if you're part of a very big group of company, so you would be seeing things like this. So you would be able to locate your own projects. So you might be doing multiple projects, which might be belonging to different classifications. So you should be able to navigate through the classification. So classification would depend upon the organization. There is no hard and fast rule. So that's up to you. That's up to the people, those who are running the business. Okay. So this gives you flexibility. So it's up to you. How do you organize your hard disk? Right, but Windows gives you the flexibility. You can create n number of subfolders, so that's fine. So whatever works for you, you do that. But uh, you do something which is uh, uh, rationalized. I mean, it's not overdone. Okay, so you would create three, four subclassifications, and you would be fine. So what we are going to do that we are going to learn how to create the subclassification. Right. So we will do it on the energy. So just scroll up to the energy. Okay, now I will tell you the story. So when you started your company, 
so you had very few projects now your as your clientele is expanding now you have created different programs under the energy okay ashwarya and tatiana you are listening in guys yes okay yes okay great good so now your company has decided that we will have different program managers assigned to handle those now how you are subdividing your energy business you say that look uh, we have solar energy then we have this uh, um, some other form of energy like um, uh, say hydroelectrics then nuclear so and renewable and non renewable so see solar energy is renewable non renewable is say coal fired gas fired okay so these are non renewable sources of energy then then there is another source of energy that is the nuclear energy so your company is into three different kind of energy sectors and you say that it makes sense to classify them further because they are growing big so that we can give more focus by utilizing the expertise of people so we will appoint more people under the energy so right now the energy services were being handled by one person so so how do you do that just to see uh i i would like you to uh, yeah himanshu i would like you to click on the enterprise on the top do you see the enterprise option on on the top okay yes okay now what i want tatiana uh, tatiana and uh, ashwarya to do is do the same thing follow step by step right now this is a hands on totally hands on now do you see a pyramid yes pyramid and enterprise project why they have used the pyramid symbol so you can guess because it's it's a pyramid like structure it's a pyramid like structure so you start from the top on the top what is there enterprise then you subdivide now you click on this click on this we are going to create the structure under the energy now this is the structure this is the structure which is there in front of us now this is where we can manipulate the structure from okay so now if you want to shift anything up or down you can do it so that's very simple suppose if your boss says look for us is it is very important so shift it to the top so how do you shift it just to select the at the it uh, yes once you just select it place your cursor on it and on your right side do you see a navigation button set of four navigation button up down left right just like your video game okay yes so just click on the up click on the shift up button you see that it's it's going up click once again and take it to the top do you see that it's happening there they are under uh, i mean under this box also do you see on your left that uh, it is going up uh, click once again it is going up click once again you know you have done this according to your importance and according to your convenience so you can do it so uh, rest of you have tried it also yes rest of you have tried it also so you find yes. it good Yeah, okay it's okay okay good now you, now you know this is something which is helping you to organize at a bigger scale because when things get bigger you need a software like primavera to help you organize so without that all your projects if they are under one classification it will be a lot difficult to manage this might happen in the future so today you are managing a project tomorrow you will be managing multiple projects so you would be program manager so you might be handling it okay so in the it do you see lob1 line of business one so line of business one could be domain i will i'll tell you what does it do it uh, takes care of various domains like uh, say travel it creates lot of software for the travel domain finance domain learning okay now i i will i will show you that how to add a new one so uh, yes himanshu do you see the add button on the right yes just click on that one okay okay uh, in the new eps which is highlighted just uh, uh, just edit this to learn l e a r learn 
in capital Now make it a little bit capital so you know that you understand l e a r and learn and now click on the new eps that is the blue sh blue sh shaded bar now you edit this and type out learning portfolio in in normal in normal not in the capital in the normal l caps then learning portfolio presenter now this is the learning portfolio now if you want to keep it at the root i mean as independent so that's fine but if you want to bring it under the it you can do it just do one thing select it and click on the right navigation that is the shift right that is the right shift right now do you see that now it is a uh, sub folder of it yes. okay in case it is in case it is if you want to keep it under the it it's fine but if if someone says if your boss says no this is too big now this should be independent you can always shift it towards the left and it will become independent then it will not be a subfolder of the it just do this okay now if someone says that it should go a uh, a couple of rows down so click on the down okay now click on the close click on the close button on the top yes close it now have a good look at the interface here do you see uh, where is the learn let's just scroll down and find out that where is it scroll down no no use the scroller i mean the scroller that is around you see the learn here you have placed it here you see the learn just about the yes. product development you have placed it here okay now now you want to learn and you want to keep your projects here so then what should you do so you say that okay i'll take it to the top so do you know that how to take it to the top yes uh, we have to go to enterprise and then uh, from uh, that uh, uh, yeah good, good. yes you, apps, absolutely just go ahead and show us do it take it to the top just keep it there okay fine now now select energy now i i i, I will tell you okay so Ms. mr radani comes in yes himanshu yes you are doing good i know you know primavera can you classify the energy business into three different kinds okay so you will classify the business into three different kinds one is renewable non renewable and nuclear so can you do it uh, to add of course yes so the first one is renewable so just write renew in caps so consider this as the code of the portfolio and on the right side you write renewable energy projects so that becomes a portfolio for your renewable or it becomes a program for your renewable energy projects renewable energy projects okay now what you have to do you have to put it under the energy so no you don't shift it towards the left you 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 have to know if you shift it towards the right it will go under the corporate you have to first bring it next to the energy so you have to take it up 
just push it up yes keeping it here now you shift right now do you see the structure coming up yes now it is a, a subfolder or you can say it is a sub portfolio of the energy so you create two more non renewable and nuclear okay so i believe that uh, uh, tatiana and ashwara you are also doing the same yes okay great 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 good and you, if you face any uh, problems and just let me know we'll pause and we'll we'll clarify and then we'll move on now what you have to do you know i don't have to tell you absolutely fine you are doing good now the third one what is third one nuclear and say nuclear energy yeah that looks good and uh, what about you tatiana and uh, ashwarya you are there i mean in sync yes so far so good in sync okay great now just you should do one thing close this close this window close this pop up uh for undo and uh, is there any other option if i want to undo uh... no it is not as good as microsoft project okay this is for tough people <laughs> 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 so uh, somewhere there is only just one undo somewhere there is no undo okay okay so, so you got to be a fundo to to do to work on this prime aware okay so you must take uh, steps in a well thought, thought out ways now whether we have to save this uh, what we have created okay now let it... me tell you now let me tell you let me tell you that what is happening behind the scene see the data that you are working upon after each step you know what it is doing it is saving to the database but if you want to save something deliberately to the database press f10 just press f10 here just right now i want you to remember it f10 just press f10 Okay. F10 option. Uh, F10 on your on your on the top okay, yes. your, on the top okay. of the keypad. Yes. Okay. Now this pushes the data into the database. So that is the F10, right? Now okay. if you uh, just press uh, um, escape so that we get rid of this. One question. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> What if you, <clears throat> in case that we created this, uh, um, uh. Uh, structure, and uh, we definitely we are not going to use, for example, nuclear. Uh, how we are going? Are we are going to be able to delete that part of the structure? Yes, very easy. Okay, I'll just tell you in a while. So let us complete the screen, okay. then I will go ahead and tell you. Or you want me to tell right now? Okay, uh, just you want to just go one, just go into the enterprise once again, the the pyramid structure. delete is there so the delete you see so it, right yeah. cross <laughs> now, yes, now, now you have you got to be careful okay okay because if you delete it it might delete the projects also or it might warn you so you might ignore the warning and if you do it will delete the project so before deleting so you should move the uh, i mean the projects that you want to keep into some other folder okay fine so you can cut you can copy is just like windows in this case now you close this window i want to show you something close this now if you want to refresh the data from the database press f5 press f5 you will see i want you to remember this also so you know it is doing some fetching okay so if you are working on a network and multi user environment this might take even more time so right now f5 is, is 
Yeah, F5 is refresh, just like you do in your browser. So remember, F10 pushes the data from uh, your interface into the database. And in this database in the future could be on the internet, could be in the next building, could be in the could be in some city 600 miles away where your company headquarters is. You might be uh, working on the site and the database will be kept in the headquarters. So some system admin guy would be taking a backup each day as the work is happening. So this might be on SQL. This might be on the Oracle database. So that really doesn't matter to you because you got to make sure that you are having the correct login. OK, admin or whatever has been created to give you the rights. So because in the future you would be able to see some projects but not work upon them, you would be able to work upon the projects which belong to you, which have been assigned to you by your uh, program or portfolio manager or by your boss. OK. So that's how the things will be. So right now you are the boss of the whole whole setup. OK, so one question. Yes, uh, yes. This, this energy level is the portfolio level or hmm. is the project. Now this is the portfolio level because this is just below the enterprise. Now what we are going to do, we are going to place two projects each into each of the sub portfolio or so you can say there is a program. Just do one thing. Se select 870 and 800 by pressing the shift uh, press the shift button and select the other one yes now do control x control x just you would do in an excel sheet control x okay do you see that these are dimmed do you yes. see the, the text is dimmed now do one thing we are going to place these two projects in the non renew right uh, now click your cursor on the non renew So do you know what is the shortcut for paste? Control V. Exactly. Just do it and see the fun. Yes. Now those two projects are gone. Just expand the non-renew. Okay. Right. And similarly take two projects and place them in renew and nu nuclear. Put into the renew or new. Yeah, it's your choice. It's your choice. This is only the uh, only the project level. We have not entered the activity level right now. No, no, not right. This is the portfolio level, and the and what we are seeing each of these. These are the projects. You see the total activities uh, column. Yes, yes. So these are telling you that these projects have this number of activities, right? And select the okay. remaining two also and put them into the renew. So this uh, this can be uh, WBS, we can say. No, the WBS is at more granular level. That is inside the project. So this is enterprise okay. project structure. Okay, sir. WBS is work breakdown structure. So work is happening inside the project. So this is not the work. This is a portfolio. You know, portfolio people, top directors, they carry the portfolio in their hands. Have you seen that? Those black and slim suitcases. So those are called portfolios. So in that there are multiple files, and each of the files is a is a project file, right? So you know all the words they come from those days. So when people used to have a lot of physical things, a lot of physical paper, and all that stuff. So that used to be the portfolio. Now select the other one also. At the same time, you should be able to select both of them. Now here, one the one of the project is left here, so it's okay. You know, sometimes you might not have a project which can be classified. If if that is so, you can keep it. But if you think that this uh, should go into the non-renewal, so you can just Control X and Control V. Okay, just move it also. Just uh, do Control X and Control V so that we have a clean. Classification of all the projects here. Okay. 
No, you move the projects out. You don't have to move the out. See, take select two projects, cut them and put them uh, into non-renew and renew. Okay, so that all the groups they have two each. Oh, just like nuclear, it has two. Yeah, select two. Control X. Yeah, put it into non-renew. Control V. Okay. Yeah, select uh, these two. Yes, Control X. Good. So just scroll a little, scroll it a little bit up. So how do you feel? Do you feel more organized? Okay, so you know in the future you might be handling a lot of projects. Okay, so you prepare for the future. So Mr. Adani will be very happy. Okay. So good. So if you want to see the Gantt chart of this project, say, uh, just right click on the Gantt area, on this white area. Just right click here. Yes, yes. Uh, do you see this time scale option? Just click here. Time scale. Click here. Uh, just do nothing. Just click on the OK again. OK, uh, OK, OK button. Do you see these lines? Do you see this? Uh, these yellow lines, the weighted ones. So that is the group. That is the symbol of the group. Okay. And do you see these green bars? So these green bars they represent the project. Now you can you can increase and decrease the view, or you can expand or contract the view to fit into the the space which is here. Just do one thing: move your divider bar a little bit towards the left. Move your divider bar a little bit towards the left. This, this is the divider bar. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. Just keep it here. Now see. Now look at the the first project so that is the driftwood refuel outage do you see a green bar parallel to it no 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 just no, no, just stay here stay here why are you scrolling down we are working on the energy just scroll up scroll up scroll up drift okay driftwood uh, do you see outage. yes exactly nrg 00910 do you see this green bar in in, in, in parallel on the right Yes. Do you see a date here? 01 December 10. Eh? Yes. Now this is one of the first project of this group and this goes to the group level. Do you see this group level? That is the weighted triangle. I mean the triangle. That is the yellow bar. Yes. Now look at the next project. Just select 950. Just place your cursor there. And do you see the one on the right? And can you tell me what is the start date of this uh, project 950? First March 11. Exactly. Now, if you want to scroll, if you want to see that how long is the project, you just scroll, scroll in the scroll in the Gantt view only. Yes, this one. Yes, this is the arrow. Okay. Scroll, scroll, and you would be able to see the length. See, if you look at the first project, so that is 910. It is finishing on 16 June. Right. Yes. And if you look at 950, what is the finish date? 27, 27 hours. That's great. Now scroll a little bit towards the left. Scroll a little bit. No, toward the left. Toward the left. Just uh, click on the left arrow. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yes, scroll, scroll, scroll. Now stop. Now I now you would like to see the whole view fitted into this space. So you know what do you do if you look at the top, just exactly or just where your right hand is. If you look at the top, you will see two lenses. One with the plus symbol, one is the minus symbol. Okay, do you see the lens uh, icons at the top? At the top. So click on the minus one. Click on the minus lens icon. Lens icon. No, no, not there. No, no. Where are okay. you going? Where are you drifting? Yeah, come back. Yes, 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 exactly. Now, now you will see this view. This is shrinking. Now, this is bringing more into the no. Uh, expand it a little bit because it is uh, we have space. Just okay. Just hang on. Okay. Now you scroll a little, a little bit. Scroll the bar a little bit so that it fits it into the view space. Yes, yes, yes. Click, click, click. Uh, the click. Once, yes, just hang. no, 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 no. You are clicking a little bit too much. Uh, just click on the left. 
क्लिक अगेन क्लिक अगेन क्लिक अगेन क्लिक अगेन होल्ड 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 जस्ट क्लिक ऑन द राइट वन स्टॉप क्लिक अगेन राइट अगेन या राइट या जस्ट होल्ड इयर जस्ट होल्ड इट इयर नाउ आई वॉन्ट एवरीबॉडी टू लुक वेरी केयरफुल ओके जस्ट प्लेस योर करसर ऑन दी एन रिन्यू दैट इज द पोर्टफोलियो दैट इज द येलो place your cursor now do you see the parallel bar to it yes now this is representing this non renewable portfolio sub portfolio or the program now do you see the difference in the shape what is the symbol for the port portfolio it is a dumbbell like bar dumbbell so we have dumbbells which have got a weight on both the both the ends or you can say match stick with double heads on both the sides right so can you just remember it visually i i cannot ask you to take notes i am just asking you to take a snapshot in your mind so this is what it looks like if you see the symbol and if you see this bar then you should be able to interpret it as what a group portfolio okay group a portfolio or a program now do you see this green bar so the, this green bar represents the project so how many projects are there in this uh, sub portfolio Two. Now look at the start date of the portfolio. What is the start date? First December. 10. And what is what is the end date of this portfolio? Twenty seventh August eleven. Now, can you tell me that where does the start date come from and where does the end date comes from? Look, look carefully. Start date from the nine one zero project. and end date from 950 project yes so you know the exact answer is the start date comes from the earliest project and the end date comes from the come the last project or the latest project earliest and latest got the point so the portfolio would end when the last project is finished the portfolio starts when the first project has started right mm -hmm. so that is why it is taking so similarly if you look at the end enterprise the enterprise would start from the first day of inception or the first project that was created within that enterprise and there is no last date if you continue to add projects so that will continue to push the last date on the enterprise level so similarly if you go to the project level so the start date of the project will give the give the date to the start task that is the first task right and the last task when you when you place the all the task in relationship and in proper sequence so that will give you the finish date of the project okay so is it making sense to you guys so are you comfortable with this yes questions not up to now okay good now now just himanshu just do one thing just go to the grid view under the view Uh, just go to the left top corner under the view there is the grid view i mean the excel sheet just click on that no 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 not on the not on this menu yes yes, uh, yes. Just click click on this now why why do you uh, why do you want to get rid of the gantt chart because you could be having lot of columnar data like the cost of the project okay what is the actual cost what is the actual baseline you know there are lots of columns that can be added later on it's very flexible to add columns here okay so you might not like to see the gantt chart you might be a financial person so you would like to see the columns got my point so if you want to see the columns so you would just click on this but you can definitely have lot of uh, column view by shifting the Uh, the divider bar but you say that no i don't want to have the divider bar at all i just only want to have the columns so that i have a convenient view now if you scroll toward the right do you see a little bit of tree like structure if you shift toward the right below the enterprise below the enterprise there is a icon green icon with uh, with one box having three sub boxes yes. just yes. click just click on this chart view chart view enjoy this is the birds eye view of your entire company that how your projects now if you click on the on the lens here you have the plus lens <laughs> yes yes 
yes now do you understand the value of this view so this is a very powerful view if you click on the minus symbol under the enterprise just see that what happens if you click on the minus symbol under the end enterprise rectangle at the top cl click on this uh, this one now this is the universe you have folded up the universe okay <laughs> now ex expand it click on this now this is the big bang so you have created the galaxies okay and everything the zoom out a little, little bit more so why you have this view so that you can take a good print of it because you know you want to see that what is being classified if you want to focus on any particular sector you can expand or contract that one okay so this is the chart view so you you would remember the icon because this say this is a visual thing there is no notes here so yes. you just remember you have to do it you have to remember so if i click on this shape this is what i get if i click on the grid view shape so what i get is table if i click on the gantt chart shape so what i get is gantt chart plus the plus the tabular information so so i want you to click on the gantt chart gantt chart symbol so you are back so i believe that now you understand and appreciate that what is the value of structuring the projects yes. you might be working at the project yes. level only yeah uh, tatiana how many projects you are handling one at a time or multiple um there is a very big major project and uh, we have uh, like almost 100 small Great. to medium projects okay i hope they are well organized by some guy who has rationalized it and given it a good classification <laughs> okay so that you are not confused that which project is what so i believe that if you are looking at energy you wouldn't put a solar project into the nuclear classification or a nuclear project into the solar classification <laughs> exactly <laughs> right because you know there would be lots of projects under the nuclear there will be lots of project under the solar maybe yeah, lots of cities all over the world so they are going for the solar projects so a lot of companies might be calling your company if you are working in the energy sector now there might be a lot of non renewable projects also so you should be able to quickly find a project okay so if you are working as a program manager or even as a project manager you shouldn't be lost to find the one that you want to find okay so if someone tells you a project so you know you can just look at the name and contemplate oh yes this is a this is the energy sector project then you think again so what he told me he told me something which is something like solar so so you can just go into the solar you can find the project there so in the future if you want to create a project which is not classifiable so you can put it directly under the enterprise but if you find that it is classifiable under the energy but no sub classification is available so you put it under the energy no big deal so that's not a problem so okay the classification can be created later also and you can put the project in the proper place okay so this sounds right yes okay. yes please okay fine great now what we are going to learn is how to set up the in interface so before that see when you had started your software it was saying a pop up that the right enterprise type has not been selected okay so we will select the right one so let's go to the admin so click on the admin admin preferences click on admin preferences so in the admin preferences click on the last one industry so you select engineering and construction so this works for you and me also so it works for everybody okay so click on the okay below you see do you see the okay button close button yeah a close button yeah a close button is there so now that sets your industry okay 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 i have a question that uh... that uh, selection is going to be like a uh, parameterized for all the projects that i have there or only a selected program or selected 
group of projects. See, if you are working in the admin mode, so you know it will ap apply across all the projects. So why you have the right to the admin? Because you know this is your own in installation, and this is harmless. Normally you won't have access to the admin rights. You won't even see this option when you are working in your organization. Okay, because admin is a person who is having a very good knowledge at the top level. So mm -hmm. what? So what he will do that he will uh, set it up once only, and this might work for six months and only once in a six months. So there, there uh, could be some some change. Okay, so it is uh, not uh, not needed every day. Okay. okay, now click now click on the general. Yeah, he might should just click on the general tab. Okay, now first day of the week, let us select Monday. Why Monday? Because when you are looking at the calendar, Monday will be shown on the left, then you will be seeing Saturday and Sunday bunched up on the right side. Okay, so we work with Mondays. Okay, in India and in Canada, we work with Mondays. Okay, and default duration. So do you see activity duration five? If you create an activity, it will have by default five days. Okay, five days. Well, if you create a just new, it will give it a five. If you want it to change it to one or two, so that is you can always change it. So that's not a problem. So usually we keep the setting to one. We don't want any activity to have five days because that could be confusing. So one day means that okay, I have to do something on it, and then I have to fix it. Okay, okay, fine. So now you click on the close. Okay, so you have done the lot of setting. Okay, fine. Now, I want you to first set up the interface first, the the buttons which are there at the top. Okay, so um, so how to do it? So I cannot grab your screen. So you will have to do a lot of grabbing. So first, uh, let me show you that how to grab things and how to move things. Okay, so just uh, double click on the activities. Or if if you if if you close this, so even that's not a problem. How it minimized automatically? Uh, that's not a problem. Just just click on the uh, click on the um, the close button. That is the red cross. Okay. Just close it. Close. Now what happened? You have lost all your projects. Where are your projects? So you might have a screen like this. It's good that it happened, so that I can tell you that how to get your projects back. Okay. So not to worry. You go to the enterprise. Everything is there in the enterprise. Click on the end enterprise. Click on the projects. That opens the bag of the projects. You know. Now click on double click on this white bar on the top. The white bar on the top. Just double click on this. This expands. Okay. Now just do this thing. Just go to the view. Go to the view. I'll just tell you how to get rid of this. Go to the view, <coughs> and show on bottom. Select the option show on bottom. No bottom layout. Just click on the no bottom layout. Now you have got your view back. So you can expand with whichever you want, and you can go to the individual project. You how to open the project? I believe you know how to open the project. Control O. Yes, exactly. But you have to see the project. So, how do you see? If you want to see all the projects, you know there is another way to do it. Just go to the view. Do you see this uh, option? If you scroll down, you will see this option expand all. If you scroll down, do you see this expand all? Yes. Click. It is showing you all the projects. Just scroll down; you can see it has expanded all. Just scroll down and have a good look. So we are still uh, still there. Uh, okay, everybody can see Himanshu's screen. Yeah, scroll down. Scroll down. 
Yes, now it has expanded all. Now, if you want, you can close any one that you don't want to see and keep the rest open. Okay, so this is very flexible. Either you collapse all, you expand one by one, or you expand all and you close one by one. Okay, so it is very convenient. And you can uh, collapse to level two, level three. If so the, if they, it is having multiple levels, so you can do that also. Okay, so just do one thing. Go to the view once again. Click on the view option. Okay, just uh, uh, go to the bottom of this menu. Do you see this option collapse to? Just click on this, co collapse to. Now you will see and uh, click on this drop down. Now select level two. Click on apply, not okay, not okay. Apply, 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 no, 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 no. not this one, apply. Do you see that what's yes, happening? Apply that. Now you uh, select uh, yes. one, uh, level one. Now go to this drop down, select level one. I, I want you to learn something, click on apply. Okay. I believe that you are smart enough to understand what's happening. Now you you click on this drop down once again. Do you see this level three? Now now let me tell you, it's not limited to level three. It is it is showing the numbers from the levels that you have created. If you create a level four, it will show you level four. Just just click on three. Apply. Apply. Now, do you see that everything has expanded to the third level because you have a maximum of three levels only. So it, it will show you those levels, okay? So it depends upon what you want to see. So you can collapse selectively also. So it will apply on the entire view, okay? Now, if you, if you click on okay, now this window, this pop-up will disappear, okay? But if you apply, so you can manipulate and see that that how it works okay so i believe that you will remember it because you have done it okay great so just hang on for a moment so this is fine guys so this looks good Yes, it is. Okay, so any uh, questions, anybody? No, no. no okay, good. Now, what we will do, we'll take a small little break for 10 minutes. Okay, then we will start uh, to set up the options that we are seeing on the top and the left and the right. I mean, the icons that we see, you, you know, these are totally flexible. Okay, these are totally flexible to be placed anywhere you want according to your convenience, but we use some orders based upon our experience, but then you can change it also based upon your own convenience. So I will show you, I will recommend certain setup, so which you can change later in your, uh, I mean, professional work experience. So what you think makes it convenient for you, you can do it. Okay, fine. So we will be 10 minutes from now. Okay, so you, you can take your own break or if you like to play around, just play around. So if you mess up something, no issues. Okay, I, I'll help you fix it. Right? Thank you.
Hi guys, I'm back. So you are back? Yes. Yes. Oh uh, yes. Okay. So any uh, questions here? Uh, how uh, we can open a new project, new file? Yes, great. So let's do let's do this thing. Okay. So. Just uh, place your cursor on the top, on the learn, on the learns here. Now, right click, or uh, do you see any new? No, you don't. Okay, so just go to the file, just go to the uh, option file on, on the top. Or you just click on new. So do you see the shortcut here? Control N. Just remember this. Okay. So okay. Just click. On, just click on this. Now, just hang on on this second. It's saying select EPS, select Enterprise Project Structure. Now the thing is that when you create a new project, okay, at that point of time, it might be clear to you that which portfolio this project belongs to. Okay, so if you want, you can place in the correct portfolio at the beginning, or even if you don't know the portfolio, you can just create it and it will just stay at the top. Okay, so just click on the three dots that you see here. Now it is showing you the structure of the enterprise. Suppose if you want to place this pro uh, project under the learn, so select learn, select learn, under the learn portfolio, and click on the plus symbol. So you have selected this one. Just to select, click on the plus. Okay. Now click on the next. Now new uh, that is the project id that is the code so you say learn one in the project id just type learn one in the caps learn one in caps so this is your first learning project okay and in the project name you type a little bit more descriptive name my first learning project you delete everything then type my first learning project so I, I i i believe that the others are doing the same 
Yes. Okay, good. Okay, great. You know, this is a little bit more descriptive. So when you have long list of projects, so you can understand that what this project is all about, you need to put this in the beginning so that it makes it convenient later. Now click on next. Okay, now this is the project start date. Now I'll, I'll tell you how to set the start date. Just click on this uh, three dots. You select 1st of January. Uh, click on the uh, right arrow onto the calendar. So this is for going back. I want you to go in the future. No, we, we always plan for the future. No, January 2018. We are past this date. As, as, as a project manager, you yes, select 1st of Jan. Okay, 1st of Jan is a perfect. It's a Monday. Okay, click on the select. We must plan ad, in advance. So click on the select button here, green. Yeah, green plus sign. You know, that reminds me of pharmacy. Okay, click on the next. Responsible manager. So just click on this uh, triple dot. I'll explain to you. See, uh, see organizational breakdown structure. Now, see every organization has various top level roles. You know, what are the roles? Who is the top level boss of the organization in any organization? Who would be the boss? CEO. Okay. Then CEO might appoint uh, like program manager for energy, for IT, for, you know, these are the various roles. So there could be product managers. In certain company, they have portfolio managers. Okay. In certain company, they have the, uh, what they call is uh, the business managers. So they're taking care of the business. So, you know, this call, yeah, someone is having a little bit of background noise. Uh, can you please cut that off? Someone is having a background noise. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, these are the various structures of organization. Now you have to select a responsible manager. If the manager is known, it might be known. It might not be known. Okay. So just uh, select if you want to give it to someone. If you think that nobody is fitting in into uh, taking care of this project, you can give it to the enterprise. So enterprise means that it is just belonging to the entire enterprise. Okay, just click on this green plus symbol. So it is enterprise by default at this point of time. We can change it later. So that's not a problem. So you have given it to the responsible manager enterprise. Okay, next. Rate type standard, that's fine. Next. What is the rate type, sir? Uh, that how the resources will be uh, built, standard or hourly or whatever. So we go with the standard ones. Okay. Okay, just click on next. Okay, fine. So click on the finish button. So do you see this learn one under the learn? So this, this is your this is your project. Now do you know what is the shortcut key to open the project? Shortcut control. Oh, yes, uh, just click on control. Then uh, this project is selected, right? You don't have to do anything. Just click on the open button. Yeah, someone is having background noise. Can you please cut that off? Uh, yes, some, yes. Some stuff is being moved here, around here, and there. So now you are inside the project. Now you won't be seeing any activities because there are no activities. Now your your Gantt chart is not visible. Why it is not visible? Because you are in the grid view. If you look at the top under the view option, you will see that the grid view is selected. Now, if you select the next view, just click on the uh, icon next to the grid view. That is the Gantt chart view. Click on that. Yes, yes, yes. Fine. Yes, right. Now, the, here is your Gantt chart board. But the Gantt chart side is blank because you don't have any activities here. So this is how you create a new project. And this is what a new project looks like. So it's all totally blank. So if you wish, you, you can add new tasks here. So, But be, before we do that, 
so what we are going to do that we are going to organize the interface a little bit okay so what i'm going to do that i'm going to uh, uh switching to my screen and then i will show you that how we do it and then i will switch back to your screen and you will do it and rest of the people can learn it okay so let me see i get the connection or you have to hand it back to me so i have to stop share uh yes so you stop sharing uh, the screen so i think then the control will come back to me okay fine now let me share my screen okay so let me select the op option share screen and i share this one okay so my screen is getting shared so guys can you see my screen yes yes okay fine see if you look at the buttons now these these buttons are very very flexible you know these are just drag and drop things these are not very hard and fast they are not stuck in places okay so if you want to take any button and out of place so you know there is a lock and key so let me find there is a lock here so one second i have logged it into the place so let me unlock this and then i can show you that yeah this is the lock actually so let me unlock this i unlock this now do you see this small little dots that uh, appear here just watch these dots will disappear when i click on the lock so why did i click on the lock so that they don't get accidentally they don't get moved away it was when i get a perfect configuration and perfect placement of the buttons i want to keep it that way now just observe my screen do you see see this collapse and expand you know i have it all here i have almost all the buttons here on my screen okay so okay if if i want to zoom or contract so i i can do it from here okay almost all the buttons are there okay so if i open any project here say suppose if i open the project okay and i can see a lot of data so so i can see a lot of data here so you know all the buttons are here almost all the buttons are here now how to get the buttons how to get all these buttons just see first of all let me show you that view do you have this toolbar so the option view toolbars do you see my screen guys yes just do one thing select all of them as on my screen view toolbar you know this this will be good fun why do i want you to select all because i want you to get familiar with all and then later if you don't need something you can always switch it off okay view toolbars yeah view toolbars you will see the toolbars below because on your screen the resolution is low and so that's why you might have to scroll a little bit down to locate this one so look at this option in the view in the sub option of the view you will see toolbars so that is at right at the bottom after toolbars so after What's toolbars right? just click on the on the triangle which is next to the toolbar the triangle is pointing toward the right okay so just click on that and you select all the options one by one select all the options most of them already selected yeah select the rest of them can i do in a one uh, go or i have to no you have to and select it one, one by one you okay. can select it one by one only not in one go
so you have done that so you know yes. you guys you, you guys will find a lot of toolbars piling up on the top do do you yes. see a lot of toolbars piling up on the top yes so that's not a problem so what you can do you can just grab them very fine no you can just grab them like this so you know if it is like this on your screen so it it might be in four rows it, there might be another row so that's not a problem it, it it could be like this okay so what you can do just find out the toolbars which are there and expand them to include all the buttons add or remove buttons select all the buttons select all the buttons in all the toolbars okay select all 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 the buttons in all the toolbars okay just see all the buttons just do this thing just grab it okay place it like this grab it place it like this grab it place it like this okay and uh, just go with my selection right now so if you want to place something here here so you can place it like this but this is something which is more convenient placed here this is something which is more convenient placed here so you know we have learned it from experience okay so what we need to use frequently you know we place them towards the left side so we can see that very quickly because we are mostly looking at the left side when we start an interface because the we are reading from left to right we are writing from left to right so we scan our eyes the, the scan any page or interface from left to right right so just observe my screen and whatever is there on my screen replicate that just place it it will take you a while so if you place something something might uh, i mean wiggle and jiggle it will move left or right but if you are good with the mouse you can do it just but make sure that it uh, doesn't fall out of your uh, screen it shouldn't fall outside the screen okay because if it falls outside the screen on your table or something then i cannot put it back got my point no you didn't get my point not so much <laughs> <laughs> no i was just joking it can never fall out of the screen so what i mean to say that don't do it too violently okay just do it gently and you will find that you have control on this because software is soft and hardware is hard so when we are handling software we handle it softly so slowly and slowly we will learn the utility of these tools so these are these are called icons so icons will be recognized when we utilize them one by one and uh, some of the icons you have already used like you have used the zoom like you have used the collapse tool okay and this i i can show you by example like this one it says no bottom layout so if you don't want something on the bottom so this will just make it disappear now this one is very useful you have already used it this is the grid view if you have more columns you can display all the columns if you want to have the the gantt chart view you can have it if you want to have the activity network it will show you the activity network so you know all kind of views are possible okay now this is for showing the relationships but i usually won't like to see a gantt chart without any relationships so this is activated by default so this is fine it is there okay so you will slowly and slowly learn the utility of this button so this is a uh, print control p control p is the same print preview you want to preview so you don't want to print but you want to see it okay that how it would look on the paper so you know it this gives a very fine view so if you want to get out of here just click on the close so this brings you back to into the main screen okay now these are called the tabs now the main tab is the project so this is where you start from okay so this is how you will start so when you start your interface so when it starts it starts from here okay so this is how you basically 
look at the enterprise and then you select your project you say i want to do this open project control o so it will show you the activity if you want to see the work breakdown structure it will show the work breakdown structure for this project okay so this is what is project if you want to expand the wbs so you click on the plus and the minus so plus and the minus so that gives you a very controlled view so this is what it looks like okay if you want to see the resources which have been applied so you can click which resources have been uh, assigned to which task in this project so you can see the dates on which this resource is assigned okay so you can shift the tab here you can shift one tab toward the left or the right just like you do it on your browser so you can do the same thing here so just place your buttons and then if you see this lock symbol so when you think that all your toolbars are in place just click on the lock all toolbars so that will keep the placement safe okay so that will ensure that accidentally they don't get moved away and if you use a uh, higher resolution screen so that will give you more to look at so i am using a uh, 17 inches laptop 17 inches so i use the higher resolution so that i can see more stuff on my screen i can uh, have all the buttons which i frequently use to do my consulting jobs so that saves me time
so you are all doing it so just let me know if you are having any problem so is it going good yes okay great so guys any questions for me uh, not now okay there are a few toolbars in which uh, nothing is highlighted yeah because nothing is highlighted because they are not relevant right now so the toolbars will get uh, highlighted when they are relevant okay so just just see this see, if if i close these windows and then you know, a lot of toolbars will become deactivated okay, okay. so the toolbar see now, now do you see that a lot of toolbars have become deactivated so they become activated when we have something to do with those toolbars so these are the toolbars which are there so these are relevant even in the beginning so like like import export and enterprise like enterprise this is single click you don't have to go to the enterprise do you, do, do you see all these symbols here they are all all here okay you you don't have to basically use the drop down because these days if you have a high resolution monitor so you can spare some space from the top and you can utilize it to keep all the tools handy so this is how we do in the beginning so it's okay you can use it later but in your screen after. in your yes. screen you have adjusted all the toolbars in two rows i have adjusted here, in, uh, no here you will not be able to adjust because you are using a lower resolution because my screen has okay. a resolution of uh, 16 1966 something okay 1966 by 768 so it's like that okay it is 16 by 9 ratio whereas yours is a different resolution which is lower so you'll be able to put in less icons there okay okay i am using a 17 inches monitor I, if you are using 17 inches then it is useful to increase the resolution so that you get more space to adjust more and more icons because i work with lot of one charts Gantt charts and all Gantt that stuff. Gantt charts and all that stuff. Yeah, have you put me yeah, on the speaker? Because the voice is, uh, I mean, it is looping back into my headphone. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. So, so uh, that's what I was trying to tell you. So it depends upon uh, what is the resolution. If the resolution is more, 
so you will be able to put it more icons and uh, if you try to increase the resolution on a smaller screen so then it will be difficult for you to distinguish between the icon because some icons are similar and you might mistake one icon for the other so you need a little bit so sometimes you know i attach a projector sometimes i attach a, a monitor so these days if you look at your uh, home tv like the lcd tv it has got hdmi port okay so if you have any um, lcd tv which you are not using like 32 inch or something so don't give it away so you can use it for your project work you use you can use it for learning purpose so i use that tv for my project work because when i attach it i get more screen space okay and i can see the icons much more clearly and then i use a normal keyboard and mouse not the laptop one because the laptop one has limited so i am very much comfortable with the normal keyboard and mouse because i started my career in 1990 those days we used to have those keyboards the bigger with the bigger chunkier keys okay so i'm comfortable with that so i use that in my office okay so i get things done very quickly using that keyboard mouse and the bigger screen so this is okay this is fine if you use a scroller use a scroller while you are traveling you can use the keyboard on the laptop that's very convenient when you're traveling that's fine but if you're working in the office if you want to do things faster and accurately then uh, attach an external keyboard and mouse and i would ad advise that if you want to do project planning use a mouse at least uh, in your laptop because that will give you a greater greater control and it will give you very finer control about the small little icons and the options which are visible on the screen right so i want to see uh my projects again so i go to the enterprise i click on the projects now the projects uh, icon is uh, here somewhere no it is not there so if it is here or so i i would use that so i just click that and i get it okay so i should be seeing all the projects and i don't want to see this bottom view so you know i just switch this off from here okay so i switch this off so then i can switch the view to the so this is called the grid view so if you are done by play uh, uh, i'm placing of the icons so what you can do that you can click on this small little lock so i think you have to find it where it is visible so just find this lock and click on it okay so that will uh, i mean keep all the all the toolbars in place for now and later you can unlock it and then you can then Uh, rearrange them according to your convenience then again lock it so that it is there safely now we will learn learn about the layout so you guys are ready for the layout just lock your toolbars in place and let's let's learn yes. about the layout okay so layout is very important because you see uh, how many uh, columns are here four columns but you know uh, in prime where you have got uh, around more, more than 250 plus columns which you can use it so that is called a layout so this is the layout this is the current layout so this is the default one so if you want to create you can create your n number of layouts so this is the point to start with then you create your own layouts and you modify them so there are certain layouts which are out of the box and there are layouts which you can use the current layout as a starting point and then you can create your own layouts so uh, let's say that i want to see what are the start date what are the cost of the project what is the breakdown of the cost okay i want to add these columns here so these columns are available these are inbuilt i have to understand that how these are categorized and intuitively find them out and add them here now if you look at this layout so this layout so uh, just uh, just a moment just a moment let me do this thing i am just muting you all for a while because there is some back background noise okay so this background noise is now logged out okay now i'll show you what is this layout okay so this is the layout now the layout is this layout projects is given to you by default so if you click on the open so you can see that this layout are, this layout is given so this is the projects layout chart view so i uh, let me show it to you apply a project coding so you know this has a di different set of columns project cost 
So this has a different set of columns. Then standards, standard projects view. Okay. So these are the various layouts. Okay. So these are the various layouts which you have here. And then if you want, so you, you can go to any kind of layout and you can utilize it and to understand your projects. Okay. So this is the project cost. So this has got the classifications as well. Okay, standard projects view apply. So this is the standard projects view. So then it has got all the columns, then the chart view. Okay, so basically you can have your own layout also. So the layout is accessed from here, layout, then open. Then you say no here. Then you say standard projects view, and then you say open. Now this is the standard projects view. Now this is also out of the box, but if you want, you you, you can change it also. So if I if you want to have a start date, finish date, okay, and you you can have this. So you can change the columns. So original budget. So you know these are the. Now if you want to add the Gantt chart, you can add the Gantt chart here. So you can see the Gantt chart here. Okay, for this one. So that's not a problem. Now, then you can open a project. Now, you, even the project has its own layout, so you can change the layout for the project also. So this is the classic schedule layout. So if you want to see what are the columns in the schedule layout, so these are the columns. So let's go back to the projects view. Okay, so let me uh, hang on for a while. Just, uh, okay guys, a any questions till this point? Be before I go any uh, further? So no. do we have Okay, fine. So what I will do that I will not modify the standard project view. I can do that. Um, Prime Avera will let me do that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this layout standard project view. I say save as. So uh, what I do, I put a dash and I put my initials. Okay. So can you do it? I'll just hang here. Hang on here for a while. Oh, what it is doing, just like you would take a word file as a template, suppose a, a document has been written by your colleague. So you don't want to mess that document, you create a copy of that. You op open that document and then you say save as document name dash your, your, own, your own initials. So what happens is that you create a, another copy and you work on that copy. Yeah, yeah tell me, yeah, what is that? What should I put? Uh, uh, there is one of uh, uh, layout name is there. Uh, so you put dash your initial. So you put HD. Just like put SD. SD is my oh, initial. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, so uh, you available to current user. Yeah. So you know that, it will it will create a new layout and it will save it. I'll I'll just show it to you where it is getting saved. So, so we have to save it. Yeah, you have to save it. Now, do you see the standard project view SD? SD is my initial, so you will see HD and Tatiana will see T something. Okay, okay, so you will see your layout. Now, this is something that you modify. You keep the original one as it is, because if you want to get back to the original one, so you still have it here. So do you see the original one here? The one that I've highlighted. Now, do you see a classification when you open user admin? So this is the one which you have created. The one which is in the global is something which comes with the package. So those are factory packed. Okay. So now you have created the one from the standard project view from the global and you have created with your own name. Now we are going to modify this. Okay. And you, you can even export and import the layout to your colleagues and friends. Okay, I can export a layout to you. I can send you the file which, which you can import and it, it will instantly change the view. So, you know, this is very flexible. So first we learn to manipulate the layout. So that is very interesting and useful skill here. So do you see this in the open layout? Global and the user admin because you are the admin. Do you see one layout with your own name next to it? Yes or no? I can see your window. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so you have to create it. No? So you have to create it. So you know uh, what I did. See, this is what I did. 
I how said, to go to uh, this open layout window? Yes, just just watch my screen. Click here. You see this drop down layout? Layout. Yes. This? Yeah. Now select the click on this triangle next to the layout, and you will see the open button. Okay. Click on this, and it will ask you, "Would you like to save the changes in this layout?" You say, "No, I am not interested. I am fine with this." You say, "No," and then it will give you this pop up. So in the pop up, what you have is global and the user admin. So if you have saved anything in the uh, user admin layout, so you will see the user admin class. Or if you if you have not modified any, because if you have just started using the software, you might not see the user admin. Because the user admin, this classification will appear when you save the first layout taken from the factory packed layout. Okay. okay. So uh, tell me, guys, what do you see there? So do you see the user admin or not? Let me try first. Okay. If you want to save it, so I will show you the step that how to save your own layout from the factory packed layout. Because we don't want to mess up the factory packed ones, okay? We want to keep them pristine, so that we can resort back to it in case we need to. Yes, this is a visible user admin. Okay, so Object you, search. yeah. So if you have created your own layout, so that's fine. So what you do, just select this one, your layout, and you say apply. So you know, the screen would jiggle, and the the columns will change because your column could be different from yeah, let's see if you apply this project coding select project coding apply you see a uh, layout has changed you see there's no classification or anything at all sometimes people might get frightened what happened where is my portfolio because this is a different layout like project cost so this will have a different set of columns like if you use standard projects view apply if you take your own apply so this will have a different set of columns so that's fine because you keep the factory packed stuff as it is because if you want to do reset you can always use one of these and you can play with the ones that you take as copies so you play with the copy not with the original one okay so this is what we will do right now so guys you are ready for this to uh, to modify this one yes so, uh, so we can uh, use any layout and yes. save it as ours and then we can uh, make changes in that absolutely you can create a number of layouts you know you don't have to live with what what oracle packed okay you create your own view and you uh, live your own life okay so that's what is the purpose of software so uh, ashwarya why, uh, what about you you are catching up you are in sync with us you have any question yeah Okay, no, so it's working from the oh, okay. It's so I just want to make sure that since you have uh, just started to use this tool, I mean, so I want to make sure that you are also going along with us. And if anybody is having question, just stop me. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this one. I say apply, then I say open. Now I have this apply. Now I'm going to modify this. Now see the columns that I have, project ID. You might have the same or different columns, really doesn't matter. We'll make it same. Okay, so how do I apply the columns? See, I don't have a start date here. I would like to have a start date here, project manager, fine, original budget. Okay, okay, fine. So now, what is the column? I want to change the columns here. See, how do I change? I go to the right side. Okay. Do you see this uh, right click menu? Yes. Now I select the op option columns. Do you see this? Another sub option which is coming up a little bit toward the left. That is customize. You see that when I select the columns, customize. Okay. I click on the customize. Now see the magic. See. Do you see the list of the columns here and it is the same as on the screen? From left to right, see from bottom, uh, from top to bottom, the order is applied as left to right. You see this? Okay. What I want is this a start. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You have these, any question? These columns are standard, or we can create uh, our own columns. We don't have to create any column. We can create also, but you know, um, uh, Primavera has provided so many columns that. 
for the next 10 years, you might not think of even creating a new column. So you'll find it there. So just look at the available options, baseline, budget, cost, days, duration, and value. You know where these have come from. These have come from the feedback from the project managers during the last 35 years. So it, this software has been around for 35 years. So just think of it, where were you 35 years ago? So uh, I don't know if, if you were there. So, you know, 35 years ago, I, I was in, uh, let me guess, uh, I was in 10 standard. Okay, so that's not a problem. So, so let us try to understand that how we can ship. Now, I want to see the start date of the project. Now, where can I find a date? Can someone guess? Can someone guess if you look at the classification? Can I find it under the baseline or budget or cost or dates or durations? Where? Dates. Dates, yeah. exactly. So what I want is a start. Do you see the start? Do you see the start column here? Yes. Yes. Now I select it and I move it. And then I move it here. Okay. Just see. I'm not going to close this window. Yeah, I, you know, someone put me on the speaker again. So the voice is looping back to me. So please keep me on the headphone only. Okay. And uh, make sure that the uh, background is uh, quiet. Okay. So that you can hear me clearly. Just watch. I'm going to click on the apply. Just watch the screen below this. Do you see a change there? You see the start column? Uh Next to the project okay. column, applied in the background. So, so uh, this is how you placed uh, it uh, before finish. Very simple. The I mean the navigation button. This up down. Okay. So we need only okay. up and down only. We don't need left or right. We can go only one way. Okay. 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 So I then I say apply. So if I want to keep it here, apply. Okay. So you know this goes to the right rightmost side. So you know this is called customization of layout. So layout is the layout of the column. So if I want it here, when does the project, because for me it makes sense. Uh, project manager, fine, original budget. I don't want to see the original budget. So what do I do? I just move this column to the left side. You know, I press the left button. But don't press this double left or double right. You know, these are very dangerous options because it will select everything and deselect everything. Okay, just use only the single right and single left only. Original budget, I don't want. Add completion cost, I don't want. I don't want the actual. No, I don't want. Okay, I say apply. So I can see the project manager, I can see the start and finish. And but I, I would like to know that what is the budgeted cost. So let me see if I have any column called budgeted cost or budget or something. So let me look at the budget. So no, so let me look at uh, baseline project total cost. So I apply. So if you want to see that uh, what is the total cost of a project, so you can use BL. BL means baseline. Okay. So this is the, this is going to show you the cost of the project. So if you want to see a breakup, now this is showing you the total cost column. Now, how does this total come from? Actually, you know, there are four kind of resources. One is the people. So people, they are called labor. Labor, material, non-labor. So what is non-labor is the equipment and expense, the cash expenses that you give to the contractors. So I want to select all these. So I select four columns. Do you see the selection here? I press the shift, I sh press the shift, shift button and then I uh, uh, click on the down arrow. I mean, I tap the down arrow four times and I'm there. I've selected it like a bunch, the whole bunch. Okay. So what should I be doing now? What should I be doing now? Which, which button should I click on? Tell me. The right Top single one. one. Yes. Right single one. So that will take the whole bunch. Now I'll place it rationally. I want to usually want to see the total on the right. So first, first cost I would like to see is the labor cost, then equipment, then I would like to see the material, then cash expenses, then I would like to see the total. 
so i'm fine so just watch my screen okay now i click on apply applied do you see in the background and when i click on okay so this is my own customized view so do you see this signature sd so that's mine so you you can create yours you can share with your friends okay so guys tell me can you do it or there is any question no question no questions okay good so could you do it hands on yes yeah okay great now let me show you that how i can export it to you okay now i will send this layout to you i will send this layout to you guys over the mail and you will apply this so why i am telling you this because you know sometimes the layouts so they have to be standardized within an organization right suppose if your organization has certain standards and certain views are compliant to certain standards so those views will be available by default with the pmo that is the project management office so what they will do that they will keep a library of these layouts and views which are not out of the box but suppose if your laptop has got a new setup so your view will be different from rest of the company so you know it will be very difficult for you to relate to the things during the meetings or something like that during the discussion so you should have the same view as the rest of your colleagues so what the pmo will do so they will export they will send you a bunch of these views over the email attachment right so you are getting my point yes. so so what you can do you can import this and you are immediately set up and synchronized with your new laptop with the rest of the company right so what the rest of the team wants to wants you to see what they are uh, seeing so you will be seeing that so that you uh, are synchronized with the same information okay because in this lot of information here if you want you can put all the columns here but we don't want that because if you put all the information here that's not much useful then it will uh, not give you a focused understanding of the project so sometimes you would be interested in focusing on the financial aspect sometimes you would be interested in focusing on the on the time aspect sometimes you would be interested in focusing upon the the work effort aspect so you can create your own set of column with the views and you can utilize those views from time to time and then you can share those views also with your colleagues so what i'm going to do i'm going to export it to you and send it to you over the mail okay okay just see that what i'm going to do i'm going to open this layout and first of all i'll save it fine so i want to make sure that what i sent to you is is uh, saved for sure then i say open so i select this view it is already selected with the sign it but do you see this export button here yes. okay so what i'm going to do export so what i'm going to do that i will select a temporary folder on my on my laptop so i have created standard project view dash sd dot plf okay plf do you know what is plf prima vera layout file it's very simple prima vera layout file just just keep it in mind so this is exported so what i'm going to do that i'm going to mail it to you okay so 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 just uh, just hang on for a moment and uh, then i will tell you that if uh, if i mail it to you so let me see so i am just mailing it to you
so guys check your mail so you would find a layout file and download it to some temp folder Okay guys tell me so if you have downloaded the uh, attachment just like it okay great what about you uh, ashwarya yeah i downloaded yeah. it it's yeah, saved in the temp folder yeah temp folder okay just remember where you saved it so you will have to navigate there and get it in and what about you himanshu so you have got it yeah it is downloaded in the downloads folder okay fine great 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 okay so just follow my steps slowly so click here in the layout standard so i believe you can see my screen now i just started to share you you can see you see this option layout to open yes okay just click on this do you see this pop up now you are here guys everybody is here oh, yes. open okay do you see this yeah, button uh, import 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 button yes great so click on this and you can navigate to the folder where you download it and select this file like this I hope you can find it. Layout file. Yes. Open. Yeah. yeah. Open. And then save. Import, import layout as layout name. Okay. So you just keep it as the same. Keep the name as the same, and you click on save. So when you click on save, it it will be saved here. Okay. So since uh, I have already file which is named as the same, so what it has done. that it has uh, saved it as underscore one do you see this on my screen underscore one yes, because you know it is smart enough so it will not uh, it will not override the one that i already have so it has saved it as but it, this won't happen in your case because the name would be different from all the layout which you have so do you have this layout in here user admin list yes yes okay just select this layout and click on the apply yes so i yeah, believe now, now you can see what is the value and the utility of this facility so you can create a layout in every screen so we have created this layout in the in the enterprise screen so similarly we can create layout in the project screen also so if you look at the activities tab here so actually what is this activity tab it is nothing but the individual project here 
so individual projects can have their own view so you know there are a lot of views which will come as the factory made like global you have lots of views so you won't see anything admin here you won't see anything admin do you, do you see admin in your activities do you see any admin view in your activities you won't see if you open the layout in the project view you won't see anything in the admin why you don't see anything here because this is a fresh installation and you haven't saved anything okay now just play with this classic eps wbs layout apply okay classic wbs layout you know this is color coded this is classic eps wbs layout enterprise project structure and work breakdown structure so you know this is going to give a color code to the various levels where i have to go uh, you have to you have to click on the activities no uh, you are uh, you want to know for the import purpose for the import no import i have already completed okay just, just click on the activity activity means that you are on the individual project okay you are on the project in individual project okay so i want you to un understand that how does it look like uh, when activity you tab is not visible here so you I, just uh, open a project it will come just open a, any project you say that the open project and once you open any project activity tab will come because the activities is showing for the project which is selected here like uh, i have selected ec uh, 00630 so activities will show up for this which this project is open i am not getting it really no just uh, just go to the projects the select this project do you see my screen here yes so the right click and click on the open you will see okay. activities so you will see activities tab is opening so uh, let me close this so i don't have activities right now do you see my screen no activity right now i have uh, selected a project then i have to right click yes you have to right click and then select open open project like this so then okay. you will see the activities tab so this is the activities okay. for the project that you just opened okay now you okay. have various layout views in the project okay. so these are these are the views which you see in the global list you know these are factory made you see you, see, you know this okay. is an exhaustive list you know these are all created by the project managers those who have worked before us and uh, this is something which is uh, very exciting you can do you have lot of choice to start from okay. so uh, i have to go on classic schedule layout ha huh, just see that what does it look like apply the various layouts and see that what difference does it make on the screen uh, appearance just see okay i why i want you to play play with it because you know this is a very useful skill and that will that will help you save time in the future in the future we want to focus on something like if you want to see the actual cost so you apply this so do you see the number of the columns change here but i have forgotten uh, how to add this uh, columns can you explain once again yeah yeah sure you first you play with this i will just show you in a moment so that's not a problem okay okay just apply this and see that what is the difference it is making here earned value cost earned value variance okay earned value analysis so you would be doing all this if you have done pmp so you should be able to utilize this in your interpretation of the project health earned value analysis isn't it uh, useful for uh, uh, understanding the project health like you uh, yes. so do you remember a cpi and spi what they are used for what is yes, the purpose sir. of cpi and spi so spi tells you the speed of the project and cpi tells you what uh where the utilization of the dollar, utilization yes. of the dollar cost performance index so when you spend 1 dollar on the project how does the dollar perform is it giving you back 1 dollar worth of value or is it giving you more or less something like that yes. okay so if you want to have this view get chart so you can have this okay yes. so you know these are the views which are which are available okay out of the box suppose if you want to save a schedule layout if you want to modify now i will answer your question that how do do you see this global but you don't see any admin here so just do this thing 
first of all you select this layout and you go to the layout and click on save as click on save as and you type your name after the dash as i'm doing so i'm going to type sd and i want the rest of you to do it also i will just pause here for a while now tell me uh, tatiana and ashwarya are you catching up with me or am i going too fast i'm okay i'm doing the 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 task okay fine so uh, what about you Ash ashwarya uh, did you miss any step or something uh, no i'm getting it okay fine so I'm now, it. now let me tell you what i'm doing i'm using out of the box something which came factory packed i'm saving a copy for and then i will modify it. okay save layout as okay yeah so i i put i put my initials there okay so why you've done that i don't want to mess up the factory packed stuff and, uh, and i want to keep it clean and that's why i save it with my name and then i play around with that and this is what i do i click on save now as i save it do you see this name coming up so this is the one which is there L like if i save a word file with my name so this is what becomes the current file okay now i'm going to modify this okay so before i modify i'm going to turn off the background okay one second one second hold this okay okay himansh okay fine so uh i think we have cut down the noise okay fine so let's have a look at the columns how do we add the columns just do just do this thing just click on this view so that you have all view for the columns only right so you have this columns you want to add some columns here so this is the schedule layout okay schedule layout okay. means the start and date and all that so let us add some more columns like the cost so what is the cost of each of the task okay so let's do this thing because this is the project these are the task of the project so as as you can see this is the do, uh, this is the work breakdown structure so if you if you collapse to say if you say level 2 apply so you will see okay so this is the wvs okay wvs level 1 so this collapses to project level 2 and if you say plus plus it will expands all so these are showing you the task now i want to add i want to add some column see those who missed see i right click here you are seeing that himanshu yes this menu comes up do you see this option columns down below in the middle of the box okay yes. you click you click on the columns okay so i'm going to place this box a little bit toward the left and expand it so that you can clearly see that what options are available so do you see a list of classification that is the available option and selected option so do you see see that yes and do you see that top to bottom it uh, corresponds to the left to right yes yes right now i would like to add some column regarding the cost okay so i go to the classification cost and i say that okay fine so let me find a column say uh baseline project total cost i want to place it after the start and finish and i want to modify the start and finish after the duration let me say apply okay actually and i uh, i just missed the initial step that right click yeah right right click is very easy okay so that's not a problem so i don't want right. the total where 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 to start actually ha ah, no no problem so you should ask if you if you miss something you should ask so that's not a problem you can ask later also so that's not a problem so we are flexible here so do you see so what i'm doing that i'm uh, rearranging applying so you know, if you say okay okay means that you apply and close this window so if you want to mix and match you keep this window open if you want to see that how the result looks like you click on apply instead of okay okay 
so general so what is there in the general do i need something calendar critical owner primary constraint project name so i don't need that so this is too much of a general so okay so dates start date finish date if i if you if you have if you want a comparison actual start so suppose if the project or the the project has started so you can see actual start and start so you can place them side by side and you you can see that how the project is going apply so do you see the actual start as blank why the actual start is blank because the the project hasn't started yet so that's why the actual start date is blank here okay so once you complete an activity or you start an activity it will have a start date once the activity is finished you will have the actual finish so so this is how it will look if you earned value so what do you want to see if you want to see the the cost variance or the schedule variance okay so you can see that uh, the schedule variance so schedule variance okay here it is schedule variance so i hope you understand what is schedule variance so schedule schedule variance means that what is this what is the variance of uh, the work in terms of money from the start so schedule variance right now is zero because there is nothing here so i just remove this column i don't want it so what do i do so is there any useful column that i would like to see dates durations actual cost so let me see actual cost actual cost is also zero so i'll keep the actual cost here so this is what helps me so then what do i do i save this layout i say save so once you save this layout so this layout becomes permanent now this becomes a part of your library now let's have a look at library do you see this yes now this is the global that you are seeing here so this comes as factory packed so this is what you created so you took one of the layout and you modified it and you can and you can create another one another one you can add as many as you want you can export you can share with friends you might find some collection of layouts from the internet also so people are creating this layout and they are sharing with the whole world okay so they are making it convenient just like you get templates for word file powerpoint file okay so you can get this layouts file also plf files also for specific purpose so if you are into some forum or something so you might find lot of people those who are expert so they will create and share this layouts with you and if you are a novice you would find this very convenient okay so that will help you in your project so guys this looks good so you want to move to the next step yes great so i pause here for a while and i would invite questions any i am not saying that you would ask me questions regarding what i showed you so if you want to ask me something related to it something how you can utilize in your project how it will help you in understanding the project so you you can ask me those questions also not directly related to it but centered around this current topic so do you have any questions not for now and uh, ashwari you are fine with it yeah it's fine okay fine okay great so you have tried this out so you can save a layout yeah. you can you can create a customized one and save it so the value is that you can create a library of your own layouts and you can use them as and when now i'll show you something which is very common that we do so if i want to take a print out so what do i do in windows usually so in any software so what is the shortcut to take a print out control p control p just do it just do it that what it looks like so it looks like this but you know but this is not so convenient because you know it doesn't show me a review so you know this is very risky you might end up wasting a lot of pages so it is uh, it says pages 1 to 8 but i don't know what is there in the pages 1 to 8 i don't want uh, to mess up paper okay so just do this thing cancel it do you see this i i can hear print preview 
next to the print. So one is the print icon which shows a full printer and then there is an icon print preview or you can go from the file also file I believe that it's here file print preview you see this can you select this option print preview yes. okay fine just select it and have a look so let me also have a look at my screen print preview so you know this print out is coming out like this so I'd like to see that what it looks like on the next page so I click on the next okay so it is basically sparing the column I just go down now I think it's uh, wasting some paper so what do I do that I go to the setup so this is what I do print setup or the page setup or this is the page setup so what do I do I select landscape okay and margins margins is 0.5 which is fine header you want to put some name here modify you can click modify footer so it puts oracle corporation if you don't want that you can put the name of your own company option apply now let's have a look so what does it look like so basically it is fitting in let me see what is there on the next page so on the next page it has the next set of columns okay so I want it all to fit into one page. Let me do this thing. So adjust to fit to adjust to 100% normal size. I say apply. So what does it look like? It looks like okay to me. I can read it. Okay. So what is on the next page? Next page is the next next set of column, page three, four, five. So it has all the columns adjusted. Okay. So now I'm going to print it. So I say print setup. So here I select XPS document writer. I believe guys you have this XPS document writer. You have this in Windows 7, 8, 8 and it is there by default. So it is just like your PDF writer. So basically PDF writer, um, I don't know, it, it, it takes money. This XPS writer is free of cost. It is, it creates a lightweight XPS file and this XPS file can be shared with colleagues over email. You can put it on the websites. So these files are very flexible. So basically, you know, these files, they save you paper. So you can print to the XPS file, examine that. You can send it to colleagues. If they like, they can print it from the XPS file. So I'm going to show it to you on the XPS printer. I call it a sort of a virtual printer so that you can practice. Okay, you print 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 and you can practice that what it would look like on a paper I say okay so when I say okay it is printing okay then I click on the print and I say okay so it will ask me that where I want to print I say that okay I would like to print in the temporary folder so I say test print underscore zero one okay I click on save so this file will be saved and this will be picked up by the XPS viewer so you are seeing this screen in which you in which you you can see the XPS no, I, I don't think so because uh, the software doesn't show by default. So let me uh, pick this up. Print preview. Okay, I have to select this one as well. Share screen. So now do you see the screen? I guess our XPS document writer is there. So do, do you see the screen? No? Just, uh, Which just screen, sir? Uh, one second. Uh, okay, okay. Um, let me do the thing. XPS. Okay, now. Now do you see the screen? XPS view. I'm, I'm scrolling through this. Now this is a printout that I've taken. Okay.
yeah, Ashwarya and Tatiana, can you please confirm that you are seeing a printout? It's, it looks like a paper. Yes, I can see it. Okay, just see this. Uh, you, I can expand and contract it also by using Control minus. So you know, I can see a bird's eye view of the pages. So how the pages are going to turn out? You know, this is how the pages are going to look. Do you see this condensed? Do you see this condensed view? Yes. Yes. It shows you all the five pages. If they look right, so what you can do that then in that case you can take a printout, you can share with your colleagues. This XPS file, you don't if someone doesn't have Primavera, you can send the finished report or the finished view in the format of XPS. And XPS is a viewer is installed in the Windows 7, 8, and 10. Okay, by default. And they, they can use it right away. Okay. If you want to expand the view, control plus. So ha have you got this view on your screen also? Okay, I'm I'm pressing control plus. Control on and plus symbol from the notepad. I mean uh, the the numeric pad. Control plus. So control plus shows me a magnified view. If someone wants to see a part of the screen, a little bit someone has having a hard time. Okay, with the uh, the eyesight, so a person can expand it and contract it. So expansion and contracting can be done by control plus and control minus. Okay, so then if you want to take a printout, finally you want to take a printout, so you can go to the file and then print. So then you take a hard copy. So you select where you want to print it. So you can send it to a selection of uh, the printers that you have on your network. Okay, so you can print all pages. You can even pr print the pages selectively also. You don't have to print necessarily all the pages. You can select one page or you can selectively print just only the third page. Okay, so it is just like any other like Word file or something like that. So it is a very lightweight sort of PDF file and this is free of cost and this is pre-installed in your Windows system. So you can use it, you can magnify zoom in and zoom out from the slider also the slide slider is given here at the right side bottom just have a look okay so you you can zoom in zoom out both ways so uh, does it look good to you so you can print okay yes. so printing is not a big deal just close and close this file and then you are fine so what do you do you can then come back to the main screen okay so where you are seeing your activities one second so let me see what happened so So guys, you are seeing my main screen now? Activities? Yes. Okay, yes. fine, great. Okay, fine. So this is layout and this is printing. So I believe that you are now quite comfortable with the interface. Now let me see what's there next up on the list. So let's have a look. So we are going at the right pace. And uh, so you know how to create a project? Okay, you know, control N or file new. Okay, now what we are going to do that we are going to set the preferences and if you want to add a new currency, you would be able to do it. If you want to set up the calendar, you should be able to do it. Now, let me show you from the admin. Now, this is something that you might not get when you work in your company environment because admin is not open. But here you should learn it because in the future, uh, you might have admin rights. Okay, so you should be able to set it up admin. Okay, so you are ready. Yes. Fine. So let me show yes. you. Let me show you the currencies. What currencies are existing by default? By default, it it has this set of uh, currencies and uh, these uh, currencies. So these are the. So US dollar is having the status of the base currency. Okay. So every other currency is based upon the US dollar one. So how much is pound compared to US dollar one? It is 0.61, so it is more valuable. So in US dollar one, you get Japanese yen. 
you get how many euros you get 0.68 euros if you give one dollar you get so you can always update it so you keep the us dollar at once you don't mess up with it so do you know that where you can get currency exchange rates have you heard of a site called xe.com xe xe.com xe.com it gives you the exchange rate and you want you can update it here yeah. now let's go down let's see if we have indian rupees or canadian dollar yes canadian dollar is there so uh, tatan do you see the right conversion rate or do you think that we need to change it um for one slightly euro. change but it's going to be not so far for that okay fine so let me see if we have indian rupees here we don't have it okay so if we want to add a new currency here it's very simple so what we have to do that we have to click on the add right add now here in the currency id we have to modify the currency id cannot be current it has to be the international code every country's currency has an a three alphabet code indian rupees has i n r indian rupees okay so i type here indian rupees okay now currency symbol if you have the symbol you can paste it here if you don't you type rs dot right yes himanshu yes yes, yes. now you tell me that how much is 1 dollar equivalent to how many rupees 1 dollar equal to how many rupees? so let's have a round Around figure 60 your... 65 yeah 65 so you want you want to change it you, you can change it but usually we keep it fixed for some period of time we don't update it on frequent basis so that's fine now see this you have created one currency and uh, hang on for a second uh, ashwara tell me you are uh, following this uh, have you created this currency yes yes yeah, fine yeah. okay okay fine so let us apply this currency and let's see that how primavera helps you in in really so this is something which microsoft project doesn't do it just only changes the currency symbol but not the figures but here it will actually show you the uh, multiplied figures i mean the actual figures okay it will it will convert the money right just like a money exchanger does so you click on close okay done that so do you see that on my screen i am seeing currently in us dollars okay i want to switch currency i want to see the value of the projects or the value of each of the task in terms of the indian rupees okay so you are ready for this guys for the next step okay yes now this was the administration part but when you want to set up the currency this is a user preference so every user can see in his own currency that really doesn't matter but make sure that the exchange rate is right and us dollar is the base currency okay exchange rate should be correct and it really doesn't matter whether you look at you are working on the same project you look at the project in rupees and another guy looks at the same project in euros or canadian dollar it really doesn't matter okay exchange rate should be right and everybody should have the same value perception okay so let's do this so it is a user preference thing to change the currency it's not an admin thing it is because this preference belongs to the individual okay admin only work at the master level so what do you do as a user you select your preference and do you see this currency or option here yes okay great so let me shift the screen a little bit to the left and click on this do you see the select select currency box popping up yes. now i type inr i narrow down to the inr do you see that yes. now i click on the plus symbol so plus symbol is a selection symbol so do you see the show currency symbol rupees show decimal digits in double digits if uh, the if the decimal part is important i mean uh, that is the paise or the cent part is important that's fine if you don't want that so let us switch it off i say close just have a look what happens next just keep watching my screen do you guys see the change yes so what you are seeing is the rounded figure here so we have 
switched off the send part of it or the passive part of it. But if you want it back, so you can have it back, show decimal digits. So you have it in the decimal digits. Okay, so this is not significant in very big projects. In big projects, we don't bother about the send part of it. It really doesn't matter to us. Okay, so, but this is for clarity that if you want, you can have it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So like if I want to switch, I want to see what is the value of my task and projects. In the, or if you go, go to the project. Now this is the main control panel. Okay, so this is the CEO's view. So you know, this is the entire enterprise. This is what the worth of my project is. Total project. Okay, so you can see it at the top, top level. Okay, now if I want to see it in the Canadian dollars, I go to the edit, user preferences, and I select Canadian dollar. So Canadian dollar is CAD. So I can see it here, I select it, and I click on the plus. And then I say close. So no, so you know, it switches to the Canadian dollar, but Canadian dollar symbol is the same as the US dollar. So, but if you want, you can change the symbol. So you want to be sure. So how you can change the symbol? You go to the admin, you go to the admin preferences, and then, no, uh, you go to the, yeah, ad, uh, no, uh, currencies, sorry. Admin, then currencies. So what you can do, Canadian dollars, so symbol, you keep the dollar and you say, CD, right? Canadian dollar. So what do you think, Tatiana? Is, is that right? So, you know, people can be sure. Otherwise, someone might mistake it for the US dollar. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Okay. So you say close. So once you do this, you can see CD dollar, Canadian dollar. So you are sure. So if you switch to the US dollar, it will be just the dollar symbol only. So, you know, you are sure that, okay, this is fine. Okay, so you don't mix up because Singapore has dollars, Canada has dollars, the US has dollars, which other countries have dollars? I think some other countries also have dollars. Okay, so we have rupees in India, in Pakistan. Okay, we have in Nepal, in Sri Lanka, so they also call their money as rupees. So we want to make sure. So you can write uh, some sort of some sort of code. You can say INR, so you are sure. Okay, but we, we have a very distinct ru rupee symbol. So we can copy and paste it into the master file and this will be displayed throughout the in interface. Now this is how we can actually see the conversion value of any currency. So this is a Primavera thing. So tell me guys, you have mastered it. So any questions here? The currency is very important. That is clear. Okay, great. So let's move to the next. So what we have, so I'm just looking at my uh, list so. so for creating the uh, new currency we can go to the admin and then currencies yes yes, and, yes. Uh, for plus time that we have to go to file and user interface admin currency do you see this plus yeah so, it is there so what it will do once you click on the plus symbol so it will create a dummy currency cur so you give it the correct currency id according to the international uh, norms. So INR is Indian rupees, PKR is Pakistani rupees, SLR is Sri Lankan rupees. Okay, so you know different countries you can find in the internet if you go to uh, Wikipedia or something. So you can find the actual currency three letter abbreviation and utilize that abbreviation and describe it. And then you can paste the symbol if you find it, even if you don't find the symbol. So you can write a small little abbreviation so which should be apparent, apparently understood. Okay, so that is fine. So then you can add the exchange rate, US dollar one versus the currency. Okay, so that will give you a correct conversion. So you can find some reliable uh, exchange rate site and mostly it is taken from xc.com. So you can do it. So if you want to delete a currency, you can delete it. Right now I don't want to keep it. So this is a dummy, so I just delete. If you, if you delete, okay. So you can create the master here. So you are the admin, so you can create the master. So you can change the format also, positive currency format. Right? So I prefer a little bit of gap here between the symbol, okay, 
So in the negative, it's inside the bracket. Actually, money is not negative, it is credit or debit. Okay, so you can have it many ways. So it, this shows you all the ways that you can have it. So I prefer it with a space between the symbol and the, and the money figure. So digit grouping, now digit grouping, let me tell you in European countries, in certain European companies, uh, countries, so what they have instead of the decimal, they have comma. So that can be quite confusing. Okay, so you make sure that we keep the decimal symbol for the cents for separating the, the I mean, currency and the cents. So we keep it there and uh, the digit grouping symbol should be comma. So that separates the hundreds, thousands and the millions, billions. Okay, so you, you can have that. So in general, so this is the currency ID, currency name. So currency symbol, exchange So this is there in the top also. So you say close, so that's fine. So this is what you have right now, Canadian dollars. Okay, so you can switch to any currency anytime from the edit user preference. So that's your preference, which currency. So normally you will always have the access to the preference, but not to the admin. Okay, because that will be an admin thing and companies usually don't update the currencies on a daily basis. Now, let's come to the dates column. So do you see this dates column? 0, 1, July. Because you know, I have formatted it. So this is something which is uh, understood, right? So let me explain this to you. Why do I use it? So uh, it's almost like, uh, say, 20 years ago, I was programming and I was programming uh, with some European clients. So you know, they had a very difficulty because they would read the MMDD YY. So I created this format. Then I say, okay, let's use it. This works in the code also. This works in the readability also. So what I prefer is this, I say user preferences, then I go to the dates and I select day month here. Okay, so to me it makes sense. I'm interested in the day, then in the month, then in the year. Okay, so I say do not show time. If you want to show the time, you select 12 hour AM PM format, show the minutes. Do you see a sample here down below? And if you want to see a four digit here, so just look at the sample. So what does it look like? Okay. If you don't want to see the month name, you uncheck. So you see the month number. Now that is confusing across culture. So when I'm teaching multi uh, cultural, uh, I mean, students like you. So this is very clear to all. So everybody can understand it. So I'm, let me show you. Do you now see the date column? Just showing you the time also. Start time and the finish time of a task. So it's up to you how much you want to expand. So convenience depends upon your understanding. So what you want to interpret and understand. So you set it up according to your convenience. So can you do it, guys? So uh, let me answer a question before you ask it. So do you see A? next to this date. A stands for actual data. So there is some actual data on this project which has been gathered from the progress of the project. So wherever you see A in next to the cost column or to the start column, so you can understand that the project has started, it has some actual data. Okay, so some actual data has been captured in the start and the finish column. So that's why it shows A. So just keep in mind A stands for actual data, some actual data has been captured in this. So in the projects where you don't see A, so there might be a, pos a possibility either that particular project has not yet been started or if you don't see any A next to a task, so you are sure that this task has not been started. Only a project or a task which has some start even on a single task, so it will show you the actual A. So A, if it appears in any single task in a project, it will show up at the project level also here in the project view. So is, is that clear, guys? Yes. So actual data means that yes. this project is under progress and it has been tracked. Even if one single task has been tracked, it will show up A here. Okay, so it means that this project has started and some actual data has been captured and put into, into the project, uh, uh, project file. Okay, so try to set up the date, okay. So try to play with the date. I'll give you a moment to try this out.
okay guys so you are comfortable with selection of the dates and the date format yes okay great now we will learn about the calendars because calendars are central to our lives and calendars are central to the projects also because how a project is scheduled how its finish date is calculated that is 100% depend upon kind of the calendar we have in the organization so you know different organizations different cultures they have their own calendars so we use certain calendars like some organization is 5 day week certain organizations are 6 day and construction companies are almost 7 days a week okay so we can create a calendar which is based upon the organizational standards organizational culture so we can create a calendar for the organization we can create a calendar for a specific project also we can utilize that okay so we will learn about calendar and then we will see and apply this calendar upon a project and see that how does it regulate the start and finish or how does it calculate the start and finish time of the project so you're ready for this yes. okay, great. okay great so let's see that where do we create the calendar so the calendars are here project uh, one second tools in the tools uh, primavera is a big thing and sometimes i forget where the calendar enterprise calendars yes it is under the enterprise it is an enterprise thing just keep in mind okay i i, I will tell you about uh, the resources and roles also resource roles and organization breakdown but let me tell you about the calendars first before you go any further because that is very basic and roles and resources will be understood when we come to the topic of resources because calendars are something which help you start the project so let us click here calendars so you'll find that there are certain calendars which are already there out of the box and one of them is the corporate standard full time and certain calendars you will find here like software development and this 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 you know these are the calendars which were created by me so these were i because i have certain projects here and i created certain calendars for the projects okay so i can create my own calendar or i can use an existing one by default which is applicable on my project so i will show you that how a change of calendar it has an impact upon the project so what does a calendar look like first of all so let me show you my calendar i say modify so if you look like the if you look at this calendar so this is a 5 day week calendar okay now if you look at this option global resource so these are resource calendars so these are applicable upon people and this is a project calendar so right now uh, right now i don't have any project calendar which is pertaining to the current project but i can create a, a project calendar also and let me have a look at this if i want to see this is six day week do you see the six day week why the six day week because the monday i mean it is working from monday till saturday only sunday is the off day now let us look at software development modify now this is five day week calendar it is working from monday till friday so if i use a five day calendar and if i use a six day calendar so definitely it will have an impact upon the finish date upon the task if i use a five day calendar the finish will be later so it will take more time to finish a project because people would be working only five days a week so that will amount to almost like 22 days but if people work say six days a week so that would amount to almost like 24 days or 26 days okay so that is the impact of the calendar so first i will show you that how we utilize a calendar when we create a project and how it can affect the project so i will show you by utilizing a six day week calendar first so i have a six day week calendar so which one is this so this one is a six day week calendar okay so this is the calendar and then i will teach you how to create this but i will first teach you that how to use a calendar while setting up a project so we keep this here we close this window we come to the activities we close this okay we close the current project so what we are going to do that we are going to the top okay and uh, i would like to create a project 
test project. Okay, so just watch me doing this. File, then new, or I can do just Control N here. Say Control N. If I do Control N, it will ask me select EPS. Where do you want to place your project? I say I want to place my project under Learn. Okay, learning, learn planning and project management. Next, new project idea. I say test, test cal. Okay, testing a calendar. So I will use various calendars and trust and test them out. I will start from 1st of January because I always prefer to plan in advance. I don't have to put any must finish by date, never put it. Let the software calculate and then I click on finish. Now this project is created. Now let's have a look. I look at the project details. Now let me see that what are the defaults. Defaults, it has taken corporate standard full time. Why it has taken corporate standard full time calendar? Why? Because if you look at enterprise calendars, this is marked as default calendar. This is marked as default calendar because this is used by majority of the project. So you can mark any one of the calendars as default if you feel that this will be utilized by majority of the projects. So, so once in a while if there is an exception that project manager can utilize a different calendar. So you utilize say six days a week, you say plus. Now, any task which is created in this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to compact the start and finish. So I'm going to go my preference because they are taking too much of the space. I don't want the four digit name and I don't want to show the time and I say close. Okay, so for me, this is enough. So I select this calendar and this is applied and this is activity ID prefix surface. So this is where the numbering starts from A. So if you want to change it, so you can change it from A, you can change it and give it some name. You can say SD. Okay. And you press F10. F10 to make sure that this data is pushed into the database. And then F5, just to pull this data, just to, if you see the same data, it means that da data was earlier pushed into the database. But if the data was not pushed, okay. So then it will not show you the, uh, the, the same thing which you had typed. Okay, now I want to switch this off. I want to get into my project. I say open project. Okay, so I have this open project and then what happens? I need to add some task and I want to see the Gantt chart as well. Okay, and I don't want this columns actual start, actual finish. So what do I do? I go to my columns and I remove the columns which I don't want. I only want this columns, right? So I will add a task here and I click on the plus button and I add a task here, activity ID, I say activity ID is task one and I click finish. Now, do you see the original duration as five? Do you see this? Do you see the original duration as five? Now I want you to have a look at the plus minus and I expand it to day to day. Now here is my Gantt chart. Do you see this? Now if I change the duration, okay, if I change the duration, so the duration will change. Now let me check out this thing that why it is using a five day week calendar where I have in the project, I have changed it. So let me have a look at this project. So project details. So software development six days a week. So why this task is not using that calendar. So let me look at the activity details. General software development six days a week. So that should be using six days a week. So it should be using six days a week calendar. So let me make it six days. Yes, it is using six days. If I make it seven days, 
yes it is going to monday fine so this is working fine so do you un understand what's happening here so when i give it a six day task it's showing up to saturday when i giving it a seven day task the task goes on to the monday so it means that the scheduling is working right so ha have you uh, got the point guys so yes, what's yes. happening here why it is going to monday okay now let me do this thing let me switch it to a five days a week calendar so let me select the task i go to i can change the calendar for individual task also so let me use a five days a week so do you see if i use a five days a week calendar and i apply this the task goes on to tuesday so the seven days task requires seven working days so when you are doing your own calculations so basically you have to understand <laughs> that you are only talking about how much actual time or duration you are going to take you are not bothered about uh, what is the schedule so this is the schedule this is the duration you say just the duration so uh, let me say user preferences it must show the dates show date show date currency time units show unit level show duration level okay close so do you see the 7d 7d is the date abbreviation d is for date okay so this is something which is making sense now wait now we add another task i click on this plus symbol and i say that this is task 2 say finish and i also make it 7 days but when i make it 7 days what is happening here why is it going to monday not tuesday it is not uh, taking the same calendar yes because you know in task 1 i change because this task 2 is taking the project calendar by default in task 1 i deliberately switched from the project calendar to the to the 5 days week calendar so you must keep in mind so if you see something like this don't get worried so this might be happening due to different calendar got the point and the task 2 i have not changed the calendar i didn't have so you know task 2 by default it will take up the project calendar and the project calendar at this point of time it is 5 days a week calendar so 5 days a week calendar means that saturday is working so when i give it a 6 7 uh, days task so it works from monday till saturday and then it takes the last duration to the next working day that is monday now let me show you that where that is you go to the activity details and if you look at the general you will see that it is using a 6 days a week calendar and task 1 is using this is the 5 days a week calendar to see that i change it now if if i change it to 6 days a week calendar do you see now both task 1 and 2 are the same so calendars regulate okay the calendars regulate the life of the project just like uh, the calendars regulate our lives right different countries have different holidays so india we are having this month of the uh, month of the earliest we have maximum of the of the holidays in this month okay so you know they are all aligned with the weekends and we are almost having very long weekends okay like four days so it's like that the calendars so basically if you have national holidays lined up four days in a sequence along with your weekends so you get four days off so you must plan that also so what we have planned here is the weekend but suppose if there is a national holiday on wednesday how do we account for that where do we put that into the calendar okay so we put that into the calendar so one is the project calendar and then we can override the project calendar by going into the task so let's see that what is the default project calendar so here do you see this it is 6 days a week calendar which is by default now suppose if if i change it to 5 days a week will it change here for all has it changed 5 days a week no it is still 6 days a week for each of the task it is still 6 days a week if you go to the activity list it does not change so i change it at the project level but it will apply on the fresh task not on the existing task 
Why? Because it is not Microsoft Project. So those who have used Microsoft Project, so don't get confused. In Microsoft Project, if you change the calendar at the project level, it will immediately apply by default on all the tasks. So that is some thought which is different. So here in Primer, where it is old school, that the task which were created as six days, so they should remain six days. The task which will now be created will be applied according to the current calendar. Okay, just keep just keep in mind. But definitely, if you want to change it, so what you can do, either you can do it manually. But suppose if you have a lot of tasks, say hundreds of tasks, in which you want to switch from, uh, say five days a week calendar to seven days a week calendar, or from seven days a week to five days, you want to switch between two calendars. So what can you do? Can you think of it? How tedious that task will be? Can you think? Okay, but no, we have. We have to change for each. each we have. We have something called macros. So, guys, have you heard of something called macros? Macros. Anybody has tried out in Excel or some other software? Macros. Have you ever created macros? Some kind of yes. What about you, Ashwarya? Have you ever heard of macros? You have facility of creating macros in Excel to automate tasks which run into several steps. If you have to do the same task repeatedly, so what you do that you record a macro and save that macro and apply that. So let's do this thing. Let us create a macro also. So we'll learn macro along with the calendar. So what do we have in this task? Task one, task two. We have six days a week calendar. Okay, what is the project default? The project date default is five days, so let's make it six days. Okay, so let us add more task with the same seven days, and then we will switch. Okay, two to five days a week. Now let's add one more task. How do we add a task? It's very simple. Do you see this plus plus button? So you can keep it here on the left. You can keep it here on the right. So whatever is convenient for you, you can keep it up there also. Just see. Just have a look. Say so I will just grab it from here and place it here. Do you see this? Yes. So what I will do? I'll shift this button up and then lock it. Do you see this lock icon? Lock all toolbars. Yes. So it it would lock all the toolbars in place. So now I click on this add. So sometimes you know it is convenient to keep on the left or on the right. So. It is basically discovered your own pattern. You have to discover so what is convenient. So that's okay. So you learn what I'm telling you right now. Then you change and discover what is more comfortable for you. And I'm going to create this. So we have this calendar, which is six days a week. So what is the six days a week? So if you give a seven days task to a six days week based calendar, so what will happen? The Saturday is also working. Right, though it shows gray, but the Saturday is also a working day of the week. Okay, just keep in mind. So that's why you know that the seven-day task is going to Monday and not Tuesday. If it is five days week organization, then what will happen? The five days task will be done from Monday to Friday, and remaining two days will be shifted to the next two working days. So that will be Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so let me create one more. So you know, I'll show you the the benefit of macro so what is the benefit so you know it will basically it will happen when i have more and more tasks so so you add more task here so okay now if I say that, okay, can you switch it to five days a week? So you'll have to do it individually. But now I'm going to teach you macro. Now just do one thing, guys. Replicate exactly the same thing on your screen. I'll just wait for a while. You create five tasks with seven days. Okay. And
but you might not have a calendar like this so that's not a problem so what i will do i can send you the file here so i'll teach you import and export also how to import and export a project okay Okay, done. So let me show you that how do we. Now, what is the purpose of the macro? First, I will explain. See, I want to switch this task from six days a week to the five days a week calendar. I do have a five days a week calendar here. So this is the five days a week calendar, but I want to automate this. I don't want to do it individually. Okay, because this can be quite tedious. Okay, so this is here, tools. Okay, so there is an option called global change. Do you see this? Global change. So though it won't work for you because you don't have the calendars, but I will show you the steps and then you will do it on some data which will be there. Okay, but you must try out the steps right now. And watch me doing this. I say global change and I want to create a new macro. Okay. So I say new macro and what is the name of this macro? So I say switch, I give it a name which is understood and meaningful so that I can pick it up from the library. Switch from six day cal to five day cal. It is switching from six days calendar to five days calendar okay now this is the name and where it will be applied it will be applied upon the activities okay now where now i'll see what where the calendar where the calendar is is e equal to which one if the calendar is six days a week calendar then what do I do? I add. I said then set the calendar to five days a week calendar. Just see the whole thing. This is the five days a week. So just read the, I will translate this into English. The first sentence says where you find the calendar is equal to six days a week calendar. Then you switch the calendar to five days a week calendar for activities or all the activities. So let me read it from the beginning. Look at the activity where you find an activity which is having a calendar of six days a week. So switch the calendar of this activity to five days a week calendar, right? So this is what it reads like. So this is a small little program. So this is called macro. So macro is basically is saving you 
a lot of trouble and it is, is accurate. So you don't miss any. So macro will find it and macro will do the job for you. Just have a look. Okay. So I say, okay. So here is my macro. Now, how do I use my macro? So it, uh, using the macro is very simple. I say, I select the macro that I want to use and I say apply change. Okay. Guys, so I'm ready to apply the change. Just look at the task currently. Where the tasks are finishing, they're finishing on Monday. So what will happen if I apply the five days a week calendar? So will it, will the finish be on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday? So where do you think it will be? Tuesday. Tuesday, fine. Just see. Apply change. So it is now telling you that it has performed this act activity, calendar feed, six days a week, new value is software development. Now it will not apply right away. You know, it seeks a confirmation from you. Do you see this button here at the right bottom? Commit changes. Hmm. So only after you click the commit changes, so it will be applied. If you uh say change your mind you say no cancel the changes so it won't apply that it, it won't do it okay so if you click on commit changes you click on it would you like to save to log file you say no I don't need the log file. small little things do you see the task uh, underlying task change from five days to i uh, change from uh, six days a week calendar to five days a week calendar now seven days duration has stretched to tuesday do you see see that ha the happening do you, do you see my screen, guys? Have you understood? Has everybody un understood? So yes. What I've done. I created a macro, and instead of doing each of the tasks, I asked the macro to do it for me. So just just imagine if there are hundreds of tasks, so macro would do it in in a fraction of a second. So you don't have to bother about. If you are doing it as a person, you might miss some task, or you might miss or miss. So both can happen. Is that right? Now, then what happens? Your boss comes along. He says, no, switch it back to what? Seven days a week. So what do you do? So you say, yes, boss, I'll Close do it. Global change. You no, know, you say, yes, boss, boss. So you create another macro. You create a reverse macro. Right? Got my point. Okay. So I will show you, I create the re reverse macro and it will do the reverse of what is happening right now. So it will just apply. I don't have to worry. Okay. So I go to the option tools, global change. And what I say is new, new, or I say copy. Do you see this switch from six days to five days? Now copy is very convenient. You just have to switch and a lot of things are in common. So you can just save time in doing the steps. You say copy. Okay. And you say paste. So switch from six day cal. Now this is the copy. So what do you do? Modify. So first you modify the name. So you say switch from five day to six day. So what do you say here? If you find a calendar having five days a week, so you select the five days a week. So you switch the calendar to six days a week, six days a week. So I'm just hanging on here and reading to you in English. Look at the activities where the calendar is equal to software development, which is five days a week. Then you switch the calendar to six days a week only for those activities which have five days a week calendar. So that's fine. So what do you do? You say, okay. So do you see that another macro has been created? You, you save the steps by, by uh, creating a copy of the previous macro and just making the required changes. Is that fine? So what I'm going to do, just watch my screen. So what do you expect if I run this macro? What do you expect to see on the Gantt chart? Will the task go ahead or they will come back? Come back. Come back because we are working more per week. So one calendar week is seven days. Now we are going to work six days. So instead of the task, seven day task working till Friday and then working Monday, Tuesday next week. So they'll work till Saturday and they will work the remaining day on Monday. See, I say apply change. 
So this picks up the task and shows me a list and seeks my confirmation. I say commit changes, don't save it to the file. And do you see the change applied here? Okay, so this is what is the macro does. So you can use macro for any purpose. I've used it for the date purpose, for changing the calendar, for switching the calendar. And uh, you have to keep in mind, you have to be careful. See, when you create a project, select the appropriate calendar. It is not necessary that your corporate calendar by default will work for you. So it might happen that you might select a calendar which is wrong. Then what will happen? That some tasks will get the calendar which is currently applied on the project. When the task is created, it will get applied that calendar by default. Okay, so what you have to do is then if you want to if, if, if you if you want to change it, if you want to change the calendar for all the tasks, you create a macro and then change it for those tasks. And the rest of the tasks which will be created later after the application of uh, or the change of the project calendar will have the new calendar. Okay, so this is the application of the calendar. Now we will learn that how to create the calendar. Okay, so you guys want to uh, learn it now or next time? So there's an option here. Okay, so just tell me because it will take some time. And you said it's going to take some time? Yeah, this is going to take some time. So let's do it now. So that's not a big deal. So let's do let's do this thing. Let's go to the option and enterprise and click on the calendars because I love the calendars. Because you know they give me more control on my projects and schedules. So click on calendars. You are here? Everybody is here? Yes. Okay, fine. So yes. what we are going to do, we are going to create a six days a week calendar because five days a week calendar is created by default. So we'll create a six days a week calendar and we will apply it on our new project. So I say calendar. Then I say plus. So when I click on the plus, so what happens? It creates a blank, blank row. So I give it a name. I say, learn six days week calendar. I'm learning to create a six days a week calendar, right? I don't make make it the default. I can select when I'm creating a project. So let me see how do I do it. So you are here, guys. I'm just holding here. I want to make sure that everybody is doing it step by step, but with understanding. Ask me a question. Don't do the step with doubt. Ask me the question. So everybody is with me. Please say yes. 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 Okay, good. Now I am going to modify this. So you have to understand it very finely that what is the meaning of this okay so you are here yes see if you look at the shaded days so what do they mean they are the weekly off sunday and saturday got the point I want to create a six days a week. So six days a week means I want to keep the Sunday off and I want to see the Saturday as a working day. So how do I make it? Okay. So you're ready for the next step. How to make the Saturday working. Okay, great. So look at the right side. You have a work week button. You see this button? Work week. So we are going to set up the shape of the week just click on this just have a close look you see this so it shows you that uh, where, how many work hours are there so i don't want people to work 10 man hours i want eight man hours or eight person hours so i'm going to make it eight 
and Saturday also eight. Do you see that? If you make a day zero, that will become the weekly day off. Got the point? I click on OK. Do you see that how does the week is configured now? It's very simple. If you put eight hours on Saturday, or if you put zero hours on Saturday, it's going to look like this. The Saturday will become a weekend. Okay, if you put eight here, or if you want to have a half day on Saturday, you can put four here. Okay, so Saturday would still be working, but it will be with four days. Okay, so if you want to make the Saturday as working full day, you put eight, right? So does it look good? So you are ready for the next step? Okay, now let's click on the next button below this, that is the time period. Okay. So time period will have its own meaning. So the hours per day, so how, how many hours per day we want people to work? We want people to work eight hours per day, not more than that. The hours per week, so if you have six days. So how 48. many? 48, yes, that's great. If you, let's say that you have 48, 48 hours per week, then let's say there are four weeks. So how many, how many hours it makes per month? So it makes 48 multiplied by four. So how much is that? So can someone calculate and tell me 48 multiplied by four? Yes. 192. So I type 192. If we, if I have uh, 12 months and per month it is 192. So how, how many um, person hours per year? 192 multiplied by 12. So can someone tell me from the calculator? How much days you are considering per year? So no, we are considering 12, 12, 12 months. We are considering 12 months, 12 man months. 2,304. Oh. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. That works for us. So, right. So this is how the time will be calculated or the work effort will be calculated. So this is how you have set up the week and the month and the year. Now, the thing is that even the day has a schedule. If you look at the next tab, so this has set up the week. Now, this is the detailed work of work hours per day because you know, in some organization, the work starts at 8 a.m. and finishes at 5 p.m. In some organization, especially in India, it is 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. time. Okay. So let us set up 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So let's see that how we can do that. This is the detailed work hour per day on day to day. What is the schedule of the day? It is eight hours. Fine. So eight hours can be different for different days also. It gives you a very fine control. For Monday, it could be like 7 to 4. For Tuesday, it could be like 8 to 5. For Wednesday, it could be like 9 to 6. You can do that if you wish to. But normally what we have that throughout the week, our work hours or the start time and finish time is the same. So let us do this thing. Let's go into this radio button. Okay. So here you got to be very careful. Okay. So once you've selected this and you click on the work week, again you click on the work week. Okay. Do, do you select do you see this work week? How each week is configured. So we are going to select from Monday till Saturday like this. We are going to configure these six days. I'm ha hanging on here for a while. So I want you to ask any question that why uh, why, uh, what we are doing and why we are doing this. I'm, I'm configuring the individual days of the whole week. Okay, and mass. Okay, at the same time, six days a week, I want to configure as nine to six with one hour of the lunch time in between, one to two. Guys, you got my point? Yes. Okay, so how did how yes. did I re how did I reach here? I first I clicked on this the second radio button on the right, and then I clicked on the work week. Then I selected Monday till Friday using the shift button. I pressed the shift button, clicked on Monday, then I clicked on Saturday. It selected all the six days. Now I'm going to set the time. Now watch this bars very carefully. 
you know these are very small i wish they were a little bit bigger so basically if you look at the white time so white time means working time actually i want to set it up like this i there are two shifts that i want to set up 9 to 1 and 2 to 6 so that adds up to 8 man hours okay people will work 4 hours people will take a rest and break and have lunch between 1 to 2 pm and from 2 pm to 6 pm they will work again so if you look at the time it shows you the time starting from say 12 am so if you look at this 8 am till 9 am this is non work so in india people start work at 9 so they will work from 9 to 10 10 to 11 11 to 12 then 12 to 1 and between 13 to 4, 14 hours they will have a non work time so that is the lunch time and then they will work from 16 till 18 till 8 18 hours that is the work time so i'm just holding it here for a while so that you can understand what i have done do you understand what i've done i've created a schedule yes. from monday till saturday and all days are e equally working 8 hours and this 8 man hours is taken in in uh, you can say two parts or two shifts so 9 to 1 and 2 to 6 Okay, nine to thirteen hours, then fourteen to eight eighteen hours. So the the working time is represented in the lighter shade, and the non-working time is represented upon the in the darker shade, which is applicable from Monday till sa Saturday. So any questions here? Any doubts here? No. No. Yes, sir. Any doubts here? Good. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes, I got it. Okay, fine. So, what do you do to apply this on the calendar? So you click on OK. Okay. So just have a look. So this is the same. And if you look at any date, so you'll find that it is applicable. But if you click on the Sunday, you'll find that Sunday is all grey. So Sunday or the entire day is non-working. Do you see this? You see. fine so you have created a calendar with the sunday as the weekend and rest of the day they are working 8 hours okay so click on okay and this calendar is created learn 6 days a week calendar okay so what we are going to do that we are going to apply this calendar 6 days a week calendar upon all these task here so we will do it manually let's see what is the impact upon task 1 no impact because it is already having a 6 days a week so let us switch it to the 5 days a week calendar yeah 5 days a week calendar pushes it to tuesday and if i apply so let me do this thing let me run my macro and switch it to 5 days from 6 days to 5 days i say apply change Okay now I'm going to apply it to task 2 I'm going to apply this calendar say learn 6 days a week to see the change on this one see the change on this one so you have created a calendar which works like this okay but can we do uh, for all the activities uh, in uh, one go mm -hmm. tell me tell me tell me what is that can we change this uh, calendar for all the activities in a single go one go or oh, for that you will have to create a macro actually so macro i i just showed you macro so we have done the macro so basically i'll have to write a macro so in that macro i have to tell that where you find a 5 days week calendar you apply the learn calendar you guys i select the specific uh, calendar and then it will be applied on that calendar okay 
but uh, you have done individually for each activity uh, yeah. can yeah. you do for all the, okay yeah you you can do it you can do it for all you can do it through the macro for all but individually i have done just to show you that how does this calendar work actually okay so by selecting shift we can select all the activities and do the same uh, procedure yeah we okay. we can do, do the same so is this thing clear so how how it works yes we have to yes. do some practice so basically you create a calendar and this calendar is basically is controlling the start and finish of the task so this is taking the same duration but it is taking the finish date as different the finish date is different because in 6 days you work one day more per week so you finish early so in 5 days a week so you know there are two kinds of say so if i say week so one is the calendar week and one is the working week so calendar week will always have seven days the working week can be five days five and a half days or six days or seven days maximum is up to the seven days okay so the work week is basically dependent upon uh, the work culture of the organization right so different organizations have different work culture so one calendar will be the project calendar so the project calendar would be applied by default so rest of the task if they have if you have any exceptional task so what you can do that you can always change the individual task calendar individual task calendar can be changed by you to reflect the task is working differently from the rest because if one of the task is to be done 24 hours so you can apply a 24 hours calendar and the same task will get compressed in the duration if you give it a 7 days so it will what it will do it will calculate the total man hours and it will work 24 man hours per day okay and then it will not be 7 days because 8 7 the 56 so it will be like 56 man hour divided by 24 so this might be finished in just one day quarter day or half day something like that so it will show up like that okay so depending upon the calendar your finish date of the project is calculated calendar then relation so if you look at the finish date of the project as you can see on the top so what you are seeing here you are seeing as 8th of 8th of january right so if you set up relation between two task okay if you say task 2 has a pre a predecessor so you can add a predecessor like this so who is the who is who is the predecessor of this task so you can say that the pre predecessor is the is the previous task okay so if this is the pre is the if this is the pre uh, predecessor for this task and if this task is in a finish to start relationship and if you want to basically schedule it so you will see that this is getting pushed so this is showing you a critical path which is red okay so you can have this also like assign so task one you say fine so then you schedule and you put the options that uh, schedule uh, 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 it uh, automatically and then you say schedule now each time you set up a relationship if you set up a relationship between two to three you say that the two is there is a precursor or predecessor so this is what it will show you the path so i believe that you understand this critical path or something so so you can set up a relationship between task 4 and 5 so you can see that which is the longer path which is the shorter path so longer path and shorter path will have a difference because the finish date of the project will be always calculated from the last task on the longer path so which is the longer path task 1 2 3 shorter path is task 4 5 so this is basically is helping you calculate that what is happening so this is the week of january 21 so january 21 is here 22 23 24 so 24 is the wednesday okay so you do you see the finish date as uh, wednesday here okay do you see this do you see that okay so that is that is the finish date so this task is getting scheduled from 17th 
because this is in sequence. So this, this is the precursor. This task is getting sh scheduled from 1st of January. So it was like that. Okay. So it is based upon what is the calendar is telling. Okay. So this is how it works. So is this thing clear, guys? Yes. Yes. So next time, what we will do that we will learn that uh, how to accommodate the national holidays on the calendar. Just like in different countries, we have national holidays. Just like in the U.S., we have got seventh of July, and in India, uh, seventh, I mean fourth uh, of July is the Independence Day. Then Christmas. So in India, we do also have the Independence Day as fifteenth of uh, the August. So they have an impact upon the project. So, okay. So we have to make sure that all these off days like weekends and the national holidays where the businesses have to compulsorily stay closed so these are put into the calendar in the beginning before you start the scheduling work why what happens because as you're adding the task to the project so there might be certain stakeholders coming to ask you so what is the current finish date according to the task that we know so you would tell them look this is the finish date but if you put the holidays later then what will happen the finish date will change okay finish date will shift so it is better that if you want a correct finish date at any given point of time during the planning stage itself so you should always put the weekends and always put the off days according to the organizational calendar or the country calendar into the calendar and anytime you put any task, it will tell you the real finish date. Okay, the real finish date will be based upon. So you can clearly say that this is the finish date known to me from the software based upon the all the tasks which have been entered till date and in the correct sequence and correct duration. So it is based upon that and it is subject to change till you freeze the project plan. So till we baseline the project plan, so this is subject to change because different people have different ideas about the duration of a task. Okay, so they might increase or decrease, but whatever you have put into the software, so that should be based upon the correct calendar configuration. So calendar configuration, we will continue on uh, next Saturday. Okay, and we will learn that how to put in the national off days or company holidays into that and that will help us in predicting. Then we will learn how to create the resource calendar. Because the resource calendar are for the personal use. So there are people working on the projects and they want to schedule their off days in advance. So that is doable thing in a project that is useful because that way you will know if you have assigned a task to a particular person and if the person is taking planned leaves. So how it will affect the finish date of the task. Okay, so that is making and for equipments also we have scheduled maintenance. Okay, suppose if we have a heavy equipment which requires a maintenance after every two months. So it goes to uh, the workshop. Okay, for three days. So we put three days as off every two months. So when a project manager is utilizing that equipment, the project manager would immediately know whether he can accommodate this three day off in his project schedule or not. So he can have a chance to apply an alternate machine during those three days. So he can hire temporarily or he can borrow from some other project. But he must know in advance. It should not happen so suddenly that he's working and on one fine day, the machine and along with the operator, they have disappeared for three days and he doesn't know what happened. So, you know, then the operator comes back after three days. He says, boss, I was gone for scheduled maintenance of this machine. So things should not come as a surprise. So we want our plan to be as predictable. So the most solid foundation of a project is the calendar. Okay. So the calendar must be set up correctly to correctly predict each and every task start and finish date. Right. So guys, that does that sound right? Sound good? Yes. Okay. And you should send me some questions and try this out whatever you have learned and you have a checklist also you can take a print out of that checklist okay so you can put a check check mark on that and if you think that we missed something or if you have a question so you can write a question against that topic okay and you can ask me in the next 
schedule batch. So we'll meet the same time on Saturday next week. Okay, so till then, Perfect. have a nice week. You too. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome. Okay, good night. Hi, good morning. So, guys, can you hear me? Yes, how are you? Yes. Hi, yes, yes, I am fine. Okay. So, how was the exercise? So, how did it uh, go? Oh. Hello. So, I am asking, how, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, uh, I tried it out and I, I mailed you what I've done. Okay, okay. So uh, what we will do that, uh, uh, let me see how many people are here. So let's wait for one more person. Do you have any questions? Because, you yes. know, I, I, I want to discuss in the group uh, the common questions. And if you have any uh, other questions, please go ahead. I have really trouble and I look for for my question in in. Uh, Google and uh, I had very hard time applying the lag. The yeah. lag time. Okay. Okay. Hard time applying the lag time. No, lag time is not very difficult. Uh, yes, I know, but I couldn't find. And the other problem that I have, I don't know why mm -hmm. I missed or what I missed, uh, but uh, I couldn't. Even if I if I wrote mm -hmm. the, the the relation. Mm -hmm. Finish to finish to start and all that kind of things. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have all my activities start the first January. All of them. I I don't know what I did uh, wrong. Okay, okay, no no problem. So let me do this thing. Let me share your screen, and uh, 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 one second. Hello. Ah yes, I have started the class. Ah yes, yes, yes good evening. I have, I have started the class. Okay. So uh, let me do this thing. Let me um, uh, share your screen and then help you out from there. It's just a small little adjustment that you have to do. I think mm -hmm. you, are, you are nearly there. So I'm going to g make you the host. Okay. So Tatiana. Yes. So you are the host and uh, share your screen. And one by one, tell me your problem. And the others also look at the problem because some of the problems would be common. Okay, so it's good that you have done something. So now you will learn. Because, you know, when we struggle to do something, we, we create a sort of slots in our mind where we expect some information to come in. Okay, so it's good. So now you share your screen and show us your project and how it didn't work for you. Okay, so good. So what I'm saying that you have done a lot of work. You are just a couple of steps away. Okay, now mm, do this thing. Uh, on the top, you uh, do you see a small clock icon with a triangle on the top? On on the top bar, just in the middle, just in the middle, somewhere in the middle, you will uh, see a clock. Clock. Do you see a clock here? In the middle, just below your name, Tatiana, or just above the predecessor column? If you if you column. just move your Here, cursor. okay yes click on this yes okay okay now click on the options uh, I think I had showed to you three four times yes okay. I know <laughs> okay now now everybody please note see by default when we have installed Primavera for the first time by default it does not schedule the the time automatically why is it so let me tell you it is a it has a historic reason because early because primavera is from the times when computers were very slow and this was this being a database uh, software this used to take some time for the data to go into the database and come back with the updates on the screen and uh, then uh, it was like that people would first set up the relation and they will press the f9 button and go out for lunch or, or for a cup of tea and then it will create the schedule. But now it is not like that. So what you should do is schedule automatically when a change affects date. Okay. Now, okay. You, now you click on the close close button on the right. <coughs> now click and on the schedule. Yeah. Now you now you see it has been scheduled. Now just do one thing. If you look at the top, there is a plus uh, lens button. Lens lens button. Just expand it to till you start seeing the day, individual day. Just uh, press once again. 
Yeah, press once. Uh, yes, yes. Now you are seeing the days. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. So now, see, you have done it. You are almost there. So first uh, January thirtieth May. I think your dates uh, dates are nearly correct. I mean, you are absolutely right. So your everything is fine. So we need to do a little bit of adjustment and see that uh, whether you have entered it correctly according to the data or not. Okay, okay. that's fine. So do you see the, see the finished data date as thirtieth of May? I think you are nearly there. I need to just only uh, tell you a little bit of thing. Okay, let me do this thing. Let me look at your calendar. Go to the enterprise and click on the option calendars. And the calendar that you have six days learn calendar. Good. So, uh, click on the button modify. Okay. Now we will look at that how you have configured the weekdays. Now in the weekdays, just click on the gray area. I mean the light gray. So on the weekdays, you are doing from nine to six, and you are giving a break time one to two. Click on Monday. Yes, that's fine. Very good. And that is the detailed work hours per day. So fine. Now let's look at your work week. Just click on the work week. Oh. Huh, that's Sorry. fine. Yeah, fine. Let's see how you have configured your work week. Monday, then Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is totally off. Great, absolutely fine. Click on OK. Yes, I think you have understood. Now click on the time periods. Click on the time periods button. Yes, so eight hours per day, so forty eight because it's a six day. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean a six day week, so it will be eight multiplied by six, forty eight, and then month is fourteen multiplied by four, and then the year will be approximately one ninety two multiplied by two three zero four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Click on the OK. Yeah, that's fine. So your calendar is absolutely fine. Now, in the month of January, 26th January is an off day, and last Saturday of every month is an off day. Absolutely fine. Let, let's see on Feb. Yeah, February last Saturday of March 20th March is uh, the given holiday. 31st is the last Saturday. Next, April 13th is a given holiday. 20th is the last Saturday. I believe the rest of you are also observing it. And next May, also last Saturday, so there is no holiday in the month of May. In the month of June, no holiday, only the last Saturday. Next July, and the next August fifteenth of August is a given holiday. Now, now you know why we are going ahead with the entire year, though, even though the uh, I mean the project is finishing in the month of month of May. Now, let me tell you one thing. See, you can use this calendar in multiple projects. Mm -hmm. but now, what happens is that one project may be six months, and another project might be just one year. So mm -hmm. you know, it always is. It is always better to have more holidays. I mean, more span of uh, the calendar, which is covering the actual holidays, than the length of the project, than the anticipated length of the project. Why? Because if the holidays are extra, then the length of the project it really doesn't hurt because your last date will be calculated correctly, last date of the project. What mm -hmm. my point? But suppose if your project is one year and you have entered the holidays only for six months, then what will happen? So you will get a incorrect finish date and you will tell this date to your boss and your boss in turn will tell it to the client and to the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> now later when you discover your mistake then you will update your boss then your boss will update to the client and the client will <laughs> get messed up okay so that gives a very false uh, commitment okay yes. so that's why you see i'm not only teaching you primavera i'm teaching you primavera plus project management okay yeah. because i am myself a project manager and a project management consultant also so i so i have to be very careful with this thing because i run my own consultancy because i am creating schedule for people and they trust this schedule to be absolutely right if not absolutely right maybe up to the extent of uh, say 98% i i should mm -hmm. right. okay now this is all based upon the information now what they tell me i don't trust that you know i cross verify that i ask them again so guys have you told me the complete holidays as per your company policy that is my question you know these are certain standard questions which i keep in my mind and is there any other holiday which you plan within the company for any other purpose okay so after everything is known i create a calendar i create a longer calendar than the pro anticipated project duration if i anticipate that the project will be for 2 years i create a calendar for 3 years mm -hmm. okay it doesn't matter a little bit of extra calendar always helps it really doesn't matter it doesn't 
but if the calendar is short of the project period then it gives a wrong finish date so everybody is getting my point yes so this is a good yes. project management practice and this is basically impl implemented by primavera so primavera help you so one feature that i miss here in primavera is that uh, see there is a given ho holiday 2nd of october now there is no place where i can mention that what is the purpose okay so that you have to note separately okay in microsoft project you can write down uh, along with the date that what is the purpose of the holiday why it is being given so that's fine so click on okay here yeah click on close okay just to be sure that you have re rescheduled it correctly see there is another button which maps to the clock icon that is f9 just press f9 here on your screen on your i mean on your laptop to f9 yeah f9 button yes so you are getting the same option okay so if you click on the schedule with your mouse so you can reschedule so now you are absolutely sure that your project has started on 1st of jan and finished on 30th of mm -hmm. okay now uh, so this looks good so we will compare so we will compare the cost also so you have written predecessor detail column so that's really good so this looks fine to me so i think that you are perfectly fine okay the only thing that were that you were that you were not aware of that you have to have the automatic setting uh, done okay because it is not there by default so note it as a lesson learned that each time you start a project to check for this setting mm -hmm. and if it is not set <laughs> So set it. Because okay. You know, yes. You, see, we are using very fast computer these days, so we don't have to worry about the recalculation time. Because uh, earlier days, it used to take some time, and people used to do it only after they have entered at least a fifty or a hundred task. Only after that, they will press the F9 button. So these days, you don't have to worry about that. Even if you add one task, let it recalculate the project and give you a realistic finish date. Now, if you look mm -hmm. at the top, okay. So uh can you do one thing can you collapse the uh view to second level so do you know how how to do it just, just, just no 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 just oh. just go go to go to the view and do you see this uh, button collapse to and choose level 2 now do you see this now this is your work breakdown structure so this is your second level so second level shows you that that is the start date of the project and then then this is the project complete on 30th of may so project mm -hmm. complete has its own group it has just only one single milestone nothing there there is no task inside 4.8 can you go to the last wbs and expand it this 4.8 yes so you know this this is a finished milestone and finished milestone purpose of the finished milestone and keeping it within the group the purpose is that that if it is going to happen in the last it should stay there at the last and if mm -hmm. if it is not put into this group now what will happen it will go to the top and that will give a wrong structure so just to make it look a little bit aesthetic because on the gan chart it will appear on the rightmost side now this is your i mean this is your big picture so you know uh, clients and your boss is interested to look at this level they are not interested in the nuts and bolts they want to see the big things okay so this is the level of the plan in which they are interested to see and if you want to print something what is the shortcut can you tell me this one uh you can shortcut shortcut can you control uh, plus p. control p uh let's see that uh, what is the view that you get in control p so how how does it look no uh, no not this one control p is directly going so so just cancel it and click on the print preview so that is the right one so that is the right icon next to the printer ah no, on the top next one yeah so this is showing you the sheet okay so mm -hmm. how, how many pages are there one or two let's see what is there on the next page fine so this is giving you the top level so this is the view that your client or boss would be interested because they don't want to see what you are doing in between because you know what do the bosses usually say bosses say don't tell me how hard you work tell me what you achieved okay mm -hmm. so if you uh, scroll to the next i mean the previous screen so you know these are all your achievements so what you will achieve you will achieve the requirement definition by 24th of january you will achieve the planning by 2nd of february you will achieve the design by 27th 
you will finish the program so they are interested in this and they are going to have either all of them or some of them linked to the what payments yeah so they, are, they are the major milestone because when the client is seeing some progress he would be interested to pay and that's where the commitment will go from you to your boss and from your boss to the client so this is how businesses work okay so okay. your boss might be having multiple project managers if it is a big company so you know it becomes very complex so he has to take care of multiple projects he has to make sure that he has a snapshot of the project plan from each of the project manager and mm -hmm. all the commitments are being done or it is going in a smooth pace if they uh, i mean uh, for the deliverable okay so okay. at at each of the uh, i mean the milestone there is a deliverable which is at, uh, attached so what is the deliverable at the end of the design it may it, it is the design specification yeah what is what is the deliverable at the end of the training so there will be staff on the client side who who the manual the training for the for the product so mm -hmm. they know how to use it suppose if you created net banking software so can i give net banking software to the bank people without training their people will that be useful if i don't give the training no so training is a deliverable okay so training is called the intangible deliverable because the main deliverable is the software so i have to make sure that i have everything in the plan because if i don't put it in the plan if i keep it in my hand and this this might not get done so what is in the plan is what something will get done so keep it in mind so what is okay. the what is the best practice See, you might use a, any other software also but the best practices will remain the same do you agree or not yes the best practice is that put all the task into the project plan that is the best practice okay and push the software to the maximum so now let's see that how you can print an xps file xps file is a very lightweight file which you can share with uh, others and show them the plan so just go ahead and click on the printer button on the top yes yes now click on this uh, down arrow this uh, drop down and uh, i believe you take adobe pdf you take adobe pdf uh, though i expected to see the xps also click on okay yeah uh, so yes yeah good so it is printing it's thinking yeah it thinks a lot because it is pdf <laughs> but if it is xps xps doesn't think much okay it just prints so it uh, is, it happens very quickly so because you know there's a third party software it is integrating yeah. done okay so do you see this do you see the next page just click on the next page next scroll yeah yes so you can share this soft copy with many people okay so mm -hmm. they can expand it also they can see it in details click on the plus sign it has also in uh, yeah okay so you can see a better clarity okay in this so you can print in xps also so this is the soft copy print out now if you send it to 10 people they might prefer to keep it soft or they might take a hard copy so if they take a hard copy it is their choice what is convenient for them you should always print a soft copy first now this mm -hmm. is the perspective now you close it and let's come back to the plan okay now your your plan is good so we will fine tune it and i will share something more with with you guys so this looks good so you have done a very good job okay so so just Thank keep you. in mind how to keep i mean how to keep the schedule uh, more automatic okay so this is okay. this is the first thing you should check for whenever you start your putting your task because scheduling is the core i mean uh, expertise of a project manager so i'm mm, switching back to my screen okay so i think uh, uh, you will have to, okay now i'm sh sharing my own screen now just look what is the difference between your screen and my screen so there is a difference of hardly 5 days okay so we can figure this out okay uh, what about you uh, ashwarya okay uh, so himanshu is there also yeah ashwarya you have any problem no no it was fine for me so uh, do you see any difference here from my i'm not saying that mine is correct mine can be wrong also so what i'm saying is that see i have displayed the calendar for each and every task why i have done that because you know sometimes it might happen that uh, i might st start with a different calendar 
and then I might realize that I'm using a different calendar. I might change the calendar later, but some of the task might still have the previous calendar. This is just to make it sure that okay. So this is the calendar is applied, which is on, which is the default calendar. I mean the calendar which is for this project. So six days a week that is applied on each and every task here. Okay, this is just to display the the calendar which is applied. Now, what about you, Himanshu? So, do you have any problem? Uh, actually, I was facing one problem that uh, when I uh, I was doing this uh, linking of uh, relationship, mm -hmm. then the activities they uh, the the sequence the sequence of the activities. Mm -hmm. Was changed automatically. Yeah, so and, that uh, should change. Yeah, after linking, this should change. Just, just watch this thing. See, do you see my screen? Do you see see my screen, Himanshu? Yeah, yeah. Just see what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the relationship from SS to uh, say finish to start. Do you see that it has changed? So, so that's that, fine. So, so actually, the chronological order changed. Automatically, huh? Yes, and I'm not able to correct that. Yeah, so that is supposed to change. The chronological order will change. So this is based upon the relationship. So let's see that how much it is different from mine. So what I'm going to do that I'm going to set the level to two. Okay. Now let us see it one by one. So everybody has taken the project start date as first. No, let me first match up the calendar. You know, let's start from the calendar. So that will be the best. So let me start from 1st of January 2018. Okay, so this is the calendar and let me show you the time periods first. So is the time period configured like this? Yes. yes. Okay, is the work week configured like this? 8-8 eight, eight, yes. and Sunday 0? Yes. And 18, yes, yes. Uh, what about you uh, Ashwarya, please confirm. Yeah, that's what I did. And what about you, uh, Tatiana? Is it configured like this? Yes. The work weeks, uh, Sunday zero, rest of the days are, are eight hours? Yeah. Correct. Okay, great. Fine. So let me go into the detail of the day. Now, this is the week. The week is configured like this. I mean, each day. So Sunday, all hours are, Z, I mean, non working, Monday. And Monday till Saturday, it is like this, configured like this. So the first shift is starting at 9 a.m. Okay, from 9 a.m., the work starts and goes on till 1 p.m. And from 1 p.m. till 2 p.m., it is the lunchtime. Do you see the lunchtime here in the dark gray? So, you know, this is for each of the days. So how did I set this? I selected from Monday till Saturday. And then I said this, okay, then I said, okay. So is it fine for all? Uh, I mean, is it the same for all? Everybody has done it the same way? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you, please confirm, Himanshu. Please check your yes. calendar. Yes. Okay, great. So you have uh, configured it in the, the same way. Okay, now, the calendar has certain holidays which are declared holidays or declared is the 26th. So you everybody is for 26th of January as the declared holiday and 27th, which is the last Saturday as per the exercise. So, you know, the company is not a five day week, but the company says that on every last Saturday of each month, we will give you an, a weekend off. Okay. Weekend off is 27th. So 26th is the given holiday. So let's look at the month of Feb. So I'm just holding here. So please confirm if it is the same. Let me check. Yeah. So please synchronize guys. Please uh, synchronize with me. I'm just holding up here. Okay. I'll start from the month of Jan. So please bring up your calendar, which you have applied on this project and have a look so that we can discuss that why it is so. And not only that you correct yourself, but you should ask me a question. Okay. That why it is so. So I'll just tell you that why it is so. Because you have to do this as uh, sort of practically. So you won't have something to refer to. It is good that you practice well. So when you create your own plan, so you would go through the checklist in your mind that first I have to set up the calendar. Then within the calendar, I have to set up the weekday. Then I have to set up the 
the each day of the week that what is the working schedule from 9 am to and all that what is the timing each day and then you have to put in the non working day so non working day will be your weekend and your holidays okay declared holidays So everybody has come here. Yes. Okay. So is the month is the month of uh, February matched up? Is, is is it the same for all? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to March. March is same. Okay, April. Yes. Mm -hmm. May. June. Yes. July. August. September. October. November. December. Okay, so you know, whenever I'm working on any kind of uh, project, I create multi-year calendar. So, what do I do for the next year's holidays? Because they have not been declared by the HR department. Now, what I do that I basically, you know, you would observe that certain holidays they are constant each year, like New Year Day or your Christmas Day or your May Day, if you are observing that in your country. So, you can use the same dates every year. So, you you put these dates as the holiday for for the uh, for the calendar okay in the calendar so you can plan a calendar for 2018 2019 2020 because if you are creating a plan which might go up to two and a half years starting from first of january 2018 so it would it would go till the mid of 2020 so i would create the calendar for entire three years so in which i will put in the holidays now certain holidays are based upon uh, the lunar calendar like uh, religious uh, uh, calendars okay so these are based upon the lunar calendar and lunar calendar is changing each year okay so you know each year it is different from the solar calendar like the Muslims and the Hindus they are basing their religious uh, holidays upon the lunar calendar so what do I do that uh, I put the same dates for each year now the number of the holidays is same so you know that's a policy Okay, so number of the holidays will remain the same. So what, what happens when I move to the next year? Say I have started my project in 2018 and I have moved to say 2019. So what do I do? I only adjust the religious holidays which are shifting each year based upon the lunar calendar. Okay, because uh, Hindu uh, festivals, they shift each year. Okay, either 15 days ahead or 15 days later. So they are not constant. So they are based upon the lunar calendar, but the number of the total holidays is constant. So uh, you might in future might face a situation where you have a multi-year project, a project which runs into three years. So how do you 
predict your finish date. Okay, so you know that as a company policy, the company gives you say ten holidays per year. So you enter all the ten on the same days, and when you enter the next year, just shift the dates to the actuals, and your finish date will remain real. Okay, finish date will be the same. So it is not like that. It's not like a kid who is changing the dates each time you are talking to the kids. So you know your calculation for the finish date will be correct. Okay, so. now what do you do you say okay and okay and close it now let us see that how your your and my dates are different or or the match up so first we will do the scheduling part so then we will come to the money part also and the resource part okay so requirement definition starts on 1st of jan and finishes on 25th of jan so anybody differs No, I just didn't. Okay. Just and what about you, uh, Ashwarya? Yours is same, and Himanshu, yours is same. Or yeah, different? Yeah, I don't see. Yours is same. Yeah, Ashwarya. Uh, no. Yeah, I, I'm not using my laptop right now. I'm just taking notes, but I did the same date. Oh, you are not using your laptop. I mean, <laughs> that is blasphemy. <laughs> 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 you are not using your laptop. <laughs> so please do. I'm logging through my tablet. Uh, my okay. laptop is given for repairing so oh. but i did the primavera project i oh. mailed it to you okay okay so uh, uh, i have to do this thing so how do i do this okay i'll just take it up uh, so just himanshu you just have a look because you know first i will look at the top level if you say there is a difference i'll expand it now tell me himanshu is it different tell me uh, tatiana is it different is end date hmm duration and end date say uh, for the requirement definition so is it the same or different if it is the same it will move to the next one same, same. same? and uh, tatiana uh, tatiana your for you is it the same uh i'm looking that i have a mistake in the in the before seven training that it says that is starting your center is starting on march 6 and mine is saying that it start on january 1st so i'm trying to find out what i no, no. did wrong no uh, i'm 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 talking about requirement definition it is, is it starting on 1st of jan ah yes and it is finishing on 25th of jan the first one yes okay so this is correct so so is it the same the 11 days 8 days 2 days 1 day 2 day and these are the dates which are correct so okay. if these dates are matching then let's move on to the planning now tell me that what's uh, Uh, up, up with planning. Is it ten days, starting on twenty ninth of Jan? Yeah. And finishing, yes. yeah, and finishing on eighth of Feb. Yes. Great. Now let us look at the design. Is the design starting on ninth of Feb? Yes. And finishing on fifth of March. Yes. Uh, which one? Sorry, ninth of Feb. Design, Five, design, yes. which is which is the one which is uh, yeah the selected 4. one. Yeah, yeah, one point three. Okay, and programming. It is forty four days duration. Yes. Yes. Starting on sixth of March. Yeah. Finishing on thirtieth of April. Yeah. Yes, Tatiana, yes. tell me. Yes, yes. Great. Testing is it starting on first of May? Yes. Uh, and finishing on fourth of June. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. And delivery is just one day task. Is it, it is starting and finishing on fifth of June. Yes. yes. Great. And training is starting on sixth of June and finishing. I mean sixth of March and finishing on fourth of June. No, I have yes. a problem there. Okay. So so I am going to expand it. okay so now we will look at the relationships so what i'm going to do that i'm going to switch off the 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 calendar column i assume that you have the same uh so i'm going to remove the calendar column actual start actual finish remaining duration schedule complete okay now what i'm going to do that i'm going to insert the pre predecessors okay so that you can see that who which are the predecessor so i'm going to find the predecessor see how i do it predecessor i just write a part of it then i find predecessor details okay predecessors 
okay so i can see who which task are the pre decessors mm-hmm. okay say so, okay and th- this are the pre decessors so do you see the pre decessors as the same a1170 a1170 would be um which one would be that a1170 will be will be design a1170 will be approvals so as soon as the uh, approval start after the uh, approvals they start the the training yep i fix my okay i found my mistake yes okay great so good so you know in real life you won't have a plan to look at it's not that your boss will give a plan then he will tell you make a plan <laughs> so here we are learning so you have something to refer to now how to do it in real life now listen to me carefully in real life you must have some sort of peer review if that is possible what is peer review so i ask another person who has got the same experience as mine knowledge as mine to look at my plan so he or she might find a mistake okay so that's what we call as peer review then you should ask your team members to look at their task okay especially include your team leaders team leaders okay team leaders they are very intelligent people and you just have to motivate them so that they also understand the planning part because you know they are going to help you execute the plan got my point so they might be able to find something out of six sequence something not related and then you will be able to fix the schedule so fixing the schedule is very important first of all be focused on the the schedule so you know, what is the most important thing when a project so you should know the complete requirement then scope so we assume that requirement and scope is complete now we are doing the scheduling based upon the assumption of the fact we know all our tasks to be done okay now scheduling is dependent upon two things keep, keep in mind duration and relationship get it right duration because if the task have more duration project will be longer if the task have more finish to start relationship the project will also have a longer schedule got it so you know if you put a finish to start it will be long if you put start to start or finish to finish that will give you a compact plan now just look at this so you have corrected now tell me does the top level date match up or is there still any difference in the training part in the training it's the same same and what about the testing testing is first of may and fourth of june finishing yes okay correct fine. okay great so let us collapse it so then what is left so a project complete is it on 5th of june for both of you yes yes very good very good so i am really so happy so you you have learnt it very well so i believe that you have done a uh, i mean lot of uh, paid lot of attention to details now what we will do now we will look at the money part okay we'll look at the money so money should also match up so this is the time this is the cost aspect of the project now see what is the scope see three things i told you scope scope is represented in your activity name column so the wbs and activities they together make up the scope time is derived from original duration column and the predecessor column so that defines your your time so your time is correct so 5th of june 18 now we will do this thing do you see this column bl project total cost can you include this column can you in- include this column bl project total cost so uh, both of you please include the bl project total cost and then we will synchronize the money and then we will see if the total matches up now we will be doing very important part the resource rate and all that stuff okay then i will then i will tell you the critical path okay done okay. and uh, and himanshu you have this column included here do you, do you see the money there uh yes, can you, you you see the money here so uh, i am not saying that it should match up but do you see the money figures yes okay so you are also saying now just uh, just tell me 
uh, by looking at 1.1 is it the same or different <laughs> different almost same slightly difference is there slightly uh, difference so good difference is good now mm -hmm. why why i will tell you difference is good <laughs> see this is my practical experience people those who get a perfect project plan in my class if they face any problem in real life they have no way to know how to they have to uh, i mean they don't know how to figure it out how to find the solution if you have a problem here you will utilize the solution to fix it and that will help in real life also okay so a little bit of difference is really very good because you know it will go it will give you the learning so now we will tr troubleshoot the cost so what i'm going to do is that first of all i start with the resources first of all okay so that is the basic thing let me see if the resources have been properly entered or not so do you see the resources tab here on my screen so what yes. i have done that i have set the filter do you see this filter by a uh, group and sort i mean filter by current project resource can you please do it first of all open the resources tab by from the enterprise and then you filter it to or narrow down the list to only the current project resources okay so one by one we will first examine the resource first we have to see whether the resources are there all resources second we will see if the resources have been set up correctly or not and then we will come back to the project and see how does the cost change or not change then we will examine the task and how what is the utilization of resource so sometimes you know this is the root cause the root cause is that the resources haven't been set up properly okay so so you just have a look at my screen and just see that what is the difference okay and fix and also get the calendar column here so you know how to get the calendar column so you just have to right click here okay then these are the columns okay customize just like every screen so you can change the columns in any screen by right clicking and selecting the columns which are useful for you to control the project okay so first you get this screen so it really doesn't matter the uh, the uh, the resources which are the order so what i'm going to do i'm going to sort them in the alphabetical order so that you can synchronize one to one so you don't miss any resource okay okay i put them in the alphabetical the order so the first alphabet is h what is primary role hello
now let me show you that how the handbook is set up so it is material okay now look at the 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 bottom half of the screen so this is the general tab resource id hb handbook course no no problem so this is the details so this is material type the unit of measure is a count or just nothing leave it there the currency is the us dollar or you you can select canadian dollar or whatever so you keep your keep your currency uh, to your currency but we will look at the amounts that you have entered and the calendar just select uh, six days a week okay the one that you have created for your learning purpose so uh, for in case of material the calendar really doesn't matter okay now we will look at the labor type okay so labor type is management team member so general mt then details labor so labor is the resource type okay then the calendar just make the calendar as 6 days a week and default units per time is 8 hour per day now let me explain this to you what is the meaning of default units per time mm. now it is like this it's a very fine point see when you apply a resource so the resource can be applied for a maximum of 8 hours because a person can work as per the civilized and the international norms is 8 hours so we keep it to 8 hours per day some people can work 9 hours also that's that's not an issue but the project uh, i mean this prima vera is a project management software okay software doesn't judge each person it can look at each person so software has to be provided a default way if i apply this person to a task what should be the default number of the man hours or the person hours applied to the task this is the default now you can keep it to maximum 8 hours you can decrease it to 7 you can decrease it to 5 you can decrease it to 6 you can decrease it to 4 because if this person is by default say available half a day so he is a part time worker so you put it to 4 hours per day now what happens when you apply this person so his default availability what is the availability he is he or she is available for four hour per day so default availability will be applied then you can change it if you have any kind of understanding so if you are talking to him while he is there at the time of planning so you can change it to five you can change it to six but the software will have a default so let's assume that this management team member so this person is available full time so it is 8 hours now you can make it 16 hours also if i make it 16 or more than 8 you know you can assume by default the work uh, effort which is 16 is being delivered by two people if two people work like a team and they have the same description or the same roles okay so you can make it 16 you can make it 24 if there are three people in the same role so you make it 24 so it really doesn't matter which three people work okay but you have the have the availability of the man hours which is either 24 hours per day or 16 hours per day or 8 hours per day so 8 hours per day i understand by default that it is only one person okay but the 8 hours can be given by two two people also who can work 4 hours but they are in a same role so one comes and works in the first hour another comes in the second it really doesn't matter in the project planning what matters in the project planning is that what is the actual availability for this resource actual uh, availability will be eight hours so you can adjust it so this is the default that we set okay now units and prices so what is the per hourly rate eight hours per day. i mean for eight hours per day so the hourly rate you you can put it as 150 per hour or you you can put it say if it is like this so what is 150 so 150 is per hourly rate so if you do it 150 multiplied by 8 so you you can put it something like uh, 1200 slash d also it really doesn't matter because both of them mean the same thing so whatever is known to you you can put you can put weekly rate also okay so we, weekly rate can be like this 7200 divided by or slash w okay got the point it is the same so 150 dollar per hour is equal to 7200 dollar per week okay if the week is the working week 
you not, you calculate the number of the hours so 8 6 the 48 and if you divide 70 to 100 by 48 so you will get 150 got it so try this out guys just divide 70 to 100 by 48 and see how, how much you get per hourly basis One hundred fifty. Yeah, it is the same thing. So whatever mm -hmm. is known to you, you can put here. You can put per minute. You can put per hour. You can put per day. You can put per week. You can put per month. So you know you got six different time units. Okay, according to which you can put the pay rate. Okay, so the pay rate of this person is seventy two hundred per week. You can keep it seventy two hundred per week, or if you want to make it hundred fifty per hour, just put slash h and it will take it. That is the standard rate. Okay, so let's have a look at the programmer. 40 per hour, is it the same? Project manager is the type. The, the type is, do you, do you see this human uh, icon here? So this type is the work. Labor, labor. Labor means person. Okay, and this gear means machine. So both of them are by time are calculated their total cost of usage is calculated by the time so one is the labor and one is the non labor so why do we have why do we have time for the non labor can someone guess or can someone tell me from experience or from guess you know this is a question which is beyond prime avira a project manager should know because you if you know this then you can use Primavera effectively, not only Primavera, any software, any project management software. Do you understand the depreciation, the word depreciation? Yeah. So, you know, for every equipment or machinery, if we hire, so our life is very simple because the vendor will give us a quote. He says that, look, I'm going to give you the PC at the rate of $60 per day. So you can have one PC, you can have six PCs, you can have 10 PCs. So the rate is $60 per day. So that's very simple. But how does the vendor give me $60 per day? He must be having some calculation at his end. So he's doing that. But suppose if I'm using my own equipment, suppose if I'm using a, say an earth mover or a digging machine, you know, these machines, they have a lifespan, right or wrong, or do the, do the last in, infinitely. They don't last infinitely, like they have a lifespan. So based upon the total cost, which is divided by the lifespan, so I can get a per year cost. Right or wrong? Right. To this per year cost, I add a certain amount of maintenance cost, say 10% or 20%, I add a maintenance cost for the spares and keep the equipment in the running condition. Right. So. I use it on per day basis or per week basis or per month basis for the non labor, which is equipment to calculate the depreciation cost and include it into the cost of the project. So why should I be doing this? Do you understand the business sense here? Why should I include the depreciation cost of the equipment that I'm using into the cost of the project? Anyway, this is going to be a cost for the company. So it should be recovered. Absolutely right. You are not going to make any profit. I'm not saying that you will uh, recover something extra. So you should be having enough money to buy a new one and you will not only include the cost, but you know, the cost of the equipment might change after five years, six years, 10 years. So it will be a little bit costlier. Okay. Costlier due to uh, the, uh, I mean, um, there is something called inflation. Okay. And maybe in the future, the company might come up with a newer model. Okay, so you know, the things will be costlier by that time if you want to replace it. So you must have some sort of calculation to have that much amount of money required from every project which is using the equipment. So that is why we represent the non labor as machines. Okay, got my point? But these are based upon time. Absolutely the same. The calculation is the same. Labor and non labor calculation is based upon the time period the duration got my point so in your rental PC it is 60 per day yes it is 
and in your system analyst is uh, system analyst it is 60 per hour 60 yes and the test engineer is 50 per hour yes. so it really doesn't matter whatever your currency is it should be the same amount of money 45 per hour trainer wait could the senior please a trainer is 45 per hour can you go back to the test engineer please 50 per hour why you put 16 there 16 hours per day because i am uh, because i am uh, using two okay so let me do this thing let me start with one okay i'll just explain to you that is the resource over allocation because that is an important yes but uh, how should i know that yeah so so for every labor let me do this thing let me put 8 hours programmer 8 hours because you know they, this is a solved one now i'll explain to you that why is it so because when i am creating these resources i i have no idea how many will be required i basically create one resource yes one resource is 8 hour per day test engineer is 8 hour trainer is again 8 hour per day means i am creating only one person so this capacity is one person capacity right now let me show you something interesting so i'm just making sure that the money part should be the same i'm going back to the act activities now let's look at the money so what i'm going to do i'm going to do f5 okay f5 now here if you look carefully the money will be refreshed so is there any change in your money have you did you make any correction in the resource by by any chance was it wrong no, or or different not yet. okay so is it ma matching up 13920 for the requirement definition no not okay let me no. expand it no. let me expand it now you look at a1010 is it the same 52880 <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no. Not. Not only it is good. If it is not the same, if it is the same, that's a matter of concern because then you won't have anything in real life. Now I will show you the resources. See, the cost of doing this task is cost of utilizing uh -huh. the resources. Now let us look at this budgeted units. Is it 88 hours, 88 man hours? No, that is the problem because I have in the in the budget units time I have one and you have eight. No, why in one? see it is the it is the 11 days and i am utilizing this labor for 11 days if this person is working for 11 days so the budgeted unit should be 88 and and you know so let me no i'm talking about the i'm talking about that 1 2 3 fourth column that you have there in the fourth column i have uh 1 2 3 in the third column now You have eight out eight hours per day. Yeah, so, yeah. And I had one hour per day. I don't know how. That so happens. you, so you just make, so you just do one thing. You make it eight yeah, hours. Yeah, I corrected. You make it eight hours. Mm -hmm. So now is it eighty yep. eight? Now yep. what is the budgeted cost? Five to eight zero here for this resource. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now, now let us look at the total. Is the total matching up or is it still different? Is it one three nine? I have. The thing is that I have to correct the other ones. So, for example, sorry to ask this for the current specification draft. So you make it uh, the uh, remain uh, the eight, eight eight hour per day. Eight hour. Yes, per day. I I did it, and the next and requirement analysis. Yes, and the next one. Yeah. You have eight, eight hour per eight day. hours two and a half four. I don't know. And it should become nine sixty dollars. And now it's nine uh, sixty. Yes. Yeah. So in no, in this one we are used. we are using project manager. Okay. Eight. Yes. Project manager eight hour per day, and then system analyst eight hour per day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then the other one is going to be oh four eight and eight. Okay. And requirement defined. Zero. I don't have anything. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, now is it matching at the top? 
at uh, this level one three nine two zero. Yes, is, is it matching? Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay, and for planning, one four zero. I have zero. to fix the other ones. Okay, fine. I am exposing it. So in interview users, so eight hour uh, per day. Yes. Correct. That very fast. Okay. So let me do this thing. Let me show you the top row also, and you make your correction. The top row is yes. here. So when it matches the top row, so you you can just stop there. Okay. So it means 14. that. Fourteen. So so what about you, Himanshu? Is it matching up? Project plan. Yes, it is matching. Oh, project okay. plan. Project plan. Project manager. Requirement definition is matching. Yeah. Planning is also matching. Okay. Okay. Design is yeah. also matching. Good. And check the next one. Programming seven zero two four zero. Programming there is difference. Difference. Okay, fine. The difference we will check and we will correct. So I am just waiting for Tatiana to catch up. Yes, I'm. I'm done with the planning. With the planning. Yes. Okay, and let me uh, open the design. Yes, please. Yeah, design. Okay. Yeah, two thousand one sixty. Yes, it's okay. Same. Eight. 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 Good. So there, I have problem in the prototyping. Prototyping. Okay. Yeah. Prototyping is nine days task, and these are the two people. So ah. this, this programmer will be used two hours per day, and the system analyst will be utilized six hours per day. It is not so necessary. So there is. There is where you're going to write that specification. Yes. Now, uh, but mm. let me show you the or original sheet. Okay. If you look at your original sheet, that is the page two. You you will see that it is mentioned there as twenty five percent utilization and seventy five percent utilization. Mm hmm. Twenty mm -hmm. five. See, hundred percent utilization is eight hours. Right. Mm. Yes. So two hours is twenty five percent. So or twenty five percent of eight hours is two hours. What's the point? Yeah. So, so you should know if a person tells you and comes. Uh, so if you ask me, can you give your hundred percent to the project? He says, no, no, ma'am. So right now I am working half day on another project. I can give you fifty percent of my available level of the work effort. So if he says fifty percent, so mentally you would know that he can work in my project for four hours because fifty percent of his time is divided across another project. So his His availability right now is fifty percent, so fifty percent of his capacity. Okay, a person's capacity is standardized at eight hours per day. Okay. Mm Can you expand, please, programming? Yes. You give me a moment. So in the first one, I am utilizing programmer for yes. doing this task. Okay. So in yes. the second one, why do you have? It's like the double. Uh, you have nine sixty for the identify design params, parameters, but I have only one person is going to be okay. Okay, so oh, let 12. me let me check the original sheet. That what is uh, what is mentioned in the original plan. So if that is uh, something that ah, okay, because it says there is two days plus. No, it doesn't matter. Plus one. Okay, so uh, let me check. What is 
given there so based so based upon that it has so so you know that's why you know what i have done i have i could have deliberately put something there so okay so that you can notice it and tell me so in the programming identify design parameters so i am utilizing programmer for two days so i am going to utilize programmer for two days but the thing is that i am not going to utilize uh, 12 i am not going to utilize one person and a half person. means that i am going to utilize only one person for full day so you know it is 8 hours per day so okay. it is okay. it is like this okay good okay so it is also 640 It is six nine nine two zero. Yes. The overall cost. And and can you go to cutting, please? Yes, that was my <laughs> <laughs> cutting. Actually, uh, so at so, six nine nine two zero are here. So yes. now, yes. now if you look look at coding, you know what I have done here: sixty four hours per day. Now, can you tell me that what is the purpose? Sixty four hour per day. 64 man hour per day so how many people do you need eight, eight. exactly i eight. need eight eight people on per day uh -huh. so you know eight people like you know you understand horsepower oh. you understand what is the meaning of horsepower yes have you seen electric motors which if you look at the plate specification plate on electric motor it says one horsepower or three horsepower or four horsepower so you know what is the meaning because earlier people used to use horses for drawing the carriages so when the when the internal combustion engine was invented when people were asked i mean encouraged to buy those so people would make a comparison with the horse so if you go to some shop and say that why should i replace why should i replace my horse with this internal combustion engine so then person will say that it is it it is better you can use it any time you can ride it any time and it is cheaper it okay you don't have to uh, i mean take care of it as much as you would do for a horse but then the next question is that okay fine now what is the strength of this engine is it equivalent of one horse so then you would say no this is equivalent to two horse so that is the strength of the engine two horse power now now let me come back to this so that is the human power so one human can give eight man hours per day so that is the human power one person eight man hours right or you 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 can say um what you can say 8 watts <laughs> not 8 watts we have got more <laughs> than that so basically we have to understand see when you are working as a project manager for a moment just visualize people as robots okay what is the what is the effort of this see different people have different working capacities and capabilities and skill sets but the thing is that when i am doing the planning i am not uh, considering any particular person in my mind okay i am considering a group of people and i assume that every person is identical twin okay just visualize pe people like that so every programmer who gives me 8 hour per day is assigned in my project i need 8 when i take 8 people what is my total capacity per day basis it is 8 people multiplied by 8 man hours okay which is the output of one person so that is 64 so 64 means if i reverse translate it so it means that i require eight people to work simultaneously on per day basis so when i have 64 man hour per day and i multiply it with a duration of 24 days okay so the total work effort becomes 1536 man hours and based upon the rate of the programmer which is the same for all people the budgeted cost of this task becomes 61440 dollars so is that fine guys is it understood and is it the same yes it is okay now we come to the next one developer testing so developer testing uses one developer for for 20 days So eight hours per day multiplied by twenty is one sixty man hours utilized. Okay. Now you see it is your prerogative. You can change it while you are planning. You say that okay for twenty days I will use one person for say two hours. So you put two here. Do you see see the cost changing? Do you mm -hmm. see the total? 
Now this sixteen hundred dollars is calculated from forty man hours. Okay, if you utilize one person for one hour per day, for twenty days it becomes twenty man hours because the person is coming to the work. He works for one hour and goes away. It really doesn't matter at what time he comes. He has to just work for one hour. So if he works for twenty days, it becomes twenty man hours. And twenty man hours at the rate, whatever is his rate, so that becomes eight hundred. So can you guess from here? Can you uh, know from here if the budgeted cost is eight hundred dollars and he is getting twenty units? Is giving twenty units. So what is the per unit cost? Forty. 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 It's very simple. So if you change the rate there, it will change here also, and uh, it will recalculate. Okay, so you have to sometimes push it also. So if you are going to utilize a person for whole day, you put eight hours per day. And if you are going to utilize more than one person, you increase the man hours. Suppose if you want a person to work for one day, full day, and another person will working along with him for half a day. So how many man hours you should put here? On per per day basis, ten or twelve. 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 One person is eight 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 hours, and two person will be eight plus four. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this become the budgeted units. So budgeted unit will be two forty. Got the point. And the budgeted cost will become ninety six hundred dollars. So you know it is very flexible. So this gives you a very fine control, which no other software can give you. You you can change the duration on the top, then you will see the cost is also changing. See right now on the duration on the top is twenty days. If you change the twenty to ten, or if you change the twenty to forty, the total cost will also change for the budgeted cost of this task. Okay, so this is very flexible. So now tell me that is it sixty nine nine hundred twenty? Yes. Great. Now let us look at testing. So is the testing is matching? Is it seventeen thousand six hundred or is it different? Yes. Yes, I got it. So now let's move to delivery. Is it fifty thousand dollars or fifty thousand units? Right. Yes. Training is fifteen thousand one five triple zero. Yes. Eh no. Can you okay. open it please? Yeah. Sure. So training. So let's look at the first task. How it is? So maybe mine is different from yours. So let's find that what is different. I'm using a trainer in this task. First one. So mm -hmm. first one is eighteen hundred dollars, and second is develop training uh, materials. Yes. So this is only one resource trainer. Trainer will be working eight hour per day means full day, and he will work for twenty days. Mm -hmm. And that is seventy-two hundred. And finalize training materials. So trainer again, trainer will work for three days to finalize the training materials. And the cost of the trainer utilized for three days will be one thousand eighty. Mm -hmm. And then train users. So when I am using the trainer, I need three different resources. So trainer is there. So you know, I mark the trainer as the primary resource here. Okay. now he needs some handbook for the for the people so how many handbook because he, if he is going to train six people so he is going to use six handbooks okay so i put six here directly six here so mm -hmm. handbook it is not that he will give one handbook on per day basis it's not like that he will give six handbooks on the first day so you just go to the total budgeted units and put six there directly now he needs to train six people so how many rental pc does he need six six so six pc what is the machine time of six pc eight hours no eight hours is for one pc for six pc it will be ah uh, 48 48 you know that is why i have written the rental time as 48 hours per day because i'll be paying the rental for six pc per day and multiplied by the number of the days Okay, because I know that one PC rental is sixty dollar per day. Okay, so the software will calculate. Now look at the cost breakup. Is it six hundred, twenty one sixty, and twenty one sixty? Is it the same? Budgeted. Six hundred for the six handbooks. Ah, uh, 
and 2160 for the PC, six PCs for how many days? Six days. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is 2160. And if you use the trainer, so the rate of the trainer multiplied by eight days, and that is 2160. So the total time that I'm using from the trainer is 48 man hours. And for the PCs, I'm using 288 machine hours. Man hours and machine hours, okay. So machine hours is defined to me by the vendor. He says that you <laughs> can rent my PC for $60 per day. Okay. So when I multiplied by, when I multiplied $60 per day with 288 man hours, I get $2160. Got the point? Yep. 2160, is that fine? Yes. Great. Now, is it matching up at the top level? $15,000? Now I now, yes. now we go to, go to the top level, absolute top. Is it one nine one six eight zero for both of you? Yes. Okay, great. Now you know here we have a plan which is agreeable to all. So this this is called which is called the near baseline. So what do we do? We must save a copy of this. So there are two ways you you can save a copy. So one way is that here export. Do you do you see this? Uh, no, this is import. This is export. So what do you do? You export. Okay. Do you see the export button? Or, yes. Or you can get export from the file also. File, export. Okay. Do you do you see the ex export button in the file drop down? Mm -hmm. Export. Yes. So you can export it to XCR format. So XCR for format is the 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 primavera format. Okay. So you can select 17.7 or later, 15.1 or later. So this is the latest version. But if you select 15.1, if someone is having 15.1 or later, Primavera, the format can be imported by that person software. Okay. So if you make it 17.7 or later, then any person is, if he is using, he or she is using Primavera, uh, version lower than 17.7 cannot be, I mean, cannot be able to import it. So let's click on the next button. We select project. We select next. We select next. Okay. Then we select a location and then we give a name to the file. I say software. And final okay or finalized okay and you give it number finalized zero one why you should keep a backup just by chance if you make a mistake here or anything goes wrong you can always get your copy back okay so this is one way of backup but there is one more way of backup that is also very interesting Okay, that I will show you right now, but you must learn to export first because why? Because what happens that if you are working uh, in an environment where you have certain contractors working for you, you have to give them your plan. Why? Because they will insert their subtask into that. Okay, then you will have to import it again. So you say save and then you click on finish. Export was successful. So this is exported and this is successful. So uh, I uh, so this can be imported by someone else to get the project. So what I'm going to do that I'm going to export it to four of you. Okay. So that you can keep it for reference. Okay. I'm just, just give me a, just give me a moment. I'm sending it to you guys. Okay.
So, have you uh, received it in your mailbox? H Hello? Yes. Check in. <clears throat> check in, check in. Yes. Okay, so you can keep the keep the copy with you for reference. So basically, you know, you should understand that you can make a backup like this. Now I'm going to show you that how do we baseline the project. So I'll come back to the baseline in a while. But before that, I want to show you something which is important for you to know. Okay, so you just watch and understand that what I'm showing to you. Okay, so uh, just let's do this thing. Uh, can we take a 10 minutes break and then come back? I'm going to show you the critical path. So, okay. Okay. Just op open. Um, I mean, you can do anything you want. You can just open my project also and have a look. Okay. So how it looks like and basically, so I'll be back in 10 minutes and you guys can also take a break. So I'm going to pause my screen and mute my uh, mic for a while. Okay. So after that, we'll look at the critical path. Then we will look at the baseline and then tracking and reporting. So, you know, that will give you complete knowledge. Okay, so I'm muting my mic.
हाँ इधर आओ कार्तिक ओके आई एम बैक सो यू आर रेडी हेलो हेलो या सो सो यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस सो फार सो गुड ओके फाइन सो व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू द क्रिटिकल पाथ सो व्हाट इज द क्रिटिकल पाथ See, whenever we create a project, okay. Now, what ha what ha happens is that the finish date of the project. Uh, do you see this uh, my new screen? Yes. Okay. So, if you look at the screen carefully, you will see that there are six tasks here. One of them is a long task. I've named it as a long task. Do you see that this is in red color? yes okay fine so it is called critical because this is the longest task and the finish date of the project is coming from this long task only or this the longest path so this task is also a path also because <laughs> the path can have minimum one task and a path can have multiple tasks also. so if you look at the rest of the task 1 2 3 4 5 <laughs> <five>, so <laughs> there are five days each Okay, but they are in green color, so they are normal. Okay, and if you look at the finish date of the project, that is twenty fifth of Jan. It is coming from the, it it is uh, uh, coming from the longest task. Okay, so now if you look at all the task here, now one of them, one second, give me a moment. Okay, so. we have to understand that if this task is delayed it will delay the project because the finish date is been calculated from here now let me do this thing let me join all the task one by one okay so i am going to join these two task okay i say link activities so they get linked in a finish to start then i will link two and three link activities okay then i link 3 and 4 link activities so you know this this becomes red now why this becomes red is that because now this is also the maximum length okay this is also the maximum length mm -hmm. so now both of them oh someone is having some background noise i i need to talk to you also and uh i think himanshu uh, you have some background noise or uh, you are at home i i believe so i have just put the mic on uh okay uh, so just uh, you mute yourself and if you need to talk to me you un unmute yourself okay so th that will be the best because i uh, i should not prevent you from asking me questions so that's why and at the same time we need to keep this uh, uh, classroom quiet okay so now if you look at 
the total length of the long task and the one, two, three, four task in finish to start relationship, they are all 20. So both of them are critical path. Now, what is the importance for the project manager to know the critical path? See, when a project is planned, not all the resources are available okay throughout the project so you have to know as early as possible which resources might not be available if some resource has some chances of non availability due to the planned leave or something so you should first fig fig figure it out whether this resource is working on the critical path or not suppose if you assign a person on task one okay and that person takes a one day off he doesn't work continuously he takes one day off now this task will get delayed by one day and will become six days now what happens that will push the finish date of the project now do you see the finish date of, of the project it is now 26th of january it's not 25th mm -hmm. if i make it five it's fine now see one thing now why critical path is important i'm going to link four and five i say link activities now do you see the difference here what has happened yes the time the duration of the project went longer longer and plus if you look at the task a 1000 it is now green because it is no longer a critical task okay it is not critical because it is not defining the finish date of the project okay now the critical task has to be understood in the beginning so that you can plan for the resources which are working on the critical path so what is the path here task one two three four five six is five is the critical path so all the tasks on a critical path they have the potential to delay the project and not the non-critical so what is the difference between critical and non-critical the difference is that that in the critical path the float is zero i'll just show you the float okay i'm going to add add one column here so it will show you the float Do you see this float here? Now, if you look at this float, so here you have a float which is five days. So, you know, this task has a chance of delaying itself by five days. Okay. Now, if I go to the bars and I click on the float bar, there is a bar which shows you the float also. So, let me go down. Yes, here is the float bar okay load bar and apply the color do you see this black bar here so this is the float bar now uh, so, suppose if i break up the relationship okay so this float bar will be gone now the float bar will be on this task so what is the float for this task 15 days so it means that this task can be delayed by 15 days before it will push the finish date of the project so so we are not we are not having much concern on this task but we are concerned with these two paths one is the long task which is one path and another path is having task one two three four now what we should be taking care of is that this task should not be delayed due to my mistake project manager so what can be my mistake if i fail to provide the resources or if I fail to plan the resources. So you have to ask your team member who are working on task one, two, three, four. So guys, do you plan to take any kind of uh, leave during the project? So if you do, so please tell me so that I can uh, arrange for a substitute resource. Because arranging for a substitute resource is very, very important. Because if I don't do it, then there might be a good good chance that this task will get delayed okay this task will get delayed because if the work is not done so that will push the duration of the project 
so because this task 1 2 3 4 or the long task doesn't have any float okay got the point and not only people then you should ask the people that do you have equipments which are reliable and if they need do they need any kind of maintenance so if they require any maintenance you should preempt the maintenance why you should preempt the maintenance so that it doesn't break down in the middle of the project if any of the if any of the equipment breaks down while the project is on so you know that is going to cause a problem here because if the person is there but the equipment is not there so the work will not get done okay now the next point is that do you have enough material because you need people you need equipment then you need material also because material is a resource if one of the material is not available even then the work cannot be done even that's a problem got the point so guys is it making sense to you the critical path so the critical path would, would be visible in red color now where is the critical path in your project it is here i'll go and open the project here okay so this is your this is your project you open the project from here so you expand the task here you say expand expand okay you expand it fully now if you look at the project plan you will see that there is a lot of task here which is in red color so you know in a real life project almost uh, every task is on the critical path do you see that most of the tasks are in red color yeah so if the most of the tasks they are in red color so what is the message to you the message to you is that you must make sure that none of the tasks are delayed if any of these tasks they are delayed then it will delay or push the finish date of the project because the finish date of the project is being derived from the critical path so the critical path is visible like this okay so this is the critical path so all the red color tasks so these are the green ones so the green ones have some float here so you don't have to worry much but the thing is that you should first give the priority to the red so what is the importance at the planning stage to know the critical path so once you know the critical path so what you should be doing is that you should look at the human resource you should look at the equipment resource you should look at the material resource to determine if there are any chances of these falling short of the required availability or the planned avail or the planned quantity during the project okay so these are the things which you can control as a project manager even cash also okay you should make sure that the planned cash it is required to do some external work or by some uh, work which is a miscellaneous work from some some miscellaneous labor contractors so you should have that much cash cash available to give to your team leaders okay team leaders they need equipment they need to be available themselves first okay then they need equipment then they need material then they need cash for any kind of miscellaneous work which will be done by resources from outside the project team like some casual contractors or casual laborers okay so that is the purpose of knowing your critical path so is does it sound good yes it does so you know then you have filter also do you see this filter you know this uh, icon filter icon so if you select critical do you see my screen so which icon i click okay filter by so remember this icon it looks like a funnel then you get this pop up you select critical and then you say apply so you know now your view will be restricted to the critical task only okay so what is the purpose the purpose is to take a print out and purpose is to take a list of the task which are critical and then one by one sort out any kind of issues okay got my point 
Yes. Okay. So this is the importance to the project manager, and the project manager should know the critical paths immediately before finalizing the project, so that if there is any issue with any person or resource, so that you can adjust according to the availability then baseline. So you know this is a project plan which which is about to be baseline, but before that we must do resource leveling. Okay, now the resource leveling is like this because some of the tasks they have less resources, less people than re required. Some have more, or maybe some then need adjustment also. So let's see. See in the resources when we have created, we have created all the resources at the default uh, units per time. That is eight hour. But we have assumed that we have only one person of this kind, but we might need two people. See if you look at the especially. A programmer, you need 64 man hour on per day basis. So 64 man hour can be derived from the parallel working of eight people. Right or wrong? Right. Okay. So you know, in Primavera, there is a way of knowing that which tasks are short of the required man power or the work effort. So it is very simple. You go to your activities. Okay. So just split the screen like this and on the top do you see this human figure with some graph resource usage profile. So you should also set your menu you open all the menus and then you will see this also. Okay how to expand your menu you can expand your menu like this add or remove button you expand all this. Okay so guys please add, add, add this button first then I will show you. Please add this button from the top done okay fine now i am going to click on this and i'll see a graph i'll look at the resources one by one handbook so first i'm going to do is that i will condense the the total gantt chart into one single view so i'm going to click on the minus button okay now i'll slide it here in the middle so that i can see that how my graph is being applied so this this handbook is being applied towards the end of the project so this is fine management team programmer what is the budgeted units what is the actual units okay so so i have programmer and programmer so what is the name? So programmer. So I have to just see that which task is well. So I'm having PGR and PRG. So actually it is a mistake here on my part. So basically I have duplicate resources. I shouldn't be having that. I should have only one resource. Okay. So this guy is working towards the end. So I have to find the task and uh, replace by PRG. Okay. So let me do this. Let me correct my mistake. Okay, just give me a moment. So I'm trying to identify the task.
okay fine so now we have this uh, proper view now i'll explain to you so that you can understand that what i'm trying to show you i am just trying to show you the first complete project so this is the complete project view okay so i am going to look at handbook so do we have sufficient handbooks fine okay so mm, not this okay management team okay project manager fine programmer do you see this red color here so what i'm going to do i'm going to unmute you so that you can ask me okay now let me tell you that what is happening here let me expand it now i'll expand it here it will be very easy for you to understand see we are using this people or this skill at the rate of 64 hours per day right and here do you see this for some days we are using for 72 man hours per day i'll just show you the chart also see look at this chart do you, do you see the 64 hour per day thing here and then you see 72 hour per day see it is corresponding to the graph now what is this black line representative of do you see this black line re representative of this is re this is representative of the actual uh, availability now the thing is that if i need a lower resource and in good quantity say i need one or ten so you know i have a very good chance of getting it so i go to my boss or to my hr manager then i tell that boss according to the plan i need at least uh, nine people on per day basis why nine people just look at uh, the april month in the april month do you see the graph what is the peak peak demand 72 man hours per day for how many days one two three four five six six, six. okay so you know having a peak peak demand of six means that so for six days means that i should have a maximum availability from the resource pool at nine or ten so it should be minimum nine it's not that i'm going to put nine people in my uh, in my shop floor no it's not like that so my boss says that okay if you need nine so i give you the permission to utilize nine now this is the resource over allocation why why the over allocation is there because if you look at the programmer okay so maximum availability of this programmer is eight hour per day means that i've got one access to only one person maximum from the resource pool now boss gives me the permission he says that okay if you wish to access you can access 10 people so what is the total man hours mm -hmm. of 10 people 80 80 so i say 80 slash d so what i mean to say is that i can access i can access 10 people if i need to it is not necessary that i will use 10 people every day no i will utilize it according to requirement it might be two hour per day four hour per day six man hour per day eight man hour per day or 12 man hour per day or but i have a permission up to a 10 people means 80 man hours on per day basis so this is the this is the maximum units per time that that can be used okay so the maximum units per time is 80 80 means 10 so beyond 10 i need to seek a permission again for 10 i don't need to so i have the availability of 10 if i utilize 9 it will not be over allocated if i utilize 10 people it will not be over allocated now i am going back to my graph once again so that you can see that what does it look like do you see this this black line yes this black line represents the 80 man hour that is the availability so you know i am utilizing this kind of resource below the capacity capacity to me that is available is 80 man hours now let me do this thing let me reduce the resource capacity okay let me reduce it to say nine people so nine people is 72 man hour on daily basis I reduce it to nine 
I save it, I refresh it, I say F5 here, I have to do it because the data has to be refreshed and then I will go to the activities window and then I will see the difference. Okay, now do you see that it has on the last days of the April, it is just touching, but it is not over allocated. You don't see the red color. Okay, just see now what I'm going to do. If I reduce it to 64, okay, on per day basis, now what do you expect to see here? Will it be red for all the days or will it be red for some days and green for some? See, why these are red on some days of the April month? Need more people. Yes, my my given capacity is nine people, but my utilization on the on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday is nine people. So, do you see what is the difference in the what is the difference? The difference is eight man hours. Do you see this graph? Where it where does it correspond? See, I am going to bring it near to the scale. See, this black line is how much? 64. 64. 64. And how much is this? This is uh, 72. 72. So anything which is more than the, than the given capacity will be depicted in red color. So, you know, it is like uh, you are having a transformer which is having a capacity of, say, to support a load of 10,000 watts and you are putting a load of 12,000 watts. So what will be the 2,000 watts? So 2,000 watts will be the will be the overload. So this is the resource overloading. So in case of the lower, lower level resource, I can ask for more people and I can get it. So what do I do? I go to my resource pool and I level it like this. I say that, okay, that I have access to 10 people by default. I make it 80 man hour per day. So that's not a big deal. Because boss has given me the permission. Okay. So I'll be using up to it. I have been given the permission. Okay. Up to. Up to means that on some day if I need less, I can use less. If I someday on I need more, I need to then look at what is my capacity. Okay. So this resource is leveled. Now let me look at this system analyst. Okay. Now system analyst. So what do I do? I just reduce this thing. So that I can see more of my project here. Let me see if this system analyst is uh, over allocated or not. So what I have to do is bring the entire project into the view first. Okay, so that it is condensed. Okay, so this is my entire project in view. Okay, do you see this uh, system analyst uh, over allocation on certain days? Do you see, see this thing? Hello. So do you, yes. do, do, do you, do you notice? Let me expand it Yes. On, on daily basis. So when I expand it, it looks like this. So let me see where it's gone. It's here in the beginning of the project. Okay. Now on certain days, I need two people. Do you see this 16? Mm -hmm. You see 16? On certain days, I need two system, but not on all the days. On certain days, I need less than eight also. So you can find those tasks. Now, what do I do? I go to boss. Boss, uh, I need uh, there's system analyst on certain days. Now listen to the stories carefully guys. It's very important. This happens in real life. Okay. So I'm going to mute the background so, so that you can hear me clearly. Then I will unmute you so that you can ask me a question. Okay. So I go and tell boss, boss, I need a system analyst and the system analyst on certain days. Okay. So how many days do I need? Then I tell him. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, then boss thinks for a while. He says, look, system analyst is a very costly resource. We don't have many system analysts. So, you know, during the last meeting, we had decided between all the project managers that every project will have at least one system analyst, but no project can have more than one system analyst at any given point of time. Just to ensure that every project has one system analyst whenever needed. So we have to use the resource optimally. So if I level this resource based upon one, 
so what do you expect will the duration remain the same or will it increase <coughs> see if i have less people then i have to stretch the work if i need more resources if i am provided then i don't have to stretch the work now do you think that if i reduce the work on per day basis to match up with the available capacity now tell me what is the available capacity of system analyst role or system analyst resource 8 man hours or 16 because boss says you can have only one system analyst 16 no 16 8 but on requirement on certain day is 16 now what is uh, the what is the solution to authorize 16 no boss says no boss says you can utilize only one system analyst maximum in one project it means that on the days where i need 16 man hours of system analyst i have to level the work i have to bring down the peak demand of the work i have to reduce the work so what happens if i reduce the work on per day basis it's going to be longer the duration yes. of the project Yes, the duration of the project will become longer because I have less people to do the work on per day basis. Okay, now just see what happens if I do this. Okay, first let me look at the finish date of the project. What is the current finish date? Fifth of June. Okay, now if I don't have the system analyst, another one to work on these six days, what will happen? So how much do you anticipate if I level the task according to the resource availability? That is eight man hour per day. So, how many days do you anticipate the project duration will stretch? Five days, six days, one day, ten days, sixty days? How many days? Six days. Six days, exactly. Now, how do I level this resource? Just watch me doing this very carefully. Okay. So, this is where I let you have a look. Okay. So. Do you see this button, level resource, and this button has a shortcut also, Shift plus F9, okay. So first of all, you open this, and I'm keeping it to the left, and I uncheck this box, level all resources. This is dangerous. I don't want to level resource. I want to level the resources selectively. Okay. So which one I have to I have to level right now? system analyst okay i select system analyst here and then i click on okay so what is the finish date of the project right now was what is the finish date of the project right now 5th of june 5th of june okay now let's see that when i level this resource what happens okay because what what will happen if i have to do less work on per day basis you know the work duration will get stretched because i am doing less work per day mm. okay uh, got the point so i click on the level button now i look at the finish date do you see the finish date mm. 12th of june mm -hmm. so why 12th of june it is 12th of june because it is it might be skipping over one weekend also it is not exactly 6 plus 5 is equal to 11 because if it skips over one weekend so this will be 12th what the point yep. now each day the system analyst is going to work 8 hours only because one person cannot give more than an output of 8 man hours because on certain days i needed 16 man hours if i don't have it so that's it so that is the that is the maximum that that i can have what's the point okay so this is one of the task requirement analysis okay activity details requirement analysis so requirement analysis re required two okay so if the if the two resources are not available uh, not available so then i have to make do with one so just just do just do this thing just try to do the resource leveling
Okay. So, so could you level the resource? Yes. Now, when you are having less resource, your duration will increase. So when you are having more resource, your duration will be compressed. Okay, so this can be seen in a new project also. So this is called resource leveling. See, before we finalize the project plan for the baselining, we must make sure that the project is perfect because the project will work like a measuring scale. Okay, against this scale, we will measure the actual work and then we will determine whether we are doing fine according to time and cost or not. So now let us look at the management team and let's see if we have any resource uh, over allocation. Over allocation is something which we must avoid. So let's see if there is any red color. No. Project manager. No. Programmer. No. QA manager. No. Rental PC. Yes. So what happened to the rental PC? Actually, we need six PC. But you know, I have written here maximum units is eight hour per day means one PC per day. No, I can have as many PCs. So what I need is six. I say 48 slash D. And then I press F10 and F5 refresh it. You must do F10 and F5 if you are making changes to make sure that the data that you're seeing in the in, in the other tab is the latest data. Okay, so I go to activities. So this is leveled out. Then I look at system analyst. So system analyst is level test engineer. So test engineer is again it is over allocated. So let's see that what is the over allocation on per day basis. So I have to expand it. So I expand it when I see it to the daily resolution. So I need two test engineers on some days. So then I go to my boss or resource manager and I tell, look, I need two test engineers on some days. Okay. Then boss says that okay, you can have two test engineers. That's not a problem. Test engineer is not a costly resource. So you can have, if you need, you can have two. If you need, you can have three. So I'm giving you the permission for the maximum utilization of three test engineer or 24 man hours per day for the test engineer role or the resource. Okay. So do you get my point? Now, how do I level it? Where do I go to fix this? To increase the capacity of this resource test engineer. I go to the resources. No, not the level because here I'm going to increase the capacity of the resource. Now it says maximum units per time is eight hours per day. A boss says, okay, I'm giving you the permission for the maximum usage up to six hours per day. So what, I mean, uh, to 16 hours per day means two, two people on per day basis. I'll make it 16 because two people represent 16 man hour. Or if he says that I give you the permission to use two person full time and one person half time. So how many man hours will that be? Two person full time. 20. One, one, one. No, two person full time. 16. One, yeah, one person half time. So 16 plus four. 20. 20. Yes, exactly. You know, this is the way we divide and we this is the way we optimize the resources between the various project teams. Okay, so that we make sure that no project team is utilizing more resources than is available. But in some case, uh, we have to fix the resources and we can uh, change the duration. Yes, so th this is what we did with the system analyst. In case of the system analyst, see, I asked boss for more. He said, no, you can have only one person. So I put 8 slash D. Okay, so when I put maximum to eight person, I mean eight hours per day means one person per day. So then I came to my activities and looked at the system analyst activities. Then I realized that I cannot have more than one. So what I did, I leveled the resource based upon the availability. So due to this reason, the duration expanded. My duration stretched. Okay, so I could not get more than one person. So my duration, which was originally planned for finish on 5th of June, it is now finishing on 12th of June because of the increase in six days. Okay. Because 
I couldn't put more system analysts on per day basis more than one. That is why. So now if all the resources are leveled, so what we are going to do, we are going to make a baseline and the baseline will be utilized as a scale of measure of the progress of the project. Okay. So uh, let me synchronize with, with you. Is it uh, um, 12th of June finish for you? Um, Actually, I'm not yet done uh, that leveling. Uh, so, so I'll just wait for you to do it. Just do one thing. Can you help me out? Uh, actually, I'm not. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Why not? Why not? So, I'm doing. Uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to share. Can I share my screen? Yes, yes. So, I'm I'm making you the host. Okay. So, you share your screen now. So now you are the host. So the rest of the people can also see that how they can do it. Okay, you share your screen now. Okay. Now you are the host. Can you see my screen? Yes. Now how to proceed, uh, please, please guide me. Yes, yes. Now what you do that you expand this activity ID to all the levels. You go to the uh, view, click on the view. And uh, you uh, go to the bottom, so scroll down to the bottom, you will find the expansion button there. You click on expand all. Fine. Now you uh, come to this uh, button which is below the admin and you need to add one more button here. Just click click on the double arrow. No, uh, this uh, this human icon and uh, just come to the menu below it. Uh, there's click click on the double arrow which is on the right. Uh, click on the double arrow. Yes, yes, yes. You click on add or remove buttons and click on the resource. Okay, this is already selected. Now, where is this button? Oh, okay, this uh, button is uh, visible here because you know there is not much screen space, so that is why. So just click on this button below. Uh, yeah, just click on this uh, arrow, and then you see this button. Click here and click on this. Yes. Now your view will change. Okay. Okay. Now you just right click on the graph. Uh, right click on the graph area. And uh, click on the user preferences. Uh, no, I just close this. No, just right click on the graph uh, once again. Uh, one, one second. Um, Time scale, click on time scale. Let me see if the option is there. I want to just switch off this legend. Uh, date interval, two, three, calendar. No, not even this. Just click on cancel. Right click once again. Because I want to switch off this legend. Because this legend is sometimes not required. So, uh, so no, uh, on the graph area, right click on the graph area. Yes, yes, here. I want to switch off this legend resource usage profile option. So click on the resource usage profile option. Okay, so click on the graph tab on the top next to the data. Okay, just uh, uncheck the show legend checkbox uh, additional display options. Yeah, uncheck this. Yeah, click on OK. Now you can see the full graph. Okay. Now, do you see these red bars? Yes. Why these are red? Do you, uh, can you guess why these are red? Because uh, the requirement is more than what is available. Yes, absolutely. Now, there are two things which can happen. I mean, one of the two things. Either you are provided the resource or either you are not provided. If you are provided the resource, you can go to the resource tab and increase the capacity of this resource to 16 man hour per day. If you are provided. 
and if you are not provided then what then you have to make sure that the work is reduced on per day basis to match with the resource availability got the point okay if you make make it 16 so it means that your boss has given you the permission to use so make make it 16 and see that what does the graph look like now you first have to do f10 and f5 here okay now it has updated fine so it looks like this the over allocation is not there so it means that it is good you have been provided so your duration will not increase now suppose if you go to, go to the resource and make it 8 8 hour per day because your boss says look system analyst is a costly resource i cannot provide you to now you make it 8 slash d 8 slash d means that one person on per day basis now go to activities once again now what you have to do since you don't have much resource but you cannot plan like this why because if you reach that particular date of execution what will happen what will happen is that you will realize that you have planned to work for 16 man hours per day but only one person is available you have planned work for two people okay so you can't have a plan like that so what you will do you will level the resource so okay, can you show us that what is the finish date of the project right now from the top when you scroll to the top uh, row number 1 no on on the on on this uh, table area yeah just scroll so finish date is 5th of june right and move the divider bar towards the left so that we can see more of the graph yeah do it yes so you move it a little bit more towards the left so that we can see both the graph now if you look at your gain bar care carefully do you see this two bars overlapping requirement gathering and requirement analysis okay we had planned that we will uh, overlap the requirement gathering and requirement analysis by two days so that we can be a little bit time efficient now see there are two things that can happen in life if you have more time okay so you can spend less on per day basis but if you have more resources you can reduce the time of the project but since that is not happening because the company doesn't have that many uh, system analyst in the resource pool but they say that okay you will always get one resource of system analyst so you have to level the resource now there is a leveling button on the top okay so that button is represented by a balance sign if you don't find it so what you can do just uh, click on the tools expand it do you see this uh, level resources below the schedule the option so note the shortcut key shortcut key is shift plus f9 okay just click on the level resource click on this okay now uncheck this check box level all resources this is dangerous don't do it this okay in the software option is there it doesn't mean that it is good to use now you click on select resource you should do it on one by one basis okay one resource at a time now which one do you want to level system analyst okay check box select the check box click on okay okay now click on level now do you see that the red graph has come down now you do you see that this uh, this gant bar has moved requirement analysis has moved next to the requirement gathering so what has happened prima vera has reduced the daily work to 8 man hour per day for the system analyst now due to which what happened your your duration has increased now just go and have a look at the finish date 12th of june i believe now you are getting the point because if you have less people then you need to spend more time if you have more people to do the work on per day basis then you spend less time in doing the work so that is a very common sense that we know since the school days in the school we used to do some maths exercises like this 
so this is applicable here also right okay and now click on the prog programmer let's see what is with the programmer and uh, go and scroll through the entire project duration or you or you shrink the project duration so that you can see all at once okay so in march april you need more programmers okay so let's have a look what is the need per day basis how many do we need what is the peak demand okay what is the peak demand so how do you come to know what is the peak peak demand okay so there is a way to know what is the peak demand see i'll i'll show you um, there is a button which is not right now it is not visible uh this button has a graph okay this button has a graph so you go to the act activities this button no no you go to the activities i'll just show you just do this thing just click the left left button to the human finger left left button just below the d okay. of admin just below the d see the look at the word admin and just below the d there is a button Just, just, just click this. Now you expand the Gantt bar by clicking on the plus symbol. Hmm. Once more. Now just uh, scroll the bar towards the left. Uh, that's okay. That's fine. No, no, don't expand it. It is not necessary. Once you see one single ab abbreviation of the of the weekday that is enough that is good enough just click on the minus symbol click on the minus uh i think that is enough now you scroll toward the left yeah scroll scroll toward the left no no i mean scroll the whole thing toward the left yes yes now you you will start seeing the excel sheet like a figure it will show you 16 16 man hour on per day basis for the programmers so that is the peak that is the peak demand okay scroll a little bit more i i hope the programmer is selected on the left side display current project resources scroll a little bit more yes that is selected okay so on this row you continue to scroll till you see the programmer's uh, per day allocation per day basis allocation do you see the two hours because in the beginning we are utilizing this guy for 2 hours now you are starting to see 64 now scroll a little bit let's go on a little bit yeah 2 hours so we are utilizing this guy on the week starting march 12 for 8 hours this is fine now do you see this 64 now do you see this 72 okay so what is the meaning of this you need 8 people and on 9th april week you starting to need 9 people <laughs> so what is your reaction your reaction is that i should go to boss and tell boss i need maximum nine programmer on per day basis okay so boss has to give a permission boss says that okay you i am giving you the permission for a peak demand of 10 people so you you can utilize 10 people on any day given day if you need you can use one you can use maximum up to 10 so where would you go to resource. yes resource okay just go go to the resource but be, before going to the resource do one thing come back to the activities now you click on this red graph button that is the human with the red graph button yes now you will see the you will see you are seeing the corresponding graph now we want to see what is the effect of the change here because the red thing is red it will remain there but this black line will rise up now we are increasing the capacity Tatiana, you are getting my point. Ashwara, you are getting yes. my point. We are increasing. We are adding people. We are not reducing the work. See, when we reduce the work, if you push those graph down, it will expand horizontally. So, what what will happen? Your project finish date will be pushed towards the future. The right. Okay. Your your project finish date will increase. Okay. So, in this case, if since we are going to add people. 
so our project date will remain constant as right now so right now the project date is finished is is finished date is 12th of june it will remain 12th of june now you click on resource click on resource now once you have clicked on the resource now you reach the programmer and if boss says that you can have 10 people so how many how many man hours you get on per day basis 80 yes put 80 if you want to you utilize 10 people you don't have to ask but if you want to utilize more than 10 then you have to ask you can utilize one person half day you can utilize one person full day you can utilize two person on on per day basis so likewise you can use up to maximum 10 because you got the permission okay now done that press f10 f5 press f10 f5 save yeah you have to save it from here yes good then refresh also from here refresh data okay now you click on activities now see what happens to your graph do you see this black line has risen up so this black line represent the capacity which has been allocated now do you see that it is now parallel to 80 yes so you are having a peak demand of 72 man hours per day that is nine people you have a permission a blanket permission of 80 people per day but you are not going to use 10 people on per day because if you look at march 12 week week of the march 12 you are only utilizing only maybe one person or partly one person so that's fine because that is upon your need that is based upon your project need so if the project needs up to 10 people so you don't have to ask anybody so it will be resource level okay but sometimes when you have to plan you plan with more than because prema vera will not stop you it will not level your resource immediately it will first let you plan then it will show you that this resource is over allocated now you do whatever you want to do now you have to decide yourself whether you are able to get more resources or whether you are not able to based upon that you will level the you will either level the resource or the task if you don't have more people then you will level the task if you have more people then you will level the resource got my point if you bring down the task duration will increase if you bring down i mean if you see if you have less resource okay so it will increase the duration of the project but if you get the permission to use more resources so it means that your task can remain constant so your your finish date will remain constant so you know that is dependent upon real life situation so prima vera when you are creating a task so it will allow you to over utilize a resource and then before baselining it will let you decide so what you want to do so we do not set automatic leveling for resources because that is dangerous okay we will get a perfect project plan but we might not have all the resources that we need so we must look at the resources one by one and then talk to the resource manager talk to the boss talk to the sponsor and then negotiate and see what we can get and based upon that we will create the plan because i have told you in the beginning a project manager cannot create things out of thin air can you no. you can only do as much as the resources provided to you so now you have got this wonderful tool prima vera to predict exactly how much resource you need on per day basis based upon the task okay so you must make sure that you can pre plan and you can tell your other stakeholder through a very good interface that this is the one so you can take a screenshot and show it to your boss boss this is the maths here okay and this is what i need to do this task now you tell me what should i do okay because you can do only as much as the resources provided you your job is to plan and your job is to execute the project got my point guys yeah. now you look at the rented pc what's happening with that one do you have rented pc for all the days just just go through the entire length of the project and see if it is red if it is red then you increase it so you need rented pc so how many pcs you need 
one or six how many people you are training you are training six people six so if you are training six people so you need how many machine hours you need a maximum peak demand of 48 machine hours you will find it over uh, allocated yes okay if we expand it now now you will see that each day you need 48 machine hours but you have only eight machine hours uh, what is yellow and uh, this yellow is the baseline i will explain to you the baseline just don't worry about the yellow just look at this green and the red portion so green is the requirement and red and, uh, is the allocation so you either you increase the capacity or you reduce the requirement if you reduce the requirement then your duration will increase okay, okay. and if you increase the resource then your duration will remain constant which is a very good thing you know what is an ideal situation for a, pro a project manager when you get all the resources all the money all the equipments all the materials that you need and then you can do all the project without any kind of constraint so that is something that a, a project manager but that doesn't happen so that's why you need to do some planning so okay now what you need to do go to the resource and increase the capacity of the resource this uh, machine to 48 units per day 48 machine hours per day okay 48 slash d okay now f10 f5 and then look at activities if it has leveled out if it has le leveled out you are good to baseline the project yeah refresh data yes good activities yeah so do you see that you have increased the peak demand so which is fine so this looks good but, okay. uh, but this is under utilization no this is not under utilization you have to refresh your graph just click on the project manager then rented pc a uh, software has some bugs actually you know just click on the project manager then rented pc once again uh, but yeah, click on project manager then rented PC once again this is not under utilization so uh, 48 uh, just to click on the expand just click on that one the plus sign this is not under utilization actually for the machine you would order only the exact number otherwise you will be paying more rent so just look at it on the day to day basis the day to day basis the capacity should not be more than what is needed okay so you need how many you need 48 machine hours so you you are utilizing 48 machine hour for six days so how how, how many uh, green bars are there can you count how many green bars are there six six yeah you need for six days and how many uh, for uh, do you see that is so that is the total units the, on the right side on the left side that is the per day requirement so per day requirement is 48 units per day okay on the left side it is not under utilization so you need 48 you are using 48 so because if you hire six pc you utilize six pc but suppose if you are training six people would you hire 10 pc on per day basis no. yes exactly so you are getting it right you wouldn't hire any more equipment than you need okay but when you have a permission to use 20 people that doesn't mean that you will call 20 people and ask them to uh, to i mean to uh, occupy spaces on your workflow of your project no it's not like that so you have a permission to utilize 10 people 20 people so you don't have to bother about the uh, the over allocation below 20 up to 20 okay that is the idea so i believe that rest of the resources there are also leveled out have a look first you contract the top level project view in the gantt bar so that you can see the entire project view in one single window which is available this part window on the top so you click on the minus symbol on the top minus lens zoom out 
yeah zoom out yeah that is fine now you are seeing the no this is too small you expand a little bit i think this is giving you the complete view now you look at all the resources click on all the resources one by one if you see red then you level that out okay test engineer now you go to your boss you say boss i need two test engineer he says that okay you have two we can have two test engineers now what will you do if you want to increase the capacity of this resource yeah so you you will go to the resources tab then select this resource and then increase the per day capacity okay maximum units on per day basis so how many people you can have you can have two so two people generate how many man hours of work 16 man hours so you put 16 slash d okay so that is fine you have to save and refresh and then you will see that the capacity has increased and the red color is gone first you commit changes yes good okay because if you are working on a network so you must be doing this commit changes okay and then you click on the activities tab and then you will see the graph the graph has leveled out okay do you see that so these are the total units okay so you have permission to now if you want to see that what is the utilization on daily basis then you have to zoom zoom out on you have to click on the plus lens lens to expand it to so, and focus is on the daily basis so you come to single day click once more yes do you see that the peak demand is being met through the project duration okay it is never going above the peak demand so if it, if it is not going above the peak demand this is going to stay gray so any part of the portion of the bar which is going above the black line which is representative of the maximum capacity that is allocated to you it is going to show up in red anything below it will be green that is okay so whatever is your permission to use a resource if you use less or up to that it's cool okay so if you are having a time constraint then you might plan by utilizing more people then you have the permission then tell boss look boss if i don't get more people the project duration will expand and definitely boss will realize the importance of the client the project and he will immediately say yes okay you will have more people okay so then you can what go to sir, what is this green line uh, Line. So this green line is represented of the man hours. Do you see the sixteen on the left? Yes. So what is this sixteen? Sixteen man hours. So green line height of the green line is representing sixteen man hours, and the black line is representing the maximum capacity of this resource. Test engineer, you have got two. and if you add another person it will become 24 the black line will become 24 just go to the resources this yes, i'll just tell you go go to the resources so suppose boss gives you permission to utilize three people but you are not utilizing three people here you are utilizing only two so you make it 24 by d so 24 by d means in the max units time that if you need in any particular case to utilize three people on per day basis you can do it you have the permission okay make it 24 by d yeah fine now you commit and save i mean commit and refresh now look at the ac activities Do you see this black line where it stands? So black line represents the twenty-four man hour. That is the 
capacity that you have in your resource pool or within your permission okay but you are utilizing much below it so that's fine that's okay you are not wasting man hours actually those people you are not calling them into your project so they are in their source pool so they might be working on some other project but if you need so on demand you you can get it okay because that is guaranteed to you it is just like the it is just like the internet bandwidth see if you subscribe to any fiber based uh, broad, broadband provider you get 40 mbps right but do you use 40 mbps at all times no. suppose what is the sanction load capacity of the residence it is 5 kilowatts okay 5 kilowatts is the sanction load capacity of a residence right in india i am talking about india so you can go up to 5 kilowatt now what happens if you utilize more than 5 kilowatt what will happen your main mcv will come down do you get my point if you wish you can switch off all the lights in your home 0 kilowatt you can use one say air conditioning unit so it will be 1.2 kilowatt or 2 2 kilowatt you can use two acs two kilowatt you can use three so you will have to level the load but if you go beyond a certain load then what will happen your mcv will trip because the legal limit is 5 kilowatt okay so it is just like that here in the project also so if you need to utilize more then you have to seek permission okay so you can go up to the maximum peak demand for each resource based upon your understanding with your resource manager and your sponsor or your boss okay so when we plan the project and if the constraint of the time is too high so i might show utilization of more resources so that my project finish date is within the given constraint then i will talk to my resource manager and boss and tell them look i need five people but my permission is three people i need to get two more people if you don't give me two more people i will just level the project plan and the finish date will go beyond the given constraint or the agreement with the client so that will happen at your responsibility not at my responsibility because it is pure maths okay so i cannot do any miracle i cannot create man hours out of thin years got my point so guys you are agreeing with me you have to do this maths before you start the project and show it to your boss or a resource manager those who are controlling the resources so that your plan is realistic and when you baseline it is it is reliable okay so now i will switch over to my screen and then i will show you that how i baseline the project okay so okay guys so so do so do you uh, see my screen now yes i yes. will see okay now i'll show you that where is the baseline see the baseline is basically nothing but a snapshot of the entire project which is saved if you want to do the baseline right now everybody agrees that okay our project plan is good and we have given all the inputs and everybody's inputs have been taken care of and everybody has the commitment to this plan so everybody says that okay we are committed to 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 this plan and we will do it according to the schedule here now what do we do that uh, we go to the project do you see one option here maintain baseline yes so i click on this then i click on add it it is asking me what would you like to do save a copy of the current project as a new baseline and go to the project to new baseline so i use the first option so the second option i will teach you later save a copy now what it will do it will take a snapshot of the project and save it okay and it will give a suffix b1 do you see this icon this is the scale okay this is the because the baseline is a measuring scale okay and i say close okay now i go to the option project then assign baseline then i say utilize this as the baseline in project baseline and primary baseline i use i click on okay now the baseline bar is not visible here what i will do i'll go to the 
bars and switch on the baseline i say switch on the primary baseline and primary baseline use a thicker bar so that it is visible okay it is significantly visible i say apply do you see this ye yellow line ka, uh, coming below do, do you see this yes on my screen now uh, i'll just show you something uh, suppose if i increase or reduce uh, do you see this there is something happening here do you see that what's happening here on my screen yes because the baseline is constant okay the baseline is constant so the baseline will stay put at its place and everything else will shift okay so that you can un un understand that what's happening so the purpose of the baseline is to show now this baseline is not only about the time so the baseline is uh, also about the the cost also even the cost baseline is established okay so what i have to do i have to level the resources here again okay i have to level so that everything comes back to the baseline now this is the baseline now the even the cost baseline is established here okay now let's look at the base dl project cost and the budgeted total cost and then variance do you see the variance right now is zero now if i am going to track the project now this is going to show me the variance here okay show me the variance if you see this see see this column variance bl project total cost 000 okay now this is my budgeted now if i am going to do this job i might take more money i might take less money the difference will show now let me tell you something about baseline baseline is actually a a project copy okay i can create one more copy of this project see i say add save a copy of the current project as new baseline you say yes now this is the baseline 2 or baseline or it says b3 you make it b2 so that you know it is baseline 2 do you see see this b2 now b2 i am not using so basically what i am going to do that i am going to basically uh trying to use it as a backup copy okay i am trying to use the b2 as a backup copy now so let me you have uh, level resource Be because you know sometimes when i am doing the baselining what happens is that the resource leveling gets disturbed okay so i have to make sure that i use only one baseline so if i am switching baseline so this may get disturbed but, but let me show you the what is the utility of another baseline see the baseline can be used to compare the project at different point of time suppose if i am having multi year project i might say baseline 1 i will use it in the first year so let me say i am having 3 year project so the first year of the project is 2018 so then what i will do there are certain cost which changes in the year 2 so i in the january of 2019 i create baseline 2 then i use baseline 2 because i cannot use the last year rates to compare the current actual rates so i might do this and there is another utility of, of the baseline now let me show you it's a very beautiful utility see do you see this button where my cursor is restore now if i go to the projects okay so this is my this is my project software development if i click on the restore button it will help me create another copy and this copy will appear here so right now for the software project there are two copies one is the master copy one is the actual copy which i am using so i'll have a third copy also if i restore the baseline okay i go to the activities i go to the project maintain baselines then i select the b2 2019 and then i say restore 
okay guys just watch this first of all it is asking a question are you sure you want to unlink the selected baseline from current project and make them separate projects i say yes because you know baseline is nothing but a snapshot of the full project it's a full snapshot everything resource task rates everything you say yes now this b2 has disappeared from here do you, do, do you see this it it has disappeared do you notice that can you repeat, uh, can you repeat once again what? yeah first i will show you that where it has gone it has gone to the projects here do you see this copy b2 yes 2019 now if if you wish you can add this back as a baseline you go to the project maintain baseline okay then you say add you say convert another project to a new baseline for the current project convert another project now what you can do you can pull the 2019 which is now in the list of the project back into the baseline list see this okay now which one do you want as a baseline just see i am going to pull in this one 2019 do you see the one that i have selected do you see the rectangle now this will be pulled in as a baseline i say plus so it is pulling that project in as a baseline do you see the number of the baseline b1 b2 those and this is gone from the list of the project here it's it's gone okay now you can you can create multiple copies of the project for safe keeping you can create b3 you can create b4 then you can restore them as multiple copies of the project okay you can have internal backup and you can have external backup internal backup means that it is staying within the da database and external backup means that you are exporting as xcr file okay how do you export you click on file export so this is external backup so if you want to create internal backup of the project you can create a baseline you can restore the baseline and you can create as many copies of the project that you want for your own safe keeping for your own record what's the point Uh, i I'll, i'll just tell you that what is the utility of this see a project maintain baseline you say restore the baseline you restore it okay then what do you do after the restoration you go to this copy and click on the name and you type here you say after di discussion with full team on so you can put in today's date so what is today's date yeah so 26 right so you know this is a copy of the project which is saved here but suppose if you make any changes on 30th or 31st then you can put another co copy here now the benefit is that if you have any bad copy or something you can go to the last good copy so guys do you agree with me yes so one baseline yes. you will need for comparison when you execute the project right so what do you do you guys play with this and uh, in uh, actually what we have to do in india we have to take our dinner okay so three of us i think we need to have our dinner we will be back in another half an hour so atatin i think it's your lunch time or something at your end yes it is <laughs> it is lunch time so you have your lunch we'll have our dinner uh, today we might have a little bit extended session please don't mind because you know i have to give you the complete understanding okay after this we will come and we will do the tracking of the project and then reporting so uh, right now it is 10:43 pm indian standard time so i think we are good to meet at 11:20 right indian standard time yeah. yeah so can you see your hour? can i see your hour please again uh it is 10 10:43 10:43 here is and you said 3 minutes yeah 30 minutes from now how much will that be uh, that will be like 11:20 pm yeah it's going to be 1:43 for me okay yeah fine yeah fine, fine. so uh, let's meet after having lunch and dinner okay Thank you. Okay.
<coughs> Hello. Yeah, I am back. Uh, Hello, what? Hello, guys, I'm back. So, you have any question? Hello. Hello. Uh, so you have any question till now? Not at the moment. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, do you know how to create the baseline? And when you would create a baseline? Yes. Okay. See, baseline is something which is a measuring scale. And you would create it at a point when you are very sure that whatever we have planned is good enough. Now, it might happen that sometimes that uh, some task might yet not be clear, but you need to start the project. Okay, so you are very near to the starting date, so you can baseline it. So after you have got the details of the remaining task, you can baseline the project once again, or you can update the existing one also. Okay. So you can do a lot of things with the baseline. You can basically keep the baseline as a backup. So you in Microsoft, in, in, uh, in Microsoft project, you have got 11 baseline, but in Primavera, you can create as many baselines as you want. So that is limited by the database size only. All the data you can accommodate in the database. So that is about the baseline. Now this line, this yellow line, which appears here, you know, sometimes it might appear by default also, but uh, that is not the baseline. So baseline is something which is constant. So sometimes you see a line which continues to expand with the changes. Like if you go to this, okay. If you go to the project, assign baseline. So you remove this current project, current project. Now you will st still see this yellow line, but if you, increase or de decrease a certain duration so the the baseline expands with it you know that's not any real sort of a baseline so the baseline is basically it is created after you are sure that you have only as many as resources only as many as tasks which are real so it has to be based upon some real data so the real way in which the project will be executed so that baseline will be utilized to then, then measure the project. Okay. So you basically can create a baseline from here, project, maintain baseline. So first you create a baseline, you can create as many as baseline. So, you know, it will give the serial number according to the previous baselines created. If you add one more, it will do B5 and B6 and so on. Now you can, after creating a snapshot of the baseline, snapshot of the current project you can utilize any one of these as a baseline and if you want to restore you can restore these copies as a snapshot of the current project so that will get restored in the list of the projects here so do you see the list of the projects here so you can restore them here okay so that is going to create a backup copy so you can have as many as backup copies as you wish like if you look at this software development this is master copy this is after discussion with team and software development so you know you can have basically a baseline even when you are having discussions with different engineering groups so with each engineering group 
you want to restore a i mean you want to take a snapshot of the good copy with the discussion so you can mark a fresh copy after the discussion so you first save the baseline then you restore the baseline and then you mark it that you had a discussion with this xyz engineering team then abc engineering team then def engineering team so you can create multiple copies of the baseline okay so the baseline is utilized to measure so what we are going to do so right now we are uh, break off for today and we will continue tomorrow so what i want you to do to i want you to be able to make copies of the baseline and restore it so just practice it so you go to the project maintain baseline then you say add baseline okay so then you see that what is the effect of restoring so you say restore baseline yes and you say restore so when you do restore you will find that this baseline is here so this is not this is not a baseline but this is a absolute the identical copy of the project which is current so if you open the project we will find that this is the b6 copy and this is the project which is open now if you close it okay you close this tab and if you wish you can restore it also so you go to this and you say this is the project that you are working on okay you say open project and if you go to the project you say maintain baseline so you say add either you can create a snapshot of the current copy or you can bring back the project which you had restored earlier into the list of the baselines here convert and the project to a new baseline of the current project you say okay so you pick up the copy which you want to be restored as baseline so this will go from the list of the project and it will be added into the current projects list of baseline you say plus and it will appear here it is it is being brought in okay so this small little wheelie goes on so now it is brought in now this will be here in the list of the baseline and when you want to start your project you assign one of them any one of them you choose b1 b4 b5 based upon which you would like to measure the project okay so the best practice is that we stick to one baseline uh, for the entire duration but sometimes due to the long nature of the projects so we can change a baseline on yearly basis due to the change in the rate of resources sometimes there is a change in the project plan so what we do we create another baseline and we utilize the baseline for a certain duration then we make some changes in the project plan we use so you know but frequently changing the baseline is not advised but what is advised that in case you don't have any information and if you are updating the project plan later so that's okay in that case you can create another baseline to measure the work to be done based upon real data so that's what we do with the baseline so tomorrow what we will do that we will utilize the baseline to track the project and report upon the projects so is that fine guys for today yes okay so try to export try to restore try to create baseline so try to see that what you can do with that if you come across any new portions or any ideas just share with me and i will explain to you okay so we Perfect. break off for today and we uh, tomorrow we will do hands on tracking the project and we will do the reporting okay so we will create customized reports and lots of them Perfect. Okay. Good. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you. Uh, sir, actually, I will be traveling tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow, what you so, can do that uh, the the training recording will be shared. So you can talk to the coordinator, and then on Monday you can access the recording and you can learn from the recording. Okay. But after I will join the recording, if I have time in between, ah, that, I will. Ah, that. Ah, that is fine. If you are sitting in a very stable place with, I mean, stable internet connection, so you just join in. and in case you have question even after the training you can send me a mail you will get the answer within 24 hours so that's not a problem okay and you will get the recording also okay okay fine thank you thank you good night
Hello? Hi, good morning. So, guys, can you hear me? Yes, how are you? Yes. Ah, yes, yes, I am fine. Okay. So, how was the exercise? So, how did it uh, go? Oh. Hello. So, I am asking, how, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, uh, I tried it out and I, I mailed you what I've done. Okay, okay. So uh, what we will do that, uh, uh, let me see how many people are here. So let's wait for one more person. Do you have any questions? Because, you yes. know, I, I, I want to discuss in the group uh, the common questions. And if you have any uh, other questions, please go ahead. I had really trouble and I look for for my question in in. Uh, Google and uh, I had very hard time applying the lag. The yeah. lag time. Okay, okay. Hard time applying the lag time. No, lag time is not very difficult. Uh, uh, yes, I know, but I couldn't find. And the other problem that I have, I don't know why mm -hmm. I missed or what I missed, uh, but uh, I couldn't. Even if I if I wrote mm -hmm. the, the the relation. Mm -hmm. Finish to finish to start and all that kind of things. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have all my activities start the first January. All of them. I I don't know what I did uh, wrong. Okay, okay, no no problem. So let me do the thing. Let me share your screen, and uh, uh, one second. Ah oh, yes, I have started the class. Ah oh, yes, yes, good evening. I have started the class. Okay. So uh, let me do this thing. Let me um, uh, share your screen and then help you out from there. It's just a small little adjustment that you have to do. I think mm -hmm. you, are, you are nearly there. So I'm going to g make you the host. Okay. So Tatiana. Yes. So you are the host and uh, share your screen. And one by one, tell me your problem. And the others also look at the problem because some of the problems would be common. Okay, so it's good that you have done something. So now you will learn. Because you know, when we struggle to do something, we we create a sort of slots in our mind where we expect some information to come in. Okay, so it's good. So now you share your screen and show us your project and how it didn't work for you. Okay, so good. So what I'm saying that you have done a lot of work. You are just a couple of steps away. Okay. Now do this thing. Uh, on the top, you uh, do you see a small clock icon with a triangle on the top? On on the top bar, just in the middle, just in the middle, somewhere in the middle, you uh, see a clock. Clock. Do you see a clock here in the middle, just below your name, Tatiana, or just above the predecessor column? If you if you well, um, just move your Here, cursor. okay yes click on this yes o okay okay now click on the options uh, I think I had showed to you three four times yes okay. I know <laughs> okay now now everybody please note see by default when we have installed Primavera for the first time by default it does not schedule the 
the time automatically why is it so let me tell you it is a it has a historic reason because early because primavera is from the times when computers were very slow and this was this being a database uh, software this used to take some time for the data to go into the database and come back with the updates on the screen and uh, then uh, it was like that people would first set up the relation and they will press the f9 button and go out for lunch or or for a cup of tea and then it will create the schedule but now it is not like that so what you should do is schedule automatically when a change affects date okay now okay. you should, now you click on the close close button on the right now click and on the schedule yeah now you now you see it has been scheduled now just do one thing if you look at the top there is a plus uh, lens button lens lens button just expand it to till you start seeing the day individual day just uh, press once again yeah press once uh, yes yes now you are seeing the days yeah okay okay fine so now see you have done it you are almost there so uh, 1st january 30th may i think your dates uh, dates are nearly correct i mean you are absolutely right so your everything is fine so we need to do a little bit of adjustment and see that uh, whether you have entered it correctly according to the data or not okay, okay. that's fine so do you see the, see the finished data date as 30th of may i think you are nearly there i need to just only uh, tell you a little bit of thing okay let me do this thing let me look at your calendar go to the enterprise and click on the option calendars and the calendar that you have six days learn calendar good so click on the button modify okay now we will look at that how you have configured the weekdays now in the weekdays just click on the gray area i mean the light gray so on the weekdays you are doing from 9 to 6 and you are giving a break time 1 to 2 click on monday yes that's fine very good and uh, that is the detailed work hours per day so fine now let's uh, look at your work week just click on the work week the oh, uh, ha that's sorry. fine you yeah, are fine let's see how you have uh, configured your work week monday then tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday is totally off great absolutely fine click on okay yes i think you have understood now click on the time periods click on the time periods button Yes, so eight hours per day, so forty eight because it's a six day. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, a six day week, so it will be eight multiplied by six, forty eight, and then month is fourteen multiplied by four, and then the year will be approximately one ninety two multiplied by two three zero four. Okay, mm -hmm. click on the okay. Yeah, that's fine. So your calendar is absolutely fine. Now, in the month of January, twenty sixth January is an off day, and last Saturday of every month is an off day. Absolutely fine. That let's see on Feb. Yeah, February last Saturday of March twentieth. March is uh, the given holiday. Thirty first is the last Saturday. Next, April thirteenth is a given holiday. Twenty eighth is the last Saturday. I believe the rest of you are also observing it. And next May, also last Saturday. So there is no holiday in the month of May. In the month of June, no holiday. Only the last Saturday. Next, July, and the next. August fifteenth of August is a given holiday. Now, now you know why we are going ahead with the entire year, though. Even though the, uh, I mean, the project is finishing in the month of month of May. Now, let me tell you one thing. See, you can use this calendar in multiple projects. Mm -hmm. now, what, now, what happens is that one project may be six months, another project might be just one year. So mm -hmm. you know, it always is. It is always better to have more holidays. i mean more span of uh, the calendar which is covering the actual holidays than the length of the project than the anticipated length of the project why because if the holidays are extra then the length of the project it really doesn't hurt because your last date will be calculated correctly last date of the project mm -hmm. what my point but suppose if your project is one year and you have entered the holidays only for 6 months then what will happen so you will get a incorrect finish date and you will tell this date to your boss and your boss in turn will tell it to the client and to the whole world yeah. <laughs> now later when you discover your mistake then you will update your boss then your boss will update to the client and the client will <laughs> get messed up okay so that gives a very false uh, commitment
Okay, yes. so that's why you see, I'm not only teaching you Primavera, I'm teaching you Primavera plus project management. Okay, yeah. because I'm myself a project manager and a project management consultant also. So I, so I have to be very careful with this thing because I run my own consultancy because I'm creating schedule for people and they trust this schedule to be absolutely right. If not absolutely right, maybe up to the extent of uh, say 98%. I, I should. Mm -hmm. be right. Okay, now this is all based upon the information. Now, what they tell me, I don't trust that. You know, I cross verify that. I ask them again. So, guys, have you told me the complete holidays as per your company policy? That is my question. You know, these are certain standard questions which I keep in my mind. And is there any other holiday which you plan within the company for any other purpose? Okay. So, after everything is known, I create a calendar. I create a longer calendar than the pro anticipated project duration. If I anticipate that the project will be for two years, I create a calendar for three years. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't matter. A little bit of extra a calendar always helps. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't. But if the calendar is short of the project period, then it gives a wrong finish date. So everybody's getting my point? Yes. So this is a good yes. project management practice and this is basically impl implemented by Primavera. So Primavera helps us. So one feature that I miss here in Primavera is that, uh, see, there is a given ho holiday, 2nd of October. Now, there is no place where I can mention that what is the purpose. Okay, so that you have to note separately. Okay, in Microsoft Project, you can write down uh, along with the date that what is the purpose of the holiday, why it is being given. So that's fine. So click on OK here. Yeah, click on Close. Okay, just to be sure that you have re rescheduled it correctly. See, there is another button which maps to the clock icon. That is F9. Just press F9 here on your screen on your i mean on your laptop f9 yeah f9 button yes so you are getting the same option okay so if you click on the schedule with your mouse so you can reschedule so now you are absolutely sure that your project has started on first of jan and finished on 30th of mm -hmm. okay now uh so this looks good so we will compare so we'll compare the cost also so you have written predecessor detail column so that's really good. So this looks fine to me. So I think that you are perfectly fine. Okay. The only thing that were that you were that you were not aware of that you have to have the automatic setting uh, done. Okay. Because it is not there by default. So note it as a lesson learned that each time you start a project, check for this setting, mm -hmm. and if it is not <laughs> set, so set it. Because okay. You know, yes. You, see, we are using very fast computer these days, so we don't have to worry about the recalculation time. Because uh, earlier days, it used to take some time and people used to do it only after they have entered at least a 50 or a 100 tasks. Only after that, they will press the F9 button. So these days, you don't have to worry about that. Even if you add one task, let it recalculate the project and give you a realistic finish date. Now, if you look mm -hmm. at the top, okay, so uh, can you do one thing? Can you collapse the uh, view to second level? So do you know how, how to do it? Just, just no, 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 no. Just, oh. just go, go, go to, go to the view. And do you see this uh, button collapse to? And choose level two. Now, do you see this? Now, this is your work breakdown structure. So, this is your second level. So, second level shows you that that is the start date of the project, and then, then this is the project complete on thirtieth of May. So project mm -hmm. complete has its own group. It has just only one single milestone, nothing there. There is no task inside 4.8. Can you go to the last WBS and expand it? This 4.8? Yes. So, you know, this, this is a finished milestone. And finished milestone, purpose of the finished milestone, and keeping it within the group, the purpose is that, that if it is going to happen in the last, it should stay there at the last. And if, mm -hmm. if it is not put into this group, now what will happen? It will go to the top. And that will give a wrong structure. So just to make it look a little bit aesthetic, because on the GAN chart, it will appear on the rightmost side. Now, this is your, I mean, this is your big picture. So, you know, uh, clients and your boss is interested to look at this level. They are not interested in the nuts and bolts. They want to see the big things. Okay. So this is the level of the plan in which they are interested to see. And if you want to print something, what is the shortcut? Can you tell me? This one? Uh, you can shortcut, shortcut. Control, uh, control, P. control P. 
Uh, let's see that uh, what is the view that you get in control P. So how how does it look? No, uh, no, not this one. Control P is directly going. So so just cancel it and click on the print preview. So that is the right one. So that is the right icon next to the printer. Ah. No, on the top next one. Yeah. So this is showing you the sheet. Okay. So mm -hmm. how, how many pages are there? One or two? Let's see what is there on the next page. Fine. So this is giving you the top level. So this is the view. That your client or boss would be interested because they don't want to see what you are doing in between, because you know what do the bosses usually say? Bosses say, "Don't tell me how hard you work. Tell me what you achieved." Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, scroll to the next, I mean the previous screen. So you know these are all your achievements. So what you will achieve? You will achieve the requirement definition by twenty fourth of January. You will achieve the planning by second of February. You will achieve the design by 27th. You will finish the program. So they are interested in this, and they are going to have either all of them or some of them linked to the what payments. Yeah, so they, are, they are the major milestone because when the client is seeing some progress, he would be interested to pay, and that's where the commitment will go from you to your boss and from your boss to the client. So this is how businesses work. Okay, so okay. your boss might be having multiple project managers if it is a big company. So you know it becomes very complex. So he has to take care of multiple projects. He has to make sure that he has a snapshot of the project plan from each of the project manager, and mm -hmm. all the commitments are being done or it is going in a smooth pace. If they, uh, I mean, uh, for the deliverable. Okay, so okay. at at each of the Uh, I mean, the milestone. There is a deliverable which is at, uh, attached. So, what is the deliverable at the end of the design? It may it it is the design specification. Yeah. What is what is the deliverable at the end of the training? So, there will be staff on the client side who who Emmanuel. has the training for the for the product. So mm -hmm. they know how to use it. Suppose if you created net banking software, so can I give net banking software to the bank people without training their people? Will that be useful if I don't give the training? No. So training is a deliverable. Okay. So training is called the intangible deliverable because the main deliverable is the software. So I have to make sure that I have everything in the plan because if I don't put it in the plan, if I keep it in my hand, and this this might not get done. So what is in the plan is what something will get done. So keep it in mind. So what is okay. the what is the best practice? See, you might use a, any other software also. But the best practices will remain the same. Do you agree or not? Yes. The best practice is that put all the task into the project plan. That is the best practice. Okay, and push the software to the maximum. So now let's see that how you can print an XPS file. XPS file is a very lightweight file which you can share with the others. Show them the plan. So just go ahead and click on the printer button. on the top yes yes now click on this uh, down arrow this uh, drop down and uh, i believe you take adobe pdf you take adobe pdf uh, though i expected to see the xps also click on okay yeah uh, so yes yeah good so it is printing it's thinking yeah it thinks a lot because it is pdf <laughs> but if it is xps xps doesn't think much okay it just prints so it uh. is, it happens very quickly so because you know there's a third party software it is in yeah. done okay so do you see this do you see the next page just click on the next page next scroll yeah yes so you can share this soft copy with many people okay so mm -hmm. they can expand it also they can see it in details click on the plus sign it has also in uh, yeah okay so you can see a better clarity okay in this so you can print in xps also so this is the soft copy print out now if you send it to 10 people they might prefer to keep it soft or they might take a hard copy so if they take a hard copy it is their choice what is convenient for them you should always print a soft copy first now this mm -hmm. is the perspective now you close it and let's come back to the plan okay now your your plan is good so we will fine tune it and i will share something more with with you guys so this looks good so you have done a very good job okay so so just Thank keep you. in mind how to keep i mean how to 
keep the schedule uh, more automatic okay so this is okay. this is the first thing you should check for whenever you start you're putting your task because scheduling is the core i mean uh, expertise of a project manager so i'm switching back to my screen okay so i think uh, uh, you will have to, okay now i'm sh sharing my own screen now just look what is the difference between your screen and my screen so there is a difference of hardly 5 days okay so we can figure this out okay uh, what about you uh, ashwarya okay uh, so himanshu is there also yeah ashwarya you have any problem no no it was fine for me so uh, do you see any difference here from my i am not saying that mine is correct mine can be wrong also so what i am saying is that so i have displayed the calendar for each and every task why i have done that because you know sometimes it might happen that uh, i might st start with a different calendar and then i might realize that i am using a different calendar i might change the calendar later but some of the task might still have the previous calendar this is just to make it sure that okay so this is the calendar is applied which is on which is the default calendar i mean the calendar which is for this project so 6 days a week that is applied on each and every task here okay this is just to display the the calendar which is applied now what about you himanshu so uh, do you have any problem uh actually i was facing one problem that uh, when i uh, i was doing this uh, linking of uh, relationship hmm then the activities they uh, the the sequence the sequence of the activities mm -hmm. was changed automatically yeah so and, that uh, should change yeah after linking this should change just just watch this thing see do you see my screen do you see see my screen himanshu yeah yeah to see what i'm going to do i'm going to change the relationship from ss to uh, say finish to start do you see that it has changed so, so that's that, fine So, so actually, the chronological order changed automatically. Ha, huh, yes. And I'm not able to correct that. Yeah, so that is supposed to change. The chronological order will change. So this is based upon the relationship. So let's see that how much it is different from mine. So what I'm going to do that I'm going to set the level to two. Okay. Now let us see it one by one. So everybody has taken the project start date as first. No, let me first match up the calendar. You know, let's start from the calendar. so that will be the best so let me start from 1st of january 2018 okay so this is the calendar and let me show you the time periods first so is the time period configured like this yes okay is the work week configured like this 8 8 and sunday 0 yes. and 18 yes, yes. uh, what about you uh, ashwarya please confirm yeah that's what i did and what about you uh, tatiana is it configured like this yes the work weeks uh, sunday zero rest of the days are are uh, eight hours yeah correct okay great fine so let me go into the detail of the day now this is the week the week is configured like this i mean each day so sunday all hours are z i mean non working monday and monday till saturday it is like this configured like this so the first shift is starting at 9 am okay from 9 am the work starts and goes on till 1 pm and from 1 pm till 2 pm it is the lunch time do you see the lunch time here in the dark gray so you know this is for each of the day so how did i set this i selected from monday till saturday and then i said this okay then i said okay so is it fine for all uh, i mean is it the same for all everybody has done it the same way yes yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, you please confirm himanshu please check your yes, calendar yes. yes okay great so you have uh, con configured it in the, the same way okay now the calendar has certain holidays which are declared holidays so declared is the 26th so you everybody is for 26th of january as the declared holiday and 27th which is the last saturday as per the exercise 
so you know the company is not a five day week but the company says that on every last saturday of each month we will give you an a weekend off okay weekend off is 27 so 26 is the given holiday so let's look at the month of feb so i'm just holding here so please confirm if it is the same let me check yeah so please synchronize guys please uh, synchronize with me i am just holding up here okay i'll start from the month of jan so please bring up your calendar which you have applied on this project and have a look so that we can discuss that why it is so and not only that you correct yourself but you should ask me a question okay that why it is so so i'll just tell you that why it is so because you have to do this as uh, sort of practically so you won't have something to refer to it is good that you practice well so when you create your own plan so you would go through the checklist in your mind that first i have to set up the calendar then within the calendar I have to set up the weekday then i have to set up the the each day of the week that what is the working schedule from 9 am to and all that what is the timing each day and then you have to put in the non working day so non working day will be your weekend and your holidays okay declared holidays so everybody has come here yes okay so is the month is the month of uh, february matched up is, is it the same for all yes it is okay i'm going to march march is same okay april mm -hmm. may june yes. july august september october november december okay so you know whenever i am working on any kind of uh, project i create multi year calendar so what do i do for the next year's holidays because they have not been declared by the hr department now what i do that i basically you know you would observe that certain holidays they are constant each year like new year day or your christmas day or your may day if you are observing that in your country so you can use the same dates every year so you you put these dates as the holiday for for the uh, for the calendar okay in the calendar so you can plan a calendar for 2018 2019 2020 because if you are creating a plan which might go up to two and a half years starting from 1st of january 2018 so it would it would go till the mid of 2020 so i would create the calendar for entire 3 years so in which i will put in the holidays now certain holidays are based upon uh, the lunar calendar like uh, religious uh, uh calendars 
okay so these are based upon the lunar calendar and lunar calendar is changing each year okay so you know each year it is different from the solar calendar like the muslims and the hindus they are basing their religious uh, holidays upon the lunar calendar so what do i do that uh, i put the same dates for each year now the number of the holidays is same so you know that's a policy okay so number of the holidays will remain the same so what what happens when i move to the next year say i have started my project in 2018 and i have moved to say 2019 so what do i do i only adjust the religious holidays which are shifting each year based upon the lunar calendar okay because uh, hindu uh, festivals they shift each year okay either 15 days ahead or 15 days later so they are not constant so they are based upon the lunar calendar but the number of the total holidays is constant so uh, you might in future might face a situation where you have a multi year project a project which runs into 3 years so how do you predict your finish date okay so you know that as a company policy the company gives you say 10 holidays per year so you enter all the 10 on the same days and when you enter the next year just shift the dates to the actuals and your finish date will remain real okay finish date will be the same so it is not like that it's not like a kid who is changing the dates each time you are talking to the kids so you know your calculation for the finish date will be correct okay so now what do you do you say okay and okay and close it now let us see that how your your and my dates are different or or the match up so first we will do the scheduling part so then we will come to the money part also and the resource part okay so requirement definition starts on 1st of jan and finishes on 25th of jan so anybody differs no i just okay just and what about you uh, ashwarya yours is same and himanshu yours is same or yeah, different not same. yours is same yeah, ashwarya Uh, no. Yeah, I, I'm not using my laptop right now. I'm just taking notes, but I did the same date. Oh, it's you're not using your laptop. I mean, <laughs> that is blasphemy. <laughs> 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 you're not using your laptop. <laughs> so please do. I'm logging you... through my tablet. Uh, my okay. laptop is given for repairing. So, oh. but I did the Primavera project. I oh, mailed okay. it to you. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, I have to do this thing. So how do I do this? Okay, I'll just take it up. Uh, so uh, just Himanshu, you just have a look because you know. First, I will look at the top level. If you say there is a difference, I'll expand it. Now tell me, Himanshu, is it different? Tell me, uh, Tatiana, is it different? Is end date? Hmm. Duration and end date. Say uh, for the requirement uh, definition. So is it the same or different? If it is the same, yeah. it will move to the next one. Same. Same. same? same. And uh, Tatiana, uh, uh, Tatiana, your for you is it the same? Uh, I'm looking that I have a mistake in the in the B four seven training that says that is starting yours saying that is starting on March six. And mine is saying that it started on January first. I'm trying to find out what I no, did no. wrong. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about requirement definition. Is it, is it starting on first of Jan? Ah, yes. And it is finishing on twenty fifth of Jan. The first one, yes. Okay, so this is correct. So, so is it the same? The eleven days, eight days, two days, one day, two day, and these are the dates which are correct. So, oh, if okay. these dates are matching, then let's move on to the planning. Now, tell me that what's uh, Uh, up, up with planning. Is it ten days, starting on twenty ninth of Jan? Yeah. And finishing, yes. yeah, and finishing on eighth of Feb. Yes. Great. Now let us look at the design. Is the design starting on ninth of Feb? Yes. And finishing on fifth of March. Yes. Uh, which one? Sorry, ninth of Feb. Design, design, yes. which is which is the one which is uh, yeah the selected 4. one. 3. Yeah, yeah, one point three. Okay, and uh, programming. It is forty four days duration. Yes. Yes. Starting on sixth of March. Yeah. Finishing on thirtieth of April. Yeah. Yes, Tatiana, yes. tell me. Yes. Yes. Great. Testing is it starting on first of May? 
Testing. And finishing on 4th of June? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. And delivery is just one day task. Is it, it is starting and finishing on 5th of June? Yes. yes. Great. And training is starting on 6th of June and finishing, I mean 6th of March and finishing on 4th of June? No, I have yes. a problem there. Okay. So, so I'm going to expand it. Okay, so now we will look at the relationships. So what I'm going to do that I'm going to switch off the, the, the calendar column. I assume that you have the same. Uh, so I'm going to remove the calendar column, actual start, actual finish, remaining duration, schedule complete. Okay, now what I'm going to do that I'm going to insert the pre predecessor. Okay, so that you can see that who, which are the predecessors. So I'm going to find the predecessor. See how I do it. Predecessor. I just write a part of it. Then I find predecessor details. Okay. Predecessors. Okay. So I can see who, which task are the predecessors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Say okay. And th these are the predecessors. So do you see the predecessors as the same? A1170. A1170 would be um, which one would be that a1170 will be will be design a1170 will be approvals so as soon as the uh, approval start after the uh, approvals they start the the training yep i fix my okay i found my mistake yes okay great so good so you know in real life, you won't have a plan to look at. It's not that your boss will give a plan, then he will tell you make a plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here we are learning. So you have something to refer to. Now, how to do it in real life? Now, listen to me carefully. In real life, you must have some sort of peer review, if that is possible. What is peer review? So I ask another person who has got the same experience as mine, knowledge as mine, to look at my plan. So he or she might find a mistake. Okay, so that's what we call as peer review. Then you should ask your team members to look at their tasks. Okay, especially include your team leaders, team leaders, okay, team leaders, they are very intelligent people and you just have to motivate them so that they also understand the planning part because you know, they are going to help you execute the plan. Got my point. So they might be able to find something out of six sequence, something not related, and then you will be able to fix the schedule. So fixing the schedule is very important. First of all, be focused on the the schedule. So you know, what is the most important thing when a project? So you should know the complete requirement then scope. So we assume that requirement and scope is complete. Now we are doing the scheduling based upon the assumption of the fact we know all our tasks to be done. Okay. Now scheduling is dependent upon two things. Keep, keep in mind duration and relationship. Get it right? Duration. Because if the task have more duration, project will be longer. If the task have more finish to start relationship, the project will also have a longer schedule. Got it. So, you know, if you put a finish to start, it will be long. If you put start to start or finish to finish, that will give you a compact plan. Now, just look at this. So you have corrected. Now tell me, does the top level date match up or is there still any difference in the training part, in the training? It's the same. Same. And what about the testing? Testing is 1st of May and 4th of June finishing? Yes. Okay. Correct. Fine. Okay, great. So let us collapse it. So then what is left? So a project complete. Is it on 5th of June for both of you? Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. So I'm really so happy. So you, you have learned it very well. So I believe that you have done a... Uh, I mean, a lot of uh, paid a lot of attention to details. Now, what we will do now, we will look at the money part. Okay, we'll look at the money. So, money should also match up. So, this is the time, this is the cost aspect of the project. Now, see what is the scope? See, three things I told you scope. Scope is represented in your activity name column. So, the WBS and activities they together make up the scope. Time is derived from original duration column and the predecessor column. So, that defines your your time so your time is correct so 5th of june 80 now we will do this thing do you see this column bl project total cost can you include this column can you in include this column bl project total cost
so uh, both of you please uh, include the bl project total cost and then we will synchronize the money and then we will see if the total matches up now we will be doing very important part the resource rate and all that stuff okay then i will then i will tell you the critical path Uh, yes. Okay. Done. Okay. And uh, and Himanshu, you have this column included here. Do you, do you see the money there? Uh, yes, you, you you see the money here. So uh, I'm not saying that it should match up, but do you see the money figures? Yes. yes. Okay. So you are also saying. Now just uh, just tell me uh, by looking at one point one, is it the same or different? <laughs> different almost same slightly difference is there slightly uh, difference so good difference is good now mm -hmm. why why i will tell you difference is good <laughs> see this is my practical experience people those who get a perfect project plan in my class if they face any problem in real life they have no way to know how to they have to uh, i mean they don't know how to figure it out how to find the solution if you have a problem here you will utilize the solution to fix it and that will help in real life also okay so a little bit of difference is really very good because you know it will go it will give you the learning so now we will tr troubleshoot the cost so what i'm going to do is that first of all i'll start with the resources first of all okay so that is the basic thing let me see if the resources have been properly entered or not so do you see the resources tab here on my screen so what yes. i've done that i have set the filter do you see this filter by a uh, group and sort i mean filter by current project resource uh, can you please do it first of all open the resources tab by from the enterprise and then you filter it to or narrow down the list to only the current project resources okay so one by one we will first examine the resource first we have to see whether the resources are there all resources second we will see if the resources have been set up correctly or not and then we will come back to the project and see how does the cost change or not change then we will examine the task and how what is the utilization of resource so sometimes you know this is the root cause the root cause is that the resources haven't been set up properly okay so so you just have a look at my screen and just see that what is the difference okay and fix and also get the calendar column here so you know how to get the calendar column so you just have to right click here okay then these are the columns okay customize just like every screen so you can change the columns in any screen by right clicking and selecting the columns which are useful for you to control the project okay so first you get this screen so it really doesn't matter the uh, the uh, the resources which are the order so what i'm going to do i'm going to sort them in the alphabetical order so that you can synchronize one to one so you don't miss any resource okay okay i put them in the alphabetical the order so the first alphabet is h what is primary role hello
now let me show you that how the handbook is set up so it is material okay now look at the 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 bottom half of the screen so this is the general tab resource id hb handbook course no no problem so this is the details so this is material type the unit of measure is a count or just nothing leave it there the currency is the us dollar or you you can select canadian dollar or whatever so you keep your keep your currency uh, to your currency but we will look at the amounts that you have entered and the calendar just select uh, six days a week okay the one that you have created for your learning purpose so uh, for in case of material the calendar really doesn't matter okay now we will look at the labor type okay so labor type is management team member so general mt then details labor so labor is the resource type okay then the calendar just make the calendar as 6 days a week and default units per time is 8 hour per day now let me explain this to you what is the meaning of default units per time now it is like this it's a very fine point see when you apply a resource so the resource can be applied for a maximum of 8 hours because a person can work as per the civilized and the international norms is 8 hours so we keep it to 8 hours per day some people can work 9 hours also that's that's not an issue but the project uh, i mean this prima vera is a project management software okay software doesn't judge each person it cannot look at each person so software has to be provided a default way if i apply this person to a task what should be the default number of the man hours or the person hours applied to the task this is the default now you can keep it to maximum 8 hours you can decrease it to 7 you can decrease it to 5 you can decrease it to 6 you can decrease it to 4 because if this person is by default say available half a day so he is a part time worker so you put it to 4 hours per day now what happens when you apply this person so his default availability what is the availability he is he or she is available for 4 hour per day so default availability will be applied then you can change it if you have any kind of understanding so if you are talking to him while he is there at the time of planning so you can change it to 5 you can change it to 6 but the software will have a default so let's assume that this management team member so this person is available full time so it is 8 hours now you can make it 16 hours also if i make it 16 or more than 8 you know you can assume by default the work uh, effort which is 16 is being delivered by two people if two people work like a team and they have the same description or the same roles okay so you can make it 16 you can make it 24 if there are three people in the same role so you make it 24 so it really doesn't matter which three people work okay but you have the have the availability of the man hours which is either 24 hours per day or 16 hours per day or 8 hours per day so 8 hours per day i understand by default that it is only one person okay but the 8 hours can be given by two two people also who can work four hours but they are in a same role so one comes and works in the first hour another comes in the second it really doesn't matter in the project planning what matters in the project planning is that what is the actual availability for this resource actual availability will be 8 hours so you can adjust it so this is the default that we set okay now units and prices so what is the per hourly rate 8 hours per day. i mean for 8 hours per day so the hourly rate you you can put it as 150 per hour or you you can put it say if it is like this so what is 150 so 150 is per hourly rate so if you do it 150 multiplied by 8 so you you can put it something like uh, 1200 slash d also it really doesn't matter because both of them mean the same thing so whatever is known to you you can put you can put weekly rate also okay so we, weekly rate can be like this 7200 divided by or slash w okay got the point it is the same so 150 dollar per hour is equal to 7200 dollar per week okay if the week is the working week 
you not, you calculate the number of the hours so 8 6 the 48 and if you divide 70 to 100 by 48 so you will get 150 got it so try this out guys just divide 70 to 100 by 48 and see how, how much you get per hourly basis One hundred fifty. Yeah, it is the same thing. So whatever mm -hmm. is known to you, you can put here. You can put per minute, you can put per hour, you can put per day, you can put per week, you can put per month. So you know you got six different time units. Okay, according to which you can put the pay rate. Okay, so the pay rate of this person is seventy two hundred per week. You can keep it seventy two hundred per week, or if you want to make it hundred fifty per hour, just put slash h and it will take it. That is the standard rate. Okay, so let's have a look at the programmer, 40 per hour, is it the same? Project manager is the type, the, the type is, do you, do you see this human uh, icon here? So this type is the work, labor, labor, labor means person, okay? And this gear means machine, so both of them are by time are calculated their total cost of usage is calculated by the time so one is the labor and one is the non labor so why do we have why do we have time for the non labor can someone guess or can someone tell me from experience or from guess you know this is a question which is beyond prime of era a project manager should know because you if you know this then you can use Primavera effectively, not only Primavera, any software, any project management software. Do you understand the depreciation, the word depreciation? Yeah. So, you know, for every equipment or machinery, if we hire, so our life is very simple because the vendor will give us a quote. He says that, look, I'm going to give you the PC at the rate of $60 per day. So you can have one PC, you can have six PCs, you can have 10 PCs. So the rate is $60 per day. So that's very simple. But how does the vendor give me $60 per day? He must be having some calculation at his end. So he's doing that. But suppose if I'm using my own equipment, suppose if I'm using a, say an earth mover or a digging machine, you know, these machines, they have a lifespan, right or wrong, or do the, do the last in, infinitely. They don't last infinitely, like they have a lifespan. So based upon the total cost, which is divided by the lifespan, so I can get a per year cost. Right or wrong? Right. To this per year cost, I add a certain amount of maintenance cost, say 10% or 20%, I add a maintenance cost for the spares and keep the equipment in the running condition. Right. So. I use it on per day basis or per week basis or per month basis for the non labor which is equipment to calculate the depreciation cost and include it into the cost of the project. So why should I be doing this? Do you understand the business sense here? Why should I include the depreciation cost of the equipment that I'm using into the cost of the project? Anyways, it's going to be a cost for the company. So it should be recovered. Absolutely right. You're not going to make any profit. I'm not saying that you will uh, recover something extra. So you should be having enough money to buy a new one and you will not only include the cost, but you know, the cost of the equipment might change after five years, six years, 10 years. So it will be a little bit costlier. Okay. Costlier due to uh, the, uh, I mean, um, there is something called inflation. Okay. And maybe in the future, the company might come up with a newer model. Okay, so you know the things will be costlier by that time if you want to replace it. So you must have some sort of calculation to have that much amount of money required from every project which is using the equipment. So that is why we represent the non-labor as machines. Okay, got my point? But these are based upon time. Absolutely the same. The calculation is the same. Labor and non-labor calculation is based upon the time period the duration got my point so in your rental pc it is 60 per day yes it is 
and in your system analyst is uh, system analyst it is 60 per hour 60 yes and the test engineer is 50 per hour yes. so it really doesn't matter whatever your currency is it should be the same amount of money 45 per hour trainer wait with this in your please a trainer is 45 per hour can you go back to the test engineer please 50 per hour why you put 16 there 16 hours per day because i am uh, because i am uh, using two okay so let me do this thing let me start with one okay i'll just explain to you that is the resource over allocation because that is an important yes but part of how a, should i know that yeah so so for every labor let me do this thing let me put 8 hours programmer 8 hours because you know they, this is a solved one now i'll explain to you that why is it so because when i am creating these resources i i have no idea how many will be required i basically create one resource yes one resource is 8 hour per day test engineer is 8 hour trainer is again 8 hour per day means i am creating only one person so this capacity is one person capacity right now let me show you something interesting so i'm just making sure that the money part should be the same i'm going back to the act activities now let's look at the money so what i'm going to do i'm going to do f5 okay f5 now here if you look carefully the money will be refreshed so is there any change in your money have you did you make any correction in the resource by by any chance was it wrong no, or or different not yet. okay so is it ma matching up 13920 for the requirement definition no not okay let me expand it let me expand it now you look at a10 10 is it the same 52880 i'm sorry no <laughs> no not not the measure is good if it is not the same if it is the same that's a matter of concern because then you won't have anything in real life now i will show the resources see the cost of doing this task is cost of utilizing uh -huh. the resources now let us look at this budgeted units is it 88 hours 88 men no, hours that is a problem because i have in the In the budget units time, I have one, and you have eight. No, why in one? The... See, it is the it is the eleven days, and I'm utilizing this labor for eleven days. If this person is working for eleven days, so the budgeted unit should be eighty-eight. And and you know, so let me. No, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the one, two, three, fourth column that you have there. In the fourth column, I have uh, one, two, three. In the third column, now you have eight out eight hours per day. Yeah, yeah there. So, yeah. And I had one hour per day. I don't know how. That so you, so you just make, so you just do one thing. You make it eight yeah, hours. Yeah, I correct it. You make it eight hours. Mm -hmm. So now is it eighty eight? Yep. Now yep. what is the budgeted cost? Five to eight zero here for this resource. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now now let us look at the total. Is the total matching up or is it still different? Is it one three nine? I have the thing is that I have to correct the other ones. So, for example, sorry to ask this for the current specification draft. So you make it uh, the uh, remain uh, the eight 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 hour per day. Eight hour. Yes, per I day. I did it, and the next and requirement analysis. Yes, and the next one. Yeah, you have eight, eight hour per eight day. hours two and a half four. I don't know. And it should become nine sixty dollars. And now it's uh, nine sixty. Yes. Yeah. So, in in this one, we are you we are using project manager. Okay. Eight, yes. Project manager eight hour per day, and then system analyst eight hour per day. Mhm. Mm yes. Okay. And then the other one is going to be. Oh. Four. Eight and eight. Okay. And requirement defined. Zero. I don't have anything. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, now is it matching at the top? 
at uh, this level one three nine two zero. Yes, is, is it matching? Correct. Yes. Okay. And for planning, one four zero. I have zero. to fix the other ones. Okay, fine. I am exposing it. So in interview users, so eight hour mm -hmm. per day. Yes. Correct. That very fast. Okay. So let me do this thing. Let me show you the top row also, and you make your correction. The top row is here. So when it matches the top row, so you you can just stop there. Okay. So it means that. Is so so what about you, Himanshu? Is it matching up? Project plan. Yes, it is matching. Oh, project okay. plan. Project plan. Project manager. Requirement definition is matching. Planning is and, also matching. Okay. Okay. Design is yeah. also matching. And check the next one. Programming seven zero two four zero. Programming there is difference. Difference. Okay. Fine. The difference we will check and we will correct. So I am just waiting for Tatiana to catch up. Yes, I'm. I'm done with the planning. With the planning. Yes. Okay. And let me uh, open the design. Yes, please. Yeah. Design. Okay. Yes. Yeah, one forty-four. Three. Yeah, thousand one sixty. Yes. Same. Same. Yeah. Good. So there, I have problem in the prototyping. Prototyping. Okay. Yeah. Prototyping is nine days task, and these are the two people. So uh, this, this programmer will be used two hours per day, and the system analyst will be utilized six hour per day. It is not necessary. So there is. There is where you're going to write that specification. Yes. Now, uh, but mm. let me show you the or original sheet. Okay. If you look at your original sheet, that is the page two. You you will see that it is mentioned there as twenty five percent utilization and seventy five percent utilization. Twenty mm -hmm. mm -hmm. five. See, hundred percent utilization is eight hours. Right. Mm. Yes. So two hours is twenty five percent. So or twenty five percent of eight hours is two hours. What the point? Yeah. So, so you should know if a person tells you and comes. Uh, so if you ask me, can you give your hundred percent to the project? He says, no, no, ma'am. So right now I am working half day on another project. I can give you fifty percent of my available available of the work effort. So if he says fifty percent, so mentally you would know that he can work in my project for four hours because fifty percent of his time is divided across another project. So his His availability right now is fifty percent, so fifty percent of his capacity. Okay, a person's capacity is standardized at eight hours per day. Okay. Can you expand, please, programming? Yes. You give me a moment. So in the first one, I am utilizing programmer for yes. doing task. Okay. So in the second one, why do you have? It's like the double. Uh, you have nine sixty for the identify design params, parameters, but I have only one person is going to be okay. Okay, so oh, let 12. me let me check the original sheet. That what is uh, what is mentioned in the original plan. So if that is uh, something that ah, okay, I'm, because it says there is two days plus. No, it doesn't matter. Plus one. Okay, so uh, let me check. What is 
given there so based so based upon that it has so so you know that's why you know what i have done i have i could have deliberately put something there so okay so that you can notice it and tell me so in the programming identify design parameters so i am utilizing programmer for two days so i am going to utilize programmer for two days but the thing is that i'm not going to utilize uh, 12 i'm not going to utilize one person and a half person. means that i am going to utilize only one person for full day so you know it is 8 hours per day so okay. it is okay. it is like this okay good okay so it is also 640 it is 69920 yes the overall cost and, and can you go to cutting please yes that was my <laughs> <laughs> cutting Actually, uh, so at six nine nine two zero earlier. So now, now if you look look at coding, you know what I have done here. Sixty four hours per day. Now, can you tell me that what is the purpose? Sixty four hour per day. Sixty four man hour per day. So how many people do you need? Eight. Eight. Exactly. I eight. need eight eight people on per day. Uh -huh. So you know eight people. Like you know you understand horsepower. Hmm. You understand what is the meaning of horsepower? Yes. Have you seen electric motors, which if you look at the plate, specification plate on electric motor, it says one horsepower or three horsepower or four horsepower. So you know what is the meaning? Because earlier people used to use horses for drawing the carriages. So when the, when the internal combustion engine was invented, when people were asked, I mean, encouraged to buy those, so people would make a comparison with the horse. So if you go to some shop and say, that why should I replace? Why should I replace my horse with this internal combustion engine? So then person will say that it is it, it is better, you can use it anytime, you can ride it anytime, and it is cheaper. It okay, you don't have to uh, I mean take care of it as much as you would do for a horse. But then the next question is that okay, fine. Now what is the strength of this engine? Is it equivalent of one horse? So then you would say, no, this is equivalent to two horse. So that is the strength of the engine, two horsepower. Now, now let me come back to this. So that is the human power. So one human can give eight man hours per day. So that is the human power, one person, eight man hours, right? Or you, you, you can say, um, what you can say, eight watts, <laughs> not eight watts. We have got more <laughs> than that. So basically, we have to understand, see, when you're working as a project manager, for a moment, just visualize people as robots. Okay, what is the what is the effort of this? See, different people have different working capacities and capabilities and skill sets. But the thing is that when I'm doing the planning, I'm not uh, considering any particular person in my mind. Okay, I'm considering a group of people. And I assume that every person is identical twin. Okay, just visualize people like that. So every programmer who gives me eight hours per day is assigned in my project. I need eight. When I take eight people, what is my total capacity per day basis? It is eight people multiplied by eight man hours, okay, which is the output of one person. So that is 64. So 64 means if I reverse translate it, so it means that I require eight people to work simultaneously on per day basis. So when I have 64 man hour per day and I multiply it with a duration of 24 days. Okay. So the total work effort becomes 1536 man hours. And based upon the rate of the programmer, which is the same for all people, the budgeted cost of this task becomes $61,440. So is that fine, guys? Is it understood and is it the same? Yes, it is. Okay, now we come to the next one, developer testing. So developer testing uses one developer for, for 20 days. So eight hours per day multiplied by 20 is 160 man hours utilized. Okay, now you see, it is your prerogative. You can change it while you're planning. You say that, okay. For 20 days, I will use one person for, say, two hours. So you put two here. Do you see see the cost changing? Do you mm -hmm. see the total? 
Now this sixteen hundred dollars is calculated from forty man hours. Okay, if you utilize one person for one hour per day, for twenty days it becomes twenty man hours because the person is coming to the work. He works for one hour and goes away. It really doesn't matter at what time he comes. He has to just work for one hour. So if he works for twenty days, it becomes twenty man hours, and twenty man hours at the rate. Whatever is his rate, so that becomes eight hundred. So, can you guess from here? Can you uh, know from here if the budgeted cost is eight hundred dollars and he is getting twenty units, is giving twenty units? So, what is the per unit cost? Forty. 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 it will recalculate okay so you have to sometimes mm -hmm. push it also so if you are going to utilize a person for whole day you put 8 hours per day and if you are going to utilize more than one person you increase the man hours suppose if you want a person to work for one day full day and another person will working along with him for half a day so how many man hours you should put here on per per day basis 10 or 12 12 12 one person is 8 8 8 hours and two person will be 8 plus 4 uh, okay mm -hmm. so this become the budgeted unit so budgeted unit will be 240 got the point and the budgeted cost will become 9600 dollars so you know it is very flexible so this gives you a very fine control which no other software can give you 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 can change the duration on the top then you will see the cost is also changing see right now on the duration on the top is 20 days if you change the 20 to 10 or if you change the 20 to 40 the total cost will also change for the budgeted cost of this task okay so this is very flexible so now tell me that is it 69 920 yes great now let us look at testing so is the testing is matching is it 17600 or is it different yes yes i got it so now let's move to delivery is it 50000 dollars or 50000 units right yes. training is 15000 150 oh. yes a no can you open it please yeah sure so training so let's look at the first task how it is so maybe mine is different from yours so let's find that what is different ah, i'm using a trainer in this task first one so mm -hmm. first one is 1800 dollars and second is develop training uh, materials yes. so this is only one resource trainer trainer will be working 8 hour per day means full day and he will work for 20 days and mm -hmm. that is 7200 and finalize training materials so trainer again trainer will work for 3 days to finalize the training materials and the cost of the trainer utilized for 3 days will be 1080 mm -hmm. and then train users so when i am using the trainer i need three different resources so trainer is there so you know i mark the trainer as the primary mm -hmm. resource here okay now he needs some handbook for the for the people so how many handbook because if if is going to train six people so he is going to use six handbooks okay so i put six here directly six here so handbook it is not that he will give one handbook on per day basis it's not like that he will give six handbooks on the first day so you just go to the total budgeted units and put six there directly now he needs to train six people so how many rental pc does he need six Six. So six PC. What is the machine time of six PC? Eight hours. No, eight hours is for one PC. For six PC, it will be. Ah, uh, forty-eight. Forty-eight. You know that is why I've written the rental time as forty-eight hours per day, because I'll be paying the rental for six PC per day and multiplied by the number of the days. Okay, because I know that one PC rental is sixty dollar per day. Okay, so the software will calculate. Now look at the cost breakup. Is it six hundred, twenty one sixty, and twenty one sixty? Is it the same? Budgeted. Six hundred for the six handbooks, uh, 
and 2160 for the pieces six pieces for how many days six days mm -hmm. okay so that is 2160 and if you use the trader so the rate of the trader multiplied by eight days and that is 2160 so the total time that i'm using from the trainer is 48 man hours and for the pcs i'm using 288 machine hours man hours and machine hours okay so machine hours is defined to me by the vendor he says that you <laughs> can rent by pc for 60 dollar per day okay so when i multiplied by when i multiplied 60 dollar per day with 288 man hours i get 21 60 dollars got the point Twenty-one sixty. Is that fine? Yes. Great. Now, is it matching up at the top level? Fifteen thousand yes. dollars. Now, I now, think yes. we, now we go go to the top level, absolute top. Is it one nine one six eight zero for both of you? Yes. Okay, great. Now you know here we have a plan which is agreeable to all. So this this is called, which is called the near baseline. So what do we do? We must save a copy of this. So there are two ways you you can save a copy. So one way is that here, export. Do you do you see this? Uh, no, this is import. This is export. So what do you do? You export. Okay. Do you see the export button? Or, yes. Or you can get export from the file also. File, export. Okay. Do you do you see the ex export button in the file drop down? Mm -hmm. menu? Export. Yes. So you can export it to XCR format. So XCR for, format is the, the, the Primavera format. Okay. So you can select 17.7 or later, 15.1 or later. So this is the latest version. But if you select 15.1, if someone is having 15.1 or later Primavera, the format can be imported by that person software. Okay. So if you make it 17.7 or later, then any person is, if he is using, he or she is using Primavera uh, version lower than 17.7 cannot be, I mean, cannot be able to import it. So let's click on the next button. We select project. We select next. We select next. Okay. Then we select a location and then we give a name to the file. I say software. and final okay or finalized okay and you give it number finalized zero one why you should keep a backup just by chance if you make a mistake here or anything goes wrong you can always get your copy back okay so this is one way of backup but there is one more way of backup that is also very interesting Okay, that I will show you right now, but you must learn to export first because why? Because what happens that if you are working uh, in an environment where you have certain contractors working for you, you have to give them your plan. Why? Because they will insert their subtask into that. Okay, then you will have to import it again. So you say save and then you click on finish. Export was successful. So this is exported and this is successful. So uh, I uh, so this can be imported by someone else to get the project. So what I'm going to do that I'm going to export it to four of you. Okay. So that you can keep it for reference. Okay. I'm just, just give me a, just give me a moment. I am sending it to you guys. Okay.
so have you uh, received it in your mailbox H hello yes check in <coughs> check in check in yes okay so you can keep keep the copy with you for reference so basically you know you should understand that you can make a backup like this now i'm going to show you that how do we baseline the project so i'll come back to the baseline in a while but before that i want to show you something which is important for you to know okay so you just watch and understand that what i'm showing to you okay so uh just uh, let's do this thing uh can we take a 10 minutes break and then come back i'm going to show you the critical path so, okay okay just op open um i mean you can do anything you want you can just open my project also and have a look okay so how it looks like and basically so i'll be back in 10 minutes and you guys can also take a break so i'm going to pause my screen and mute my uh, mic for a while okay so after that we'll look at the critical path then we will look at the baseline and then tracking and reporting so you know that will give you complete knowledge okay so i'm muting my mic
इधर आओ कार्तिक Okay, I am back. So you are ready? Hello. 
Hello. Yeah. So, so you have any questions? So far, so good. Okay, fine. So, what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you the critical path. So, what is the critical path? See, whenever we create a project, okay. Now, what ha what ha happens is that the finish date of the project. Do you see this uh, my new screen? Yes. Okay. So if you look at the screen carefully, you will see that there are six tasks here. One of them is a long task. I've named it as a long task. Do you see that this is in red color? Yes. Okay, fine. So it is called critical because this is the longest task and the finish date of the project is coming from this long task only or this the longest path. So this task is also a path also because the path can have minimum one task and a path can have multiple tasks. Also. So if you look at the rest of the task, one, two, three, four, five. So there are five days each, okay, but they're in green color. So they're normal. Okay. And if you look at the finish date of the project, that is 25th of Jan. It is coming from the, it, it is uh, coming from the longest task. Okay, so now if you look at all the tasks here, now one of them, one second, give me a moment. Okay, so we have to understand that if this task is delayed, it will delay the project because the finish date is being calculated from here. Now let me do this thing. Let me join all the tasks one by one. Okay, so I'm going to join these two tasks. Okay, I say link activities so they get linked in a finish to start. Then I will link two and three link activities. Okay, then I link three and four link activities. So you know this this becomes red. Now why this becomes red is that because now this is also the maximum length. Okay. This is also the maximum length. Mm -hmm. So now both of them. Oh, someone is having some background noise. I, I need to talk to you also. And oh. Uh, I think Himanshu, uh, you have some background noise. Uh, you are at home, I, I believe. So I have just put the mic on. Uh, okay. Uh, so just uh, you mute yourself, and if you need to talk to me, you un unmute yourself. Okay. So th that will be the best, because I uh, I should not prevent you from asking me questions. So that's why, and at the same time, we need to keep this uh, uh, classroom quiet. Okay, so now if you look at the total length of the long task and the one, two, three, four task in finish to start relationship, they are all 20. So both of them are critical path. Now, what is the importance for the project manager to know the critical path? See, when a project is planned, not all the resources are available, okay, throughout the project. So you have to know as early as possible which resources might not be available if some resource has some chances of non availability due to the planned leave or something so you should first fig fig figure it out whether this resource is working on the critical path or not suppose if you assign a person on task one okay and that person takes a one day off he doesn't work continuously he takes one day off now this task will get delayed by one day and will become six days. Now what happens? That will push the finish date of the project. Now do you see the finish date of, of the project? It is now 26th of January. It's not 25th. Mm -hmm. If I make it five, it's fine. Now see one thing. Now why critical path is important? I'm going to link four and five. I say link activities. Now do you see the difference here? What has happened?
Yes, the term, the duration of the project went longer. Longer. And plus, if you look at the task A1000, it is now green because it is no longer a critical task. Okay. It is not critical because it is not defining the finish date of the project. Okay. Now the critical task has to be understood in the beginning so that you can plan for the resources which are working on the critical path. So what is the path here? Task 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is 5 is the critical path. So all the tasks on a critical path, they have the potential to delay the project and not the non-critical. So what is the difference between critical and non-critical? The difference is that, that in the critical path, the float is zero. I'll just show you the float. Okay, I'm going to add, add one column here. So it will show you the float. Do you see this float here? Now, if you look at this float, so here you have a float which is five days. So, you know, this task has a chance of delaying itself by five days. Okay. Now, if I go to the bars and I click on the float bar, there is a bar which shows you the float also. So, let me go down. Yes, here is the float bar. Okay, load bar and apply the color. Do you see this black bar here? So this is the float bar. Now, uh, so, suppose if I break up the relationship. Okay, so this float bar will be gone. Now the float bar will be on this task. So what is the float for this task? 15 days. So it means that this task can be delayed by 15 days before it will push the finish date of the project. So, so we are not we are not having much concern on this task, but we are concerned with these two paths. One is the long task, which is one path, and another path is having task one, two, three, four. Now, what we should be taking care of is that this task should not be delayed due to my mistake, project manager. So, what can be my mistake if I fail to provide the resources? or if I fail to plan the resources. So you have to ask your team member who are working on task one, two, three, four. So guys, do you plan to take any kind of uh, leave during the project? So if you do, so please tell me so that I can uh, arrange for a substitute resource. Because arranging for a substitute resource is very, very important. Because if I don't do it, then there might be a good good chance that this task will get delayed. Okay. This task will get delayed because if the work is not done, so that will push the duration of the project. So because this task one, two, three, four, or the long task doesn't have any float. Okay. Got the point. And not only people, then you should ask the people that do you have equipments which are reliable and if they need a do they need any kind of maintenance so if they require any maintenance you should preempt the maintenance why you should preempt the maintenance so that it doesn't break down in the middle of the project if any of the if any of the equipment breaks down while the project is on so you know that is going to cause a problem here because if the person is there, but the equipment is not there, so the work will not get done. Okay. Now the next point is that do you have enough material? Because you need people, you need equipment, then you need material also. Because material is a resource. If one of the material is not available, even then the work cannot be done. Even that's a problem. Got the point? So guys, is it making sense to you, the critical path? So the critical path would, would be visible in red color. Now, where is the critical path in your project? It is here. I'll go and open the project here. 
okay so this is your this is your project you open the project from here so you expand the task here you say expand expand okay you expand it fully now if you look at the project plan you will see that there is a lot of task here which is in red color so you know in a real life project almost uh, every task is on the critical path do you see that most of the task are in red color yeah so if the most of the task they are in red color so what is the message to you the message to you is that you must make sure that none of the tasks are delayed if any of these task they are delayed then it will delay or push the finish date of the project because the finish date of the project is being derived from the critical path so the critical path is visible like this okay so this is the critical path so all the red color tasks so these are the green ones so the green ones have some float here so you don't have to worry much but the thing is that you should first give the priority to the red so what is the importance at the planning stage to know the critical path so once you know the critical path so what you should be doing is that you should look at the human resource you should look at the equipment resource you should look at the material resource to determine if there are any chances of these falling short of the required availability or the planned avail or the planned quantity during the project okay so these are the things which you can control as a project manager even cash also okay you should make sure that the planned cash it is required to do some external work or by some uh, work which is a miscellaneous work from some some miscellaneous labor contractors so you should have that much cash cash available to give to your team leaders okay team leaders they need equipment they need to be available themselves first okay then they need equipment then they need material then they need cash for any kind of miscellaneous work which will be done by resources from outside the project team like some casual contractors or casual laborers okay so that is the purpose of knowing your critical path so is does it sound good yes it does so you know then you have filter also do you see this filter you know this uh, icon filter icon so if you select critical do you see my screen so which icon i click okay filter by so remember this icon it looks like a funnel then you get this pop up you select critical and then you say apply so you know now your view will be restricted to the critical task only okay so what is the purpose the purpose is to take a print out and the purpose is to take a list of the task which are critical and then one by one sort out any kind of issues okay got my point yes okay so this is the importance to the project manager and the project manager should know the critical paths immediately before finalizing the project so that if there is any issue with any person or resource so that you can adjust according to the availability then baseline so you know this is a project plan which which is about to be baseline but before that we must do resource leveling okay now the resource leveling is like this because some of the task they have less resources less people than re required some have more or maybe some they need adjustment also so let's see see in the resources when we have created we have created all the resources at the default uh, units per time that is 8 hour per day we have assumed that we have only one person of this kind but we might need two people we uh, see if you look at the especially the programmer you need 64 man hour on per day basis so 64 man hour can be derived from the parallel working of eight people right or wrong right okay so you know in prima vera there is a way of knowing that which task are short of the required man power or the work effort so it is very simple you go to your activities okay 
So just split the screen like this. And on the top, do you see this human figure with some graph resource usage profile? So you should also set your menu. You open all the menus and then you will see this also. Okay, how to expand your menu? You can expand your menu like this. Add or remove button. You expand all this. Okay, so guys, please add, add, add this button first. Then I will show you. Please add this button from the top. Done. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to click on this and I'll see a graph. I'll look at the resources one by one handbook. So first I'm going to do is that I will condense the, the total Gantt chart into one single view. So I'm going to click on the minus button. Okay. Now I'll slide it here in the middle so that I can see that how my graph is being applied. So this, this handbook is being applied towards the end of the project. So this is fine. Management team, programmer, what is the budgeted units? What is the actual units? Okay. So So I have programmer and programmer. So what is the name? So programmer. So I have to just see that which task is well. So I'm having PGR and PRG. So actually it is a mistake here on my part. So basically I have duplicate resources. I shouldn't be having that. I should have only one resource. Okay. So this guy is working towards the end. So I have to find the task and uh, replace by PRG. Okay, so let me do this. Let me correct my mistake. Okay, just give me a moment. So I'm trying to identify the task. Okay, fine. So now we have this uh, proper view. Now I'll explain to you so that you can understand that what I'm trying to show you. I'm just trying to show you the first complete project. So this is the complete project view. Okay, so I'm going to look at handbook. So do we have sufficient handbooks? Fine. Okay, so Mm, not this. Okay. Management team. Okay. Project manager. Fine. Programmer. Do you see this red color? Here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to unmute you so that you can ask me. Okay. Now, let me tell you that what is happening here. Let me expand it now. I'll expand it here. It will be very easy for you to understand. See. We are using this people or this skill at the rate of 64 hours per day, right? And here 
do you see this for some days we are using for 72 man hours per day i'll just show you the chart also see look at this chart do you, do you see the 64 hour per day thing here and then you see 72 hour per day see it is corresponding to the graph now what is this black line representative of do you see this black line re representative of this is re this is representative of the actual uh, availability now the thing is that if i need a lower resource and in good quantities say i need one or ten so you know i have a very good chance of getting it so i go to my boss or to my hr manager then i tell that boss according to the plan i need at least uh, nine people on per day basis why nine people just look at uh, the april month in the april month do you see the graph what is the peak peak demand 72 man hours per day for how many days one two three four five six six, six. okay so you know having a peak peak demand of six means that so for six days means that i should have a maximum availability from the resource pool at nine or ten so it should be minimum nine it's not that i'm going to put nine people in my uh, in my shop floor no it's not like that so my boss says that okay if you need nine so i give you the permission to utilize nine now this is the resource over allocation why why the over allocation is there because if you look at the programmer okay so maximum availability of this programmer is eight hour per day means that i've got one access to only one person maximum from the resource pool now boss gives me the permission he says that okay if you wish to access you can access 10 people so what is the total man hours mm -hmm. of 10 people 80 80 so i say 80 slash d so what i mean to say is that i can access i can access 10 people if i need to it is not necessary that i will use 10 people every day no i will utilize it according to requirement it might be two hour per day four hour per day six man hour per day eight man hour per day or 12 man hour per day or but i have a permission up to 10 people means 80 man hours on per day basis so this is the this is the maximum units per time that that can be used okay so the maximum units per time is 80 80 means 10 so beyond 10 i need to seek a permission again for 10 i don't need to so i have the availability of 10 if i utilize 9 it will not be over allocated if i utilize 10 people it will not be over allocated now i am going back to my graph once again so that you can see that what does it look like do you see this this black line yes this black line represents the 80 man hour that is the availability so you know i am utilizing this kind of resource below the capacity capacity to me that is available is 80 man hours now let me do this thing let me reduce the resource capacity okay let me reduce it to say nine people so nine people is 72 man hour on daily basis i reduce it to nine i save it i refresh it i say f5 here i have to do it because the data has to be refreshed and then i will go to the activities window and then i will see the difference okay now do you see that it has on the last days of the april it is just touching but it is not over allocated you don't see the red color okay just see now what i'm going to do if i reduce it to 64 okay on per day basis now what do you expect to see here will it be red for all the days or will it be red for some days and green for some see why these are red on some days of the april month because need more people yes my my given capacity is nine people but my utilization on the on the thursday friday saturday is 
nine people. So, do you see what is the difference in the what is the difference? The difference is eight man hours. Do you see this graph? Where it where does it correspond? See, I am going to bring it near to the scale. <coughs> see, this black line is how much? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. And how much is this? This is seventy-two. Uh, seventy-two. So anything which is more than the than the given capacity will be depicted in red color. So you know it is like uh, you are having a transformer which is having a capacity of say to support a load of ten thousand watts, and you are putting a load of twelve thousand watts. So what will be the two thousand watts? So two thousand watts will be the will be the overload. So this is the resource overloading. So in case of the lower lower level resource, I can ask for more people and I can get it. So what do I do? I go to my resource pool and I level it like this. I say that okay. That I have access to ten people by default. I make it eighty man hour per day. So that's not a big deal because boss has given me the permission. Okay. So I'll be using up to it. I have been given the permission. Okay. Up to up to means that on some day if I need less, I can use less. If I some day on I need more, I need to then look at what is my capacity. Okay. So this resource is leveled. now let me look at this system analyst okay now system analyst so what do i do i just reduce this thing so that i can see more of my project here let me see if this system analyst is uh, over allocated or not so what i have to do is bring the entire project into the view first okay so that it is condensed okay so this is my entire project in view okay Do you see this uh, system analyst uh, over allocation on certain days? Do you see see this thing? Hello. So do you yes. do 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 you, do you yes. notice? Let me expand it. Yes. On on daily basis. So when I expand it, it looks like this. So let me see where it's gone. It's here in the beginning of the project. Okay. Now on certain days, I need two people. Do you see this sixteen? Do you see sixteen? On certain days, I need two system analysts, but not on all the days. on certain days i need less than 8 also so you can find those tasks now what do i do i go to boss boss uh, i need another system analyst on certain days now listen to the stories carefully guys it's very important this happens in real life okay so i am going to mute the background so so that you can hear me clearly then i will unmute you so that you can ask me a question okay so i go and tell boss boss i need a system analyst and the system analyst on certain days okay so how many days do i need uh, then i tell him 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, then boss thinks for a while he says look system analyst is a very costly resource we don't have many system analyst so you know during the last meeting we had decided between all the project managers that every project will have at least one system analyst but no project can have more than one system analyst at any given point of time just to ensure that every project has one system analyst whenever needed so we have to use the resource optimally so if i level this resource based upon one so what do you expect will the duration remain the same or will it increase see if i have less people then i have to stretch the work if i need more resources if i am provided then i don't have to stretch the work now do you think that if i reduce the work on per day basis to match up with the available capacity now tell me what is the available capacity of system analyst role or system analyst resource 8 man hours or 16 because boss says you can have only one system analyst 16 no 16 8 8 but on requirement on certain day is 16 now what is the what is the solution to authorize 16 no boss says no boss says you can utilize only one system analyst maximum in one project it means that on the days where i need 16 man hours of system analyst i have to level the work i have to bring down the peak demand of the work i have to reduce the work 
So what happens if I reduce the work on per day basis? It's going to be longer. The duration yes. of the project. Yes, the duration of the project will become longer because I have less people to do the work on per day basis. Okay. Now just see what happens if I do this. Okay. First, let me look at the finish date of the project. What is the current finish date? Fifth of June. Okay. Now, if I don't have the system analyst, another one to work on these six days, what will happen? So how much do you anticipate if I level the task according to the resource availability that is eight man hour per day? So how many days do you anticipate the project duration will stretch? Five days, six days, one day, 10 days, 60 days, how many days? Six days. Six days, exactly. Now, how do I level this resource? Just watch me doing this very carefully. Okay, so this is where I let you have a look. Okay, so do you see this button? Level resource. And this button has a shortcut also. Shift plus F9. Okay. So first of all, you open this and I'm keeping it to the left and I uncheck this box level all resources. This is dangerous. I don't want to level resource. I want to level the resources selectively. Okay. So which one I have to, I have to level right now. System analyst. Okay. I select system analyst here and then I click on. Okay. So what is the finish date of the project right now? What? What is the finish date of the project right now? 5th of June? 5th of June. Okay. Now let's see that when I level this resource, what happens? Okay. Because what, what will happen if I have to do less work on per day basis, you know, the work duration will get stretched because I'm doing less work per day. Mm. Okay. Uh, got the point. So I click on the level button. Now I look at the finish date. Do you see the finish date? 12th of June. Mm -hmm. So why 12th of June? It is 12th of June because it is, it might be sk skipping over one weekend also. It is not exactly six plus five is equal to 11 because if it skips over one weekend, so this will be 12th. What the point? Yep. Now, each day the system analyst is going to work eight hours only because one person cannot give more than an output of eight man hours. Because on certain days I needed 16 man hours if I don't have it. So that's it. So that is the, that is the maximum that, that I can have. What's the point? Okay. So this is one of the tasks, requirement analysis. Okay. Activity details requirement analysis so requirement analysis re required two okay so if the if the two resources are not available uh, not available so then i have to make do with one so just just do just do this thing just try to do the resource leveling
okay so so could you level the resource yes now when you are having less resource your duration will increase so when you are having more resource your duration will be compressed okay so this can be seen in a new project also so this is called resource leveling see before we finalize the project plan for the baselining we must make sure that the project is perfect because the project will work like a measuring scale okay against this scale we will measure the actual work and then we will determine whether we are doing fine according to time and cost or not so now let us look at the management team and let's see if we have any resource uh, uh over allocation over uh, allocation is something which we must avoid so let's see if there is any red color no project manager no programmer no qa manager no rental pc yes so what happened to the rental pc actually we need six pc but you know i have written here maximum units is 8 hour per day means one pc per day no i can have as many pc so what i need is six i say 48 slash d then i press f10 and f5 refresh it you must do f10 and f5 if you are making changes just to make sure that the data that you are seeing in the in in the other tab is the latest data okay so i go to activities so this is leveled out then i look at system analyst so system analyst is level test engineer so test engineer is again it is over allocated so let's see that what is the over allocation on per day basis so i have to expand it so i expand it when i see it to the daily resolution so i need two test engineers on some days so then i go to my boss or resource manager and i tell look i need two test engineers on some days okay then boss says that okay you can have two test engineers so that's not a problem test engineer is not a costly resource so you can have if you need you can have two if you need you can have three so i am giving you the permission for the maximum utilization of three test engineer or 24 man hours per day for the test engineer role or the resource okay so do you get my point now how do i level it where do i go to fix this to increase the capacity of this resource test engineer i go to the resources no not the level because here i am going to increase the capacity of the resource now it says maximum units per time is 8 hours per day a boss says okay i am giving you the permission for the maximum usage up to 6 hour per day so i mean uh, to 16 hour per day means two two people on per day basis i'll make it 16 because two people represent 16 man hour or if he says that i give you the permission to use two person full time and one person half time so how many man hours will that be Two person full time. Twenty. No, two person full time. Sixteen. Yeah, one person half time. So sixteen plus four. Twenty. Yes, exactly. You know, this is the way we divide, and we this is the way we optimize the resources between the various project teams. Okay, so that we make sure that no project team is utilizing more resources than is available. but in some case uh, we have to fix the resources and we can uh, change the duration yes so th this is what we did with the system analyst in case of the system analyst see i asked boss for more he said no you can have only one person so i put 8 slash d <laughs> okay so when i put maximum to 8 person i mean 8 hours per day means one person per day so then i came to my activities and looked at the system analyst activities then i realized that i cannot have more than one so what i did i leveled the resource based upon the availability so due to this reason the duration expanded my duration stretched okay so i could not get more than one person so my duration which was originally planned 
for finish on 5th of June, it is now finishing on 12th of June because of the increase in six days. Okay. Because I couldn't put more system analysts on per day basis, more than one. That is why. So now if all the resources are leveled, so what we are going to do, we are going to make a baseline and the baseline will be utilized as a scale of measure of the progress of the project. Okay. So uh, let me synchronize with, with you. Is it uh, um, 12th of June finish for you? So I'm, actually, I'm not yet uh, done the leveling. Uh, so, so I'll just wait for you to do it. Just do one thing. Can you help me out? Uh, actually, I'm not. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Why not? Why not? So I'm doing uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to share. Can I share my screen? Yes, yes. So I'm I'm making you the host. Okay. So you share your screen now. So now you are the host. So the rest of the people can also see that how they can do it. Okay. You share your screen now. Okay. Now you are the host. Can you see my screen? Yes. Now, how to proceed? Uh, please guide me. Please yes, guide. yes. Now, what do you do? That you expand this activity ID to all the levels. You go to the uh, view, click on the view, and uh, you uh, go to the bottom. So scroll down to the bottom. You will find the expansion button there. You click on expand all. Fine. Now you uh, come to this uh, button which is below the admin and you need to add one more button here. Just click click on the double arrow. No, uh, this uh, this human icon and uh, just come to the menu below it. Uh, there's click click on the double arrow which is on the right. Uh, click on the double arrow. Yes, yes, yes. You click on add or remove buttons. And click on the resource. Okay, this is already selected. Now, where is this button? Okay, this button is visible here because you know there is not much screen space, so that is why. So just click on this button below. Uh, yeah, just click on this uh, arrow, and then you see this button. Click here and click on this. Yes. Now your view will change. Okay. Okay. Now you just right click on the graph. Right click on the graph area and uh, click on the user preferences uh no i just close this close this right click on the graph uh, once again Uh, one one second. Um, resource user time scale. Click on time scale. Let me see if the option is there. I want to just switch off this legend. Uh, date interval two three calendar. No, not even this. Just click on cancel. Right click once again because I want to switch off this legend because this legend is sometimes not required. So, uh, so no, uh, on the graph area, right click on the graph area. Yes, yes, here. I want to switch off this legend resource usage profile option. So click on the resource usage profile option. Okay, so click on the graph tab on the top next to the data. Okay, just uh, uncheck the show legend checkbox uh, additional display options. Yeah, uncheck this. Yeah, click on OK. Now you can see the full graph. Okay. Now, do you see these red bars? Yes. Why these are red? Do you, okay, can you guess why these are red? Because uh, the requirement is more than what is available. 
Yes, absolutely. Now, there are two things which can happen. I mean, one of the two things. Either you are provided the resource or either you are not provided. If you are provided the resource, you can go to the resource tab and increase the capacity of this resource to 16 man hour per day. If you are provided. And if you are not provided, then what? Then you have to make sure that the work is reduced on per day basis to match with the resource availability. Got the point? Okay, if you make, make it 16, so it means that your boss has given you the permission to use. So may, make it 16 and see that what does the graph look like now? You first have to do F10 and F5 here. Okay, now it has updated, fine. So it looks like this. The over allocation is not there. So it means that it is good. You have been provided. So your duration will not increase. Now suppose if you go to, go to the resource and make it eight, eight hour per day, because your boss says, look, system analyst is a costly resource. I cannot provide you two. Now you make it eight slash D. Eight slash D means that one person on per day basis. Now go to the activities once again. Now what you have to do since you don't have much resource, but you cannot plan like this. Why? Because if you reach that particular date of execution, what will happen? What will happen is that you will realize that you have planned to work for 16 man hours per day, but only one person is available. You have planned work for two people. Okay. So you can't have a plan like that. So what you will do, you will level the resource. So okay, can you show us that what is the finished date of your project right now from the top? And you scroll to the top uh, row number one. No, on on the on on this uh, table area. Yeah, just scroll. So the finish date is fifth of June, right? And move the divider bar towards the left so that we can see more of the graph. Yeah, do it. Yes. So you move it a little bit more towards the left so that we can see both the graph. Now, if you look at your GAN bar care carefully, do you see these two bars overlapping? requirement gathering and requirement analysis. Okay. We had planned that we will uh, overlap the requirement gathering and requirement analysis by two days so that we can be a little bit time efficient. Now, see, there are two things that can happen in life. If you have more time, okay, so you can spend less on per day basis, but if you have more resources, you can reduce the time of the project. But since that is not happening because the company doesn't have that many uh, system analysts in the resource pool, but they say that, okay, you will always get one resource of system analyst. So you have to level the resource. Now there is a leveling button on the top. Okay. So that button is represented by a balance sign. If you don't find it, so what you can do, just uh, click on the tools. Expand it. Do you see this level resources below the schedule, the option? So note the shortcut key, shortcut key is shift plus F9. Okay, just click on the level resource, click on this. Okay. Now uncheck this checkbox, level all resources. This is dangerous, don't do it. This okay in the software option is there. It doesn't mean that it is good to use. Now you click on select resource. You should do it on one by one basis. Okay. One resource at a time. Now, which one do you want to level? Okay. Checkbox. Select the checkbox. Click on okay. Okay. Now click on level. Now, do you see that the red graph has come down? Now, you do you see that this uh, this Gantt bar has moved? Requirement analysis has moved next to the requirement gathering. So, what has happened? Prima Vera has reduced the daily work to eight man hour per day for the system analyst. Now, due to which, what happened? You did your duration has increased. Now, just go and have a look at the finish date. Twelfth of June. I believe now you are getting the point. 
because if you have less people then you need to spend more time if you have more people to do the work on per day basis then you spend less time in doing the work so that is a very common sense that we know since the school days in the school we used to do some maths exercises like this so this is applicable here also right okay and now click on the prog programmer let's see what is with the programmer and uh, go and scroll through the entire project duration or you or you shrink the project duration so that you can see all at once okay so in march april you need more programmers okay so let's have a look what is the need per day basis how many do we need what is the peak demand okay what is the peak demand so how do you come to know what is the peak peak demand okay so there is a way to know what is the peak demand see i'll i'll show you um, there is a button which is not right now it is not visible uh this button has a graph okay this button has a graph so you go to the act activities this button no no you go to the activities i'll just show you just do this thing just click the left left button to the human finger left left button just below the d oh. of admin just below the d see the, look at the word admin and just below the d there is a button this this one just click this now you expand the gantt bar by clicking on the plus symbol hmm. once more now just uh, scroll the bar towards the left uh, that's okay that's fine no no don't expand it it is not necessary once you see one single ab abbreviation of the of the weekday that is enough that is good enough just click on the minus symbol click on the minus uh i think that is enough now you scroll toward the left yeah scroll scroll toward the left no no i mean scroll the whole thing toward the left yes yes now you you will start seeing the excel sheet like a figure it will show you 16 16 man hour on per day basis for the programmers so that is the peak that is the peak demand okay scroll a little bit more i i hope the programmer is selected on the left side display current project resources scroll a little bit more yes that is selected okay so on this row you continue to scroll till you see the programmer's uh, per day allocation per day basis allocation do you see the two hours because in the beginning we are utilizing this guy for 2 hours now you are starting to see 64 now scroll a little bit Let's scroll a little bit yeah 2 hours so we are utilizing this guy on the week starting march 12 for 8 hours this is fine now do you see this 64 now do you see this 72 okay so what is the meaning of this you need 8 people and on 9th april week you starting to need 9 people <laughs> so what is your reaction your reaction is that i should go to boss and tell boss i need maximum nine programmer on per day basis okay so boss has to give a permission boss says that okay you i am giving you the permission for a peak demand of 10 people so you you can utilize 10 people on any day given day if you need you can use one you can use maximum up to 10 so where would you go to resource yes resource okay just go go to the resource but be, before going to the resource do one thing come back to the activities now you click on this red graph button that is the human with the red graph button yes now you will see the you will see you are seeing the corresponding graph now we want to see what is the effect of the change here because the red thing is red it will remain there but this black line will rise up now we are increasing the capacity Tatiana, you are getting my point. Ashwara, you are getting yes. my point. Yes. We are increasing. We are adding people. We are not reducing the work. See, when we reduce the work, if you push those graph down, it will expand horizontally. 
so what if, what will happen your project to finish date will be pushed towards the future the right okay your your project to finish date will increase okay so in this case if since we are going to add people so our project date will remain constant as right now so right now the project date is finished yes is finished date is 12th of june it will remain 12th of june now you click on resource click on resource now once you have clicked on the resource now you reach the programmer and if boss says that you can have 10 people so how how many man hours you get on per day basis 80 yes put 80 if you want to you try 10 people you don't have to ask but if you want to utilize more than 10 then you have to ask you can utilize one person half day you can utilize one person full day you can utilize two person on on per day basis so likewise you can use up to maximum 10 because you got the permission okay now done that press f10 f5 press f10 f5 save yeah you have to save it from here yes good then refresh also from here refresh data okay now you click on activities now see what happens to your graph Do you see this black line has risen up? So this black line represents the capacity which has been allocated. Now, do you see that it is now parallel to 80? Yes. So you are having a peak demand of 72 man hours per day. That is nine people. You have a permission, a blanket permission of 80 people per day. But you are not going to use 10 people on per day because if you look at March 12 week, week of the March 12. you are only utilizing only maybe one person or partly one person so that's fine because that is upon your need that is based upon your project need so if the project needs up to 10 people so you don't have to ask anybody so it will be resource level okay but sometimes when you have to plan you plan with more than because prema vera will not stop you it will not level your resource immediately it will first let you plan then it will show you that this resource is over allocated now you do whatever you want to do now you have to decide yourself whether you are able to get more resources or whether you are not able to based upon that you will level the you will either level the resource or the task if you don't have more people then you will level the task if you have more people then you will level the resource got my point if you bring down the task duration will increase if you bring down i mean if you see if you have less resource okay so it will increase the duration of the project but if you get the permission to use more resources so it means that your task can remain constant so your your finish date will remain constant so you know that is dependent upon real life situation so prima vera when you are creating a task so it will allow you to over utilize a resource and then before baselining it will let you decide so what you want to do so we do not set automatic leveling for resources because that is dangerous okay we will get a perfect project plan but we might not have all the resources that we need so we must look at the resources one by one and then talk to the resource manager talk to the boss talk to the sponsor and then negotiate and see what we can get and based upon that we will create the plan because i have told you in the beginning a project manager cannot create things out of thin air can you no. you can only do as much as the resources provided to you so now you have got this wonderful tool prima vera to predict exactly how much resource you need on per day basis based upon the task okay so you must make sure that you can pre plan and you can tell your other stakeholder through a very good interface that this is the one so you can take a screenshot and show it to your boss boss this is the maths here okay and this is what i need to do this task now you tell me what should i do okay because you can do only as much as the resources provided you your job is to plan and your job is to execute the project got my point guys now you look at the rented pc what's happening with that one 
you have rented pc for all the days just just go through the entire length of the project and see if it is red if it is red then you increase it so you need rented pcs so how many pcs you need one or six how many people you are training you are training six people six so if you are training six people so you need how many machine hours you need a maximum peak demand of 48 machine hours you will find it over allocated yes okay if we expand it now now you will see that each day you need 48 machine hours but you have only eight machine hours uh, what is yellow and uh, this yellow is the baseline i will explain to you the baseline just don't okay. worry about the yellow just look at this green and the red portion so green is the requirement and red and, uh, is the allocation so you either you increase the capacity or you reduce the requirement if you reduce the requirement then your duration will increase okay? okay and if you increase the resource then your duration will remain constant which is a very good thing you know what is an ideal situation for a, pro a project manager when you get all the resources all the money all the equipment all the materials that you need and then you can do all the project without any kind of constraint so that is something that a a project manager but that doesn't happen so that's why you need to do some planning so okay now what you need to do go to the resource and increase the capacity of the resource this uh, machine to 48 units per day 48 machine hours per day okay 48 slash d okay now f10 f5 and then look at activities if it has leveled out if it has le leveled out you are good to baseline the project yeah refresh data yes good activities yeah so do you see that you have increased the peak demand so which is fine so this looks good okay. uh, but this is under utilization no this is not under utilization you have to refresh your graph just click on the project manager then rented pc a uh, software has some bugs actually you know just click on the project manager then rented pc once again uh but yeah, click on project manager then rented pc once again this is not under utilization so uh 48 uh, just click on the expand just click on that one the plus sign this is not under utilization actually for the machine you would order only the exact number otherwise you will be paying more rent so just look at it on the day to day basis the day to day basis the capacity should not be more than what is needed okay so you need how many you need 48 machine hours so you you are utilizing 48 machine hour for 6 days so how 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 many uh, green bars are there can you count how many green bars are there six six yeah you need for 6 days and how many uh, for, uh, do you see that is so that is the total units the, on the right side on the left side that is the per day requirement so per day requirement is 48 units per day okay on the left side it is not under utilization so okay. you need 48 you are using 48 so because if you hire six pc you utilize six pc but suppose if you are training six people would you hire 10 pc on per day basis no. yes exactly so you are getting it right you wouldn't hire any more equipment than you need okay but when you have a permission to use 20 people that doesn't mean that you will call 20 people and ask them to uh, to i mean to uh, occupy spaces on your work floor of your project no it's not like that so you have a permission to utilize 10 people 20 people so you don't have to bother about the uh, the over allocation below 20 up to 20 okay that is the idea so i believe that rest of the resources they are also leveled out have a look 
first you contract the top level project view in the gant bar so that you can see the entire project view in one single window which is available this part window on the top so you click on the minus symbol on the top minus lens zoom out yeah zoom out yeah that is fine now you are seeing the end no this is too small you expand a little bit i think this is giving you the complete view now you look at all the resources click on all the resources one by one if you see red then you level that out okay test engineer now you go to your boss you say boss i need two test engineer he says that okay you have two we can have two test engineers now what will you do if you want to increase the capacity of this resource yes, sir, yeah so you you will go to the resources tab then select this resource and then increase the per day capacity okay maximum units on per day basis so how many people you can have you can have two so two people generate how many man hours of work 16 man hours so you put 16 slash d okay so that is fine you have to save and refresh and then you will see that the capacity has increased and the red color is gone first you commit changes yes good okay because if you are working on a network so you must be doing this commit changes okay and then you click on the activities tab and then you will see the graph the graph has leveled out okay do you see that so these are the total units okay so you have permission after now if you want to see that what is the utilization on daily basis then you have to zoom zoom out on you have to click on the plus lens lens to expand it to so, and focus is on the daily basis so you come to single day click once more yes do you see that the peak demand is being met through the project duration okay it is never going above the peak demand so if it, if it is not going above the peak demand this is going to stay green so any part of the portion of the bar which is going above the black line which is representative of the maximum capacity that is allocated to you it is going to show up in red anything below it will be green that is okay so whatever is your permission to use a resource if you use less or up to that it's cool okay so if you are having a time constraint then you might plan by utilizing more people then you have the permission then tell boss look boss if i don't get more people the project duration will expand and definitely boss will realize the importance of the client the project and he will immediately say yes okay you will have more people okay so then you can what go to the, what is this green line line so this green line is representative of the man hours do you see the 16 on the left yes so what is this 16 16 man hours so green line height of the green line is representing 16 man hours and the black line is representing the maximum capacity of this resource test engineer you have got two and if you add another person it will become 24 the black line will become 24 just go to the resources yes yes i'll just tell you go go to the resources so suppose boss gives you permission to utilize three people but you are not utilizing three people here you are utilizing only two so you make it 24 by d so 24 by d means in the max units time that if you need in any particular case to utilize three people on per day basis you can do it you have the permission okay make it 24 by d yeah fine now you commit and save i mean commit and refresh now look at the act activities
Do you see this black line where it stands? So black line represents the 24 man hour. That is the capacity that you have in your resource pool or within your permission. Okay. But you are utilizing much below it. So that's fine. That's okay. You are not wasting man hours. Actually, those people, you are not calling them into your project. So they are in their source pool. So they might be working on some other project. But if you need, so on demand, you, you can get it. Okay. Because that is guaranteed to you. It is just like the, it is just like the internet bandwidth. See, if you subscribe to any fiber based uh, broad, broadband provider, you get 40 Mbps, right? But do you use 40 Mbps at all times? Suppose what is the sanctioned load capacity of the residence? It is five kilowatts. Okay. Five kilowatts is the sanctioned load capacity of a residence, right? In India, I'm talking about India. So you can go up to five kilowatt. Now, what happens if you utilize more than five kilowatt? What will happen? Your main MCV will come down. Do you get my point? If you wish, you can switch off all the lights in your home, zero kilowatt. You can use one, say, air conditioning unit. So it will be 1.2 kilowatt or 2, 2 kilowatt. You can use two ACs, two kilowatt, you can use three. So you will have to level the load. But if you go beyond a certain load, then what will happen? Your MCV will trip because the legal limit is five kilowatt. Okay, so it is just like that here in the project also. So if you need to utilize more, then you have to seek permission. Okay, so you can go up to the maximum peak demand for each resource based upon your understanding with your resource manager and your sponsor or your boss. Okay, so when we plan the project and if the constraint of the time is too high, so I might show utilization of more resources so that my project finish date is within the given constraint. Then I will talk to my resource manager and boss and tell them, look, I need five people, but my permission is three people. I need to get two more people. If you don't give me two more people, I will just level the project plan and the finish date will go beyond the given constraint or the agreement with the client. So that will happen at your responsibility, not at my responsibility because it is pure maths. Okay. So I cannot do any miracle. I cannot create man hours out of thin years. Got my point. So guys, you are agreeing with me. You have to do this maths before you start the project and show it to your boss or a resource manager, those who are controlling the resources so that your plan is realistic. And when you baseline it, it, it is reliable. Okay. So now I will switch over to my screen and then I will show you that how I baseline the project. Okay. So, okay guys. So, so do, so do you, uh, see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now I'll show you that where is the baseline. See the baseline is basically nothing but a snapshot of the entire project, which is saved. If you want to do the baseline right now, everybody agrees that, okay, our project plan is good and we have given all the inputs and everybody's inputs have been taken care of and everybody has the commitment to this plan. So everybody says that, okay, we are committed to, to, to this plan and we will do it according to the schedule here. Now, what do we do that uh, we go to the project Do you see one option here, maintain baseline. Yes. So I click on this, then I click on add. It, it is asking me, what would you like to do? Save a copy of the current project as a new baseline. Convert the other project to new baseline. So I use the first option. So the second option I will teach you later. Save a copy. Now what it will do, it will take a snapshot of the project and save it. Okay. And it will give a suffix B1. Do you see this icon? This is the scale. Okay. This is the, because the baseline is a measuring scale. Okay. And I say close. Okay. Now I go to the option project, then assign baseline. Then I say utilize this as 
the baseline in project baseline and primary baseline i use i click on okay now the baseline bar is not visible here what i will do i will go to the bars and switch on the baseline i say switch on the primary baseline and primary baseline use a thicker bar so that it is visible okay it is significantly visible i say apply do you see this yellow line coming below do you see this yes on my screen now i'll just show you something uh, suppose if i increase or reduce uh, do you see this there is something happening here do you see that what's happening here on my screen yes because the baseline is constant okay the baseline is constant so the baseline will stay put at its place and everything else will shift okay so that you can un un understand that what's happening so the purpose of the baseline is to show now this baseline is not only about the time so the baseline is uh, also about the the cost also even the cost baseline is established okay so what i have to do i have to level the resources here again okay i have to level so that everything comes back to the baseline now this is the baseline now the even the cost baseline is established here okay now let's look at the base bl project cost and the budgeted total cost and then variance do you see the variance right now is zero now if i am going to track the project now this is going to show me the variance here okay show me the variance if you see this see see this column variance bl project total cost 000 okay now this is my budgeted now if i am going to do this job i might take more money i might take less money the difference will show now let me tell you something about baseline baseline is actually a a project copy okay i can create one more copy of this project see i say add save a copy of the current project as new baseline you say yes now this is the baseline 2 or baseline or it says b3 you make it b2 so that you know it is baseline 2 do you see see this b2 now b2 i am not using so basically what i am going to do that i am going to basically uh trying to use it as a backup copy okay i am trying to use the b2 as a backup copy now so let me show have uh, level resource Be because you know sometimes when i am doing the baselining what happens is that the resource leveling gets disturbed okay so i have to make sure that i use only one baseline so if i'm switching baseline so this may get disturbed but, but let me show you the what is the utility of another baseline see the baseline can be used to compare the project at different point of time suppose if i'm having multi year project i might say baseline 1 i will use it in the first year so let me say i am having three year project so the first year of the project is 2018 so then what i will do there are certain cost which changes in the year 2 so i in the january of 2019 i create baseline 2 then i use baseline 2 because i cannot use the last year rates to compare the current actual rates so i might do this and there is another utility of, of the baseline now let me show you it's a very beautiful utility see do you see this button where my cursor is restore now if i go to the projects okay so this is my this is my project software development if i click on the restore button it will help me create another copy and this copy will appear here so right now for the software project there are two copies one is the master copy one is the actual copy which i am using so i'll have a third copy also 
if i restore the baseline okay i go to the activities i go to the project maintain baselines then i select the b2 2019 and then i say restore okay guys just watch this restore it is asking a question are you sure you want to unlink the selected baseline from current project and make them separate projects i say yes because you know baseline is nothing but a snapshot of the full project it's a full snapshot everything resource task rates everything you say yes now this b2 has disappeared from here do you, do, do you see this it it has disappeared do you notice that can you repeat, uh, can you repeat once again okay. yeah first i will show you that where it has gone it has gone to the projects here do you see this copy b2 yes 2019 now if if you wish you can add this back as a baseline you go to the project maintain baseline okay then you say add you say convert another project to a new baseline for the current project convert another project now what you can do you can pull the 2019 which is now in the list of the project back into the baseline list see this okay now which one do you want as a baseline just see i am going to pull in this one 2019 do you see the one that i have selected do you see the rectangle now this will be pulled in as a baseline i say plus so it is pulling that project in as a baseline do you see the number of the baseline b1 b2 goes and this is gone from the list of the projects here it's it's gone okay now you can you can create multiple copies of the project for safe keeping you can create b3 you can create b4 then you can restore them as multiple copies of the project okay you can have internal backup and you can have external backup internal backup means that it is staying within the da database and external backup means that you are exporting as xcr file okay how do you export you click on file export so this is external backup so if you want to create internal backup of the project you can create a baseline you can restore the baseline and you can create as many copies of the project that you want for your own safe keeping for your own record what the point uh, i'll i'll just tell you that what is the utility of this see a project maintain baseline you say restore the baseline you restore it okay then what do you do after the restoration you go to this copy and click on the name and you type here you say after di discussion with full team on so you can put in today's date so what is today's date okay. yeah so 26 right so you know this is a copy of the project which is saved here but suppose if you make any changes on 30th or 31st then you can put another co copy here now the benefit is that if you have any bad copy or something you can go to the last good copy so guys do you uh, agree with me yes so one baseline yes. you will need for comparison when you execute the project right so what do you do you guys play with this and uh, uh, in Uh, actually what we have to do in india we have to take our dinner okay so three of us i think we need to have our dinner we will be back in another half an hour so atatin i think it's your lunch time or something at your end yes it is <laughs> it is lunch time so you have your lunch we'll have our dinner uh, today we might have a little bit extended session please don't mind because you know i have to give you the complete understanding okay after this we will come and we will do the tracking of the project and then reporting so uh, right now it is 10:43 pm indian standard time so i think we are good to meet at 11:20 right indian standard time yeah, yeah. so can you see hour? your can i see your hour please again uh, it is 10 10:43 10:43 here is and you said 3 minutes Yeah, thirty minutes from now. How much will that be? Uh, that will be like eleven twenty p.m. 
Yeah, it's going to be 143 for me. Okay. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. So let's meet after having lunch and dinner. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Yeah.
हेलो या आई एम बैक हेलो व्हाट हेलो गाइस आई एम बैक सो यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन हेलो हेलो सो यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन टिल नाउ नॉट एट द मोमेंट ओके सो डू यू नो हाउ टू क्रिएट द बेस लाइन एंड व्हेन यू वुड क्रिएट अ बेस लाइन यस ओके सी बेस लाइन इज समथिंग व्हिच इज अ मेजरिंग स्केल and you would create it at a point when you are very sure that whatever we have planned is good enough now it might happen that sometimes that uh, some task might yet not be clear but you need to start the project okay so you are very near to the starting date so you can baseline it so after you have got the details of the remaining task you can baseline the project once again or you can update the existing one also okay so you can do a lot of things with the baseline you can basically keep the baseline as a backup so you in microsoft in in, uh, in microsoft project you have got 11 baseline but in primavera you can create as many baselines as you want so that is limited by the database size only the data you can accommodate in the database so that is about the baseline now this line this yellow line which appears here you know sometimes it might appear by default also but uh, that is not the baseline so baseline is something which is constant so sometimes you see a line which continues to expand with the changes like if you go to this okay if you go to the project assign baseline so you remove this current project current project now you will st still see this yellow line but if you increase or de decrease a certain duration so the the baseline expands with it you know that's not any real sort of a baseline so the baseline is basically it is created after you are sure that you have only as many as resources only as many as task which are real so it has to be based upon some real data so the real way in which the project will be executed so that baseline will be utilized to then then measure the project okay so you basically can create a baseline from here project maintain baseline so first you create a baseline you can create as many as baseline so you know it will give the serial number according to the previous baselines created if you add one more it will do b5 and b6 and so on now you can after creating a snapshot of the baseline snapshot of the current project you can utilize any one of these as a baseline and if you want to restore you can restore these copies as a snapshot of the current project so that will get restored in the list of the projects here so do you see the list of the projects here so you can restore them here okay so that is going to create a backup copy so you can have as many as backup copies as you wish like if you look at this software development this is master copy this is after discussion with team and software development so you know you can have basically a baseline even when you are having discussions with the different engineering groups so with each engineering group you want to restore a 
I mean, you want to take a snapshot of the good copy with their discussion. So you can mark a fresh copy after the discussion. So you first save the baseline, then you restore the baseline. And then you mark it that you had a discussion with this XYZ engineering team, then ABC engineering team, then DEF engineering team. So you can create multiple copies of the baseline. Okay. So the baseline is utilized to measure. So what we are going to do, so right now we are a uh, break off for today and we will continue tomorrow. So what I want you to do to, I want you to be able to make copies of the baseline and restore it. So just practice it. So you go to the project, maintain baseline, then you say add baseline. Okay. So then you see that what is the effect of restoring? So you say restore baseline. Yes. And you say restore. So when you do restore, you will find that this baseline is here. So this is not, this is not a baseline, but this is a absolute, the identical copy of the project, which is current. So if you open the project, we'll find that this is the B6 copy and this is the project which is open. Now, if you close it, okay, you close this tab and if you wish, you can restore it also. So you go to this and you say, this is the project that you are working on. Okay. You say open project. And if you go to the project, you say maintain baseline. So you say add either you can create a snapshot of the current copy or you can bring back the project which you had restored earlier into the list of the baselines here. Convert and the project to a new baseline of the current project. You say, okay. So you pick up the copy which you want to be restored as baseline. So this will go from the list of the project and it will be added into the current projects list of baseline. You say plus and it will appear here. It is, it is being brought in. Okay. So this small little wheelie goes on. So now it is brought in. Now this will be here in the list of the baseline. And when you want to start your project, you assign one of them, any one of them you choose B1, B4, B5 based upon which you would like to measure the project. Okay. So the best practice is that we stick to one baseline uh, for the entire duration, but sometimes due to the long nature of the projects, so we can change a baseline on yearly basis due to the change in the rate of resources. Sometimes there is a change in the project plan. So what we do, we create another baseline and we utilize the baseline for a certain duration. Then we make some changes in the project plan we use. So, you know, but frequently changing the baseline is not advised, but what is advised that in case you don't have any information and if you are updating the project plan later, so that's okay. In that case, you can create another baseline to measure the work to be done based upon real data. So that's what we do with the baseline. So tomorrow what we will do that we will utilize the baseline to track the project and report upon the projects. So is that fine guys? For today? Yes. Okay. So try to export, try to restore, try to create baseline. So try to see that what you can do with that. If you come across any new portions or any ideas, just share with me and I will explain to you. Okay. So we break up for today and we, uh, tomorrow we will do hands on tracking the project and we will do the reporting. Okay. So we will create customized reports and lots of them. Perfect. Okay. Good. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you. Uh, sir, actually, I will be traveling tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow, what you so, can do that uh, the the training recording will be shared. So you can talk to the coordinator, and then on Monday you can access the recording and you can learn from the recording. Okay, but after I will join the recording, if I will get time in between, during ah, that, I will. Ah, that is fine if you are sitting in a very stable place with I mean stable internet connection. So you just join in. And in case you have question, even after the training, you can send me a mail. You will get the answer within 24 hours. So that's not a problem. Okay. And you will get the recording also. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you.